October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant this fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports us, app and watch on any screen you want. It's a rematch, Al. Yeah, well, there's a few numbers to digest here. First, the height and reach advantage for Deontay Wilder. He put them to good use in their first fight, hopes to do it again in this one. And then let's look at the weight of Berman Stavern. 254 and three quarter pounds. That's 15 pounds more than he was for the last fight. And it ties his highest weight. He had that against Derek Rossi in his last fight, one in which he performed lethargically. Here with the official introductions, the maestro on the mic, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Barclays Center here in Brooklyn as we present the featured bout of the evening courtesy of Premier Boxing Champions and brought to you by Debella Entertainment in association with Don King Productions. TGB Promotions and Showtime. We are sponsored by Corona Extra. Corona invites you to find your beach. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president and supervisor is Mauricio Suleiman, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. The commissioner is John Signorelli. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From New York, Eric Marlinski. Also from New York, John McKay. And from New Jersey, Steve Weisfeld. Introducing our referee in charge of the action, Arthur Mercanti. All right, fans, here we go with the rematch. Main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, it's showtime! Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with multi-color trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Las Vegas and Haiti. He weighed in at 254 and three quarter pounds with a record of 25 wins, two losses and one draw. He has 21 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, in his third world title appearance, he is looking to avenge his loss and regain the title. Please welcome the WBC number one contender and the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Berman And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, the defending world champion wearing gold and black trunks fighting out of it proudly representing his home of Tuscaloosa Alabama he weighed in at already 220 and three quarter pounds here is the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist undefeated in his sensational campaign in the ring with a record of 38 wins no losses 37 wins coming by way of knockout Tonight, in his sixth defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the long reigning, undefeated, and defending WBC heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Bronze Bomber, introducing Deontay. Once again, our referee in charge. Now to give instructions, Arthur Mercanti. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. 
Let's go, champ. Good evening, gentlemen. We went over the rules earlier tonight. I expect you to obey these rules. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Touch gloves. Good luck to the both of you. Nearly 11,000 in attendance here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn for this heavyweight title fight, a rematch between Deontay Wilder, who has said he will retire from the sport if he loses tonight, and Berman Stavern, who promises it will not go the distance this time around. Referee Arthur Mercanti. 33-year pro, the bell in round one, the champion Wilder in the golden black trunks. The challenger, Berman Stavern, the former champ in black with gold, the blue and red, the blue and red of his native Haiti. The first Haitian-born heavyweight champion. And by the way, referee Arthur Mercanti wearing a black armband to honor the people who lost their lives in the terror attack on the West Side Highway bike path here in New York last Tuesday. Honorable. Deontay comes out snapping the jab. I tell you, man, sometimes the way he snaps that jab, it's like a, he's like a little guy. Got that snap, like a Ali type of snap or like yeah. a Larry Holmes type of snap. Not, not all heavyweights have that kind of snap on their jab. No, he's got, it's, an, it's a superb punch. You know, we talk about Stavern being very inactive, which we've outlined. Uh, this is the longest layoff for Wilder in his career, nine months. So he's getting back in the ring after a, a long period off. Wilder, America's first heavyweight title holder since Brooklyn Shannon Briggs in 2007. Wilder became the first undefeated American to win a heavyweight title since the first ever Southpaw heavyweight champ Michael Moore in 94. In the opening minute, just uh, one punch was thrown by the challenger Berman Stavern. And, and Wilder has thrown about 16 jabs out of his 18 punches that he's thrown. I think Berman really just taking his time, yeah. trying to close that gap. He not want to take too many chances. Shouldn't a red flag have gone up, Paulie, when he Stavern came in 15 pounds heavier than the last time these two met? Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was thinking the same thing. I was actually talking to one of the guys on his, uh, on one of his little friends or one of his guys on his team or whatnot uh, earlier tonight and they said I asked him about that weight and he said uh, no it, it, he was just dehydrated last time or he was malnutrition or whatever they want to call it uh, last time and he's actually better at the way he's at now and you'll and I'll find out tonight I said okay I was like you know I was just curious about that oh it raised a red flag so we'll see if, uh, if he's able to put up the work rate tonight stiff jab by Wilder now thus far Stavern hasn't yeah. shown the work rate he's oh hitting my. and Stavern goes down in round one with that laser right hand from Wilder. Seven, eight, nine. Okay. Behind your head. You know it is. Walk toward me. 18 of Wilder's 30. <laughs> Seven knockouts have occurred here in the round. First round and Stavern down for the second time. <laughs> He's out cold. I don't know if he's going to be able to get up. That's it. That's it. That's it. Statement. That is a statement.
This is as loud as I've heard the Barkley Center at a boxing match we've done. in the opening round with a second left. Like the Brown Bomber, the Bronze Bomber has proven far more effective in this rematch, Al. Well, Berman Stavern came out doing virtually nothing offensively, and that is the classic Deontay Wilder one-two combination. Al, Al, who's, who's the Wilder's trainer? Mark Breland. Did that not look like a, a Breland type of one-two? Mark, the way he yes. turned the right hand and the sharp jab in front of it. I mean, that was that was a heavyweight Breland type of combination. Mark Breland, a, one of the great amateur fighters of all time and also a, 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 a champion. Now we look at the second knockdown. Again, the same combination, but it was the left hook that started the problems here and a, a right that bounced off the head of Berman Stavern. And at this point, Deontay Wilder having a little discussion with Stavern as he sits on the canvas. And the one-two is always the basis of what Wilder does. And then we will see the finish of the fight. Stavern looked like he was going to get through the round with only a few seconds left. And here's Wilder juking and jiving and coming with the right hand. Now, ironically, that was the shot that hurts him right here. This yeah. is the one, yep. the, the left hand that really created a problem. Right comes right. middle as well. He's already out. He's already out before he hits the ground here. Sorry, credit to Arthur McCanty, man, because those are two big guys. He's got to get in the middle of those yeah. guys. And, think, and actually, it was very good that he got in there right away so no more yeah. punches could land against the Vernon. Obviously, he's out at that point. Mamma mia, what a performance by WBC heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. Vada doing their best to clean up the sport. Wilder did his best tonight, cleaning the clock of Berman Stavern. Let's go up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official. Only lives, baby. Only lives. Only lives, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 59 seconds in round number one. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is still undefeated. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber, Deontay. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Coming up in moments from MGM Grand Garden Arena, down of the tape, Plant, 27 years of age, Lee is 32. Plant with a one-inch height advantage. Both Plant and Lee with a reach of 74 inches. To the ring, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, Premier Boxing Champions presents the Fox PBC Fight Night featured bout of the evening brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. Sanctioned by the IBF, the President Daryl Peoples introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, Patricia Morse, John Don Trella, and Glenn Trowbridge. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, it's time for the Fox PBC Fight Night main event of the evening. 
Introducing to you first the challenger fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Chicago, Illinois. He weighed in at a ready 167 pounds, undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 21 wins, no losses, 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his first attempt at a world title, please welcome the popular University of Notre Dame graduate, introducing the undefeated Mike Lee! And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing giraffe print trunks with gold and red trim. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of Nashville, Tennessee, he weighed in at the super middleweight limit of 168 pounds. Also undefeated, his record stands at 18 wins, no losses, 10 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the first defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated IBF super middleweight champion of the world, known as Sweet Hands. A third man to the ring, a referee in charge of the action. Now to give instructions, Robert Bird. Gentlemen, I gave you instructions in addressing me. I'm gonna repeat now. I'm gonna give you clear instructions, and that's what I want you to do, and how I tell you to do it. But check yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. When you hear me say stop, what that means is stop whatever you're doing, give me a clean break. Anything on the belt here and above is good. If it's on the belt and above, it's gonna be good. Both of you are professionals, and that's all I expect in this ring tonight, that you conduct yourself in a professional manner. Mr. Lee, Mr. Plant, gentlemen, let's do this. We are set to go from Las Vegas. Tonight's odds provided by Fox Bet. Caleb Plant, Mike Lee for the IBF World Super Middleweight title. The first title defense for 27-year-old Caleb Plant, native of Tennessee, now lives here in Las Vegas. Record of 18-0, 10 by a knockout. Mike Lee grew up in the Chicago area, now lives in Southern California. Underway, scheduled for 12 rounds. Joe, what do you think? He didn't, uh, Mike Lee didn't look at him during the face-off. Well, he's looking at him now, so <laughs> that's all that matters. Uh, all I know is Mike Lee is a very aggressive guy. I watch tape on him. You know, he's a former linebacker for uh, uh, high school, yeah, exactly. University of Missouri, high school linebacker. He's got that mentality. Ended up at Notre Dame, got his finance degree there. But he's, uh, he's got a linebacker mentality. Now uh, he's in there with a real slick guy that's got, and that's Caleb Plant, that's got a big amateur background. He was an alternate on the Olympic team. Likely does not have that pedigree as an amateur. So he's, he's really a little bit more rough and rugged around the edges. And he's got his work cut out for him against uh, Caleb Plant. But I, he's an overachiever, Mike Lee, so I, I don't underestimate him. And these guys do not like each other. Trash talk in the weeks and days leading up to the fight. As you referred to, Mike Lee did not look up at Caleb Plant during the face-off a moment ago. I don't know, it would give me a little confidence going in there. Man doesn't look at me, you know, but you're right. He's, he's looking at him now. Right. But the way out Caleb came out, came out very sharp, threw some nice combination punches, and showed his speed straight away. Yeah, you watch Caleb Plant, and he's, he's really a very slick fighter. Um, and that's how he took apart Uskadagi to win the title. So uh, Caleb Plant's got a great jab. He's got a great double hook. See right there, he'll touch you to the body and hit you to the head before you know it. He's got a good right hand to the body. And, you know, he's just an all-around great athlete. Look at that right there, right hand, left hook to the body. He, he, once he slows Mike Lee down a little bit, he's going to be able, I think, really, you know, put together what he wants to do. Look at that head move. See, yeah, yeah. see the difference? Caleb, Caleb is not in one position. He's moving. He's not easy to hit right now. But when Caleb decides to throw punches, Mike Lee is in one place, and he's just receiving the punches. He's just taking them. Caleb Plant, the giraffe print shorts in honor of his late mother, Beth, the giraffe, her favorite animal. 
Here's Vic Dave. Oh! Front. Down goes Lee. Here in round one. And that's when Caleb came with the jab. He was throwing the jab all the time, and he turned it over into a hook and yeah. caught him straight on the chin. That's what he dropped uh, Uskadagi with twice in the first four rounds. Now he's got to be careful. You don't want to run into anything. But, uh, you know, Caleb should just set him up again like he did a few seconds ago. We saw Lee say, I'm all right, let's go. Down to 10 seconds remaining in round one. Scheduled for 12. This is where Caleb, yeah, needs to throw to the body first before going back to that left hook. All right, here we go. See, you saw what Mike Lee did. He went like he was going to parry the jab. He moved his right hand in towards his face, and he left the right side of his face vulnerable, and there came the hook right around it. Mike Lee knocked down in round one, smiling as he comes out of his corner. Round two underway. Caleb Plant said, I'm not letting it go 12 rounds. He can wave the white flag, or I will wave it for him. A look at the punches landed in round one, 18-3 advantage, Caleb Plant. Now we listen into the corner of Mike Lee right there. Unfortunately, you had three different people giving him instructions. There should be only one voice in that corner, and that's the lead trainer. So I don't I don't know if they confused him or if he heard all three of them. But there were three voices talking. Now, Plant's got to set him up again with that jab. That's really what enabled him. See, when you throw that jab, you, you, as the opponent, you want to use your right hand to kind of knock the jab down. It's called parrying it. And if you can catch a guy, feign a guy, make him go for that parry, and then wrap that hook around that hand that's moving, you know, you got yourself a knockdown. Usually when you get knocked down like that, you feel like you need to get, get it back straight away, and, you know, it seems like Andy Lee's trying, trying to do that. He's trying to get, get that knockdown back, so he's moving forward. Sometimes you, you, have to, you have to watch out because Caleb could set you up with that left, right, or, or the hook. Yeah, Caleb can set you up for almost any punch. He's really, well, I watched a lot of tape on him. He's really slicker than I ever knew to tell you the truth. The more I studied him, the more I was impressed with him. Now, Mike Lee, of course, he's, he's not, like I said, he doesn't have the pedigree uh, of Caleb Plant, the amateur background. So he's really an aggressive guy, and he just kind of forces his will on you and tries to hit you with brute force. And he's got a, a decent style, but he's going to have his work cut out for him to hit a, a, a great moving target like Caleb Plant. Mark Lee, graduate of Notre Dame, finance major. Caleb Plant said yesterday when the bell rings, I'll teach him a lesson he never learned at Notre Dame. That's actually pretty funny. But, um, and he's doing it right there because that was a beautiful jab, right hand. He dropped Caleb Plant through the jab, high drop low with the right hand of the rib cage. Now, normally, you might expect a left hook coming from your opponent right after that, and you'd want to get underneath it, but there was no left hook that came from Lee after that. Caleb's showing good defense right now. He's not getting hit. Right, able to back out of the way a couple of times. No, you're right, Linus. Caleb, like I said, I was very impressed uh, studying him. He's really a very evasive, um, and he's got a slick style. He's got great eyes. But what I say, more importantly, he's got a real high IQ. And that's the combination that he put his to give you on twice. Well, he's starting to land some good, sharp shots right now. But Caleb Plant's got a high, high IQ in the ring. Time winding down in round two. Scheduled for 12. Mike Well, in 2015, Caleb Plant lost his daughter, Aaliyah, at 19 months due to a rare disease. With a reminder of the title belt painted on his ceiling, he then delivered on a promise to win a world championship and deliver the belt to the gravesite of his daughter. He's gone through a lot of heartbreak. His mom passing away earlier this year. Lost his daughter back in 2015. We're all parents sitting here. You, Kenny, Lennox is a parent, I'm a parent. And could you imagine, you just couldn't imagine anything worse than that in your life. I don't know how you ever could get over it. 
uh, it would be devastating, I think, to all three of us here. And uh, it's amazing that this, man, that this man is able to even carry on with a career, to tell you the truth. I'd want to jump off a bridge, quite frankly. Caleb, so my hat's off to him. Caleb with a tattoo on his left arm, honoring his daughter. We mentioned the giraffe print trunks in honor of his late mom, Beth. Round three, scheduled for 12. Caleb Plant, the IBF World Super Middleweight Champ. Mike Lee fighting for the first time in 13 months. Oh. And Lee goes down again. That was a great right hand right over the top of the low hand of Mike Lee. Caleb Plank held him with a solid right hand to the chin. And he set that whole thing up with the jab. You could see it coming, basically. You know, Mike Lee just is standing there waiting for the punches. And Caleb can really do anything he wants. He can place the punches anywhere oh. he wants. Down down caught Lee. him with a short right hook no, coming left, in. Left hook. Yeah. His left hook, left yeah. Hook, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think this fight's going to go the distance right now. I think uh, he's very he's hurt. Had, right yeah, now. he's having trouble getting up. Go. Now it looks like Robert Burns able to push that time. Oh, no. One more knockdown, the fight's going to be over. I can guarantee you that. Look at Mike Lee. He's just overly aggressive and look determined. But that also might be the reason he runs into another hard yes. punch like that. Yeah. That's it. That will do it. And Lee is not happy with the referee, Robert Bird. Let me tell you, Lee's... Caleb Plant remains unbeaten at 19 and 0 as he stops Mike Lee in round three. Well, a lot of talk from Caleb Plant and Mike Lee leading up to this fight. There's Lee smiling in the ring. Remember, he did not look up at Caleb Plant during the faceoff just prior to the fight. And here's the first knockdown where Caleb hit him to the body, then hitting him upstairs. He covered up, and then Caleb just unwind on him with that left hook. And here's the second knockdown. His hands are high, but he's not watching Caleb. He's watching Caleb's body. Caleb's watching him and threw a left hook and knocked him down. And here we go to the third knockdown. That was really just an off balance. Didn't really catch him good, but he caught him off balance. And as Lee attempted to get up, not pleased with the referee, Robert Byrd, after he stopped the fight in round three. Plant and Lee embrace. We head to the ring and join Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 1 minute 29 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Robert Bird, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout, technical knockout, still undefeated and still the IBF super middleweight champion of the world, sweet hands, Caleb Plant. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Barclay Center here in Brooklyn, New York as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by Dabella Entertainment, TGB Promotions, and Showtime. Sponsored by Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit, and Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach. 
This bow is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman, the Supervisor Sir Charles Giles, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. Introducing our judges scoring from ringside. From Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. From New York, Kevin Morgan. And also from New York, Carlos Ortiz Jr. And introducing our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, is David Fields. All right, fans, here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with green trim, fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Camagüe in Cuba. He weighed in at 241 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 28 wins, no losses, two no decisions, and 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger, the former interim title holder and the current WBC number three heavyweight in the world. Tonight, looking to become the first Cuban-born heavyweight world champion, introducing the undefeated Luis Go! King Kong Ortiz. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the gold, green, and black trunks, and hailing from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. He weighed in at a trim and ready 214 and three quarter pounds. Here is the 2008 Olympic bronze medalist who has knocked out every opponent he has faced in the professional ranks. With a record of 39 wins, no losses, 38 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. Please welcome the hard-hitting and undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Bronze Bomber, introducing Deontay. Once again, a referee in charge, David Fields, now to give instructions. Okay, hey, gentlemen, we scheduled to box 12 rounds for the heavyweight championship. We're going over the rules in the dressing room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most ball protects yourself at that time. Touch gloves, good luck. Deontay Wilder looking to make his seventh successful title defense. Standing in his way is his most difficult opponent, that man, Luis King Kong Ortiz who's trying to make history and become the first Cuban-born heavyweight to win the heavyweight championship of the world. But will Deontay Wilder get closer back up, back up, back up, to what he hopes will be heavyweight unification? We're underway. Ortiz is a southpaw. Wilder conventional. Watch your feet, watch your feet. Wilder with the reach. Wilder looking to measure Ortiz with his jab. This fight was supposed to happen November 4th, but now it is occurring here in 2018. And look at the front feet as well because they are both with 
Ortiz being a southpaw and Wilder being conventional, you think that with the veteran mindset of Ortiz, he may want to step or try to step on the foot of Wilder to try to gain some leverage. And Wilder looks at him and smiles. In the corner of Deontay Wilder, Brooklyn native, former world champion and Olympic gold medalist, Mark Breland. For Luis Ortiz, Herman Caicedo, and they've said that they've had a wonderful camp and that Ortiz is in the best shape of his life, even at 38 years of age. A shot to the abdomen by Luis Ortiz. And Ortiz looking to send that straight left. Wilder wants to prove those that are naysayers and finish off Luis Ortiz in grand fashion. Ortiz doesn't like that people have called him old, but he said it is his moment. Halfway home, round one. Side with that straight left is Ortiz. Wilder hasn't been throwing the jab out with as much frequency. He's probably worried about being countered by Luis Ortiz. One minute left. That jab comes up, but wait for that right hand by Deontay Wilder. It is an eraser. It has hurt many fighters. 97% knockout percentage for Wilder. Ortiz seems to be very relaxed in there. And he's trying to put, and he's trying to step on the foot of Wilder. Big straight left hand that connects there. Almost, it was partially a glancing blow by Ortiz. Wilder. Looking for his opening. Figure at the end of this round, Wilder may want to throw that right hand. He has done so in the past, especially at the tail end of rounds. <laughs> Jack comes in, an exchange, and Wilder backs up. I one in the books. <laughs> Okay, bonito. Sigue ahí. Cuidadito. Stay there. No haga tanto movimiento. Cuídate de esa recta, ya la viste. You already see what he has. Dime, ¿todo bien? Everything good? Arriba y abajo y el coladito. I want you to go up and down. Round number two, there you see the lovely Samantha. Here joining us at Barclays Center. Round two, this one's scheduled for 12. I don't know if it'll go 12, but that is what the schedule of this heavyweight championship matchup is for. Wilder sending out that jab, and Mark really was telling him, I want more of the jab, I want a stiff jab. That's what was not present in round one for Deontay Wilder. He's using it now as a range finder, and pointing away is Ortiz. Wilder needs to extend that jab and get full leverage behind it. There we see Wilder unleashing that jab. Now Wilder is moving around the ring as Ortiz trying to cut off the ring. Wilder was thinking about landing, throwing that right hand, but he pulled back. Difference of over 25 pounds, Wilder weighed in. And a big straight left, but that was a trip. That was a trip, he fell. That was not a punch. 214, that was a trip by Luis Ortiz. And now Wilder goes back with the offensive, and Ortiz retaliates with a straight left. Wilder thought he had Ortiz hurt. But Ortiz quickly answered that.
Just over the midway point of round two. Wilder sends out that jab, but partially blocked, and Ortiz has done a very good job of parrying away, of blocking that jab from getting through, as Wilder's sort of throwing it out there lazily. Now he backs up, he's so athletic as Deontay Wilder, trying to settle into the rhythm. But Ortiz, this is in terms of the tempo that he wants to fight at. And a straight left, partially glancing shot on the body of Wilder. Very technical is Luis Ortiz. A straight left to the body of Deontay Wilder. And Ortiz, I think we're seeing that the game plan is to take away the legs and the athleticism of Wilder. And it is attacking the body of the 32-year-old from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Wilder through that laser straight right hand, barely getting out of the way was Ortiz. That could have changed things significantly. It has in the past big right hand there, and that's for Wilder that ends the second. Ortiz, he went for it. He just kind of went to his feet, went to the canvas. I think it was because of a punch. I think he got his feet tangled up, but he really didn't see when his feet got tangled. And here's going back, there's that straight left right there on the body of Wilder as Wilder in his back of the turnbuckle. Look at the look that Wilder gave Ortiz when, he, when Ortiz connected with that. But here's Wilder. Now with that hook and then that wild clubbing right hand and Wilder smiling as they say, okay, now this is what I enjoy. Turn it up. Mark Breeland giving the motion to Deontay go, Wilder go, to keep his hand up right, as that straight right left comes right there, right there, right there, right there, right there. from Luis Ortiz. Round three scheduled for 12. Ray Flores joining ringside here at Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The heavyweight championship of the world is on the line between the champion Deontay Wilder and the challenger Luis Ortiz. And as a range finder is, and look at what with some theatrics, bringing back like in a samurai stance was Wilder. And he pops, Wilder, he pops Ortiz with the jab. Both are family men, they have daughters. Daughters with some health issues. Both proud family men. Wilder threw a straight right hand, but it missed. And Ortiz coming forward. Luis Ortiz, I wonder if he's gonna go back to that body attack. He did target the body, and there is that straight left hand on the abdomen of Wilder. The man known as King Kong, looking to wreck havoc. Upon Deontay Wilder and hand him his first defeat. For Wilder, he's looking to give the first blemish to Luis Ortiz, straight left for Ortiz. Ortiz now bouncing around. Wilder still hasn't been able to find a home for that jab. When he throws it out, Ortiz is in proper position. There's the jab to the stomach of Ortiz. 80 seconds left, round three. And the fans booing, they want to see more action, but look, this is any one wasted motion or any, even a half mistake, can cost either the fight. Both sort of Throwing out those jams lazily, but not connecting. Wilder looking to land that straight right hand that has catapulted him to six successful title defenses. Let 
both. Lazily playing with that jab. Ortiz looking to come on the inside, but anytime Ortiz steps it up, Wilder goes backwards, and now he's looking to come forward is Wilder. A straight left that misses by Ortiz. Very difficult rounds to score if you're the judges. Wilder threw a straight right hand, but way out of the way was Luis Ortiz. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be ten. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant this fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Round four, this one's scheduled for 12. But don't forget that Deontay Wilder started late against Gerald Washington. The end of the fight against Washington in the fifth round, so Wilder's no stranger to, he can start fast, he can also start late. Just all depends on the opponent. And also Wilder has had some issues when it comes to dealing with southpaws, especially a southpaw that has the background, a big right hand there by Deontay Wilder. With the amateur background and the experience of Luis Ortiz. And for Wilder, it did, and as we mentioned, it took him nine rounds to finish off Arthur Spuke, and he did that in spectacular fashion here at Barclays Center. That was in January of 2016, two years ago. Now Wilder, his confidence is starting to grow a little bit. You're starting to see him throw out more of a stiff jab, harder punches, sitting down on his shots. And for Ortiz, Will his conditioning come into play as we get towards the middle rounds? And Wilder pounds his chest as to say, come on, let's fight. Approaching 100 seconds here in the fourth. And Ortiz is coming forward, throwing that lazy jab out there, but he's not listening to his corner, Herman Cotsedo, about attacking the body and then coming upstairs. Wilder's trying to time Ortiz. And a big straight left hand there by Ortiz. He's looking to time Ortiz, but anytime Ortiz throws a jab, he brings that left hand right back up top to try to block the right hand. A big straight left hand, best punch of the fight for Luis Ortiz on Wilder. Under a minute left here in the fourth. If you're Wilder, you want to stay away from the ropes because Ortiz has a ton of power, 80% knockout percentage. Ortiz looking to cut off the ring. Wilder going backwards, but he still has that laser straight right hand that if it lands clean, who knows what can happen. Straight left that lands for Ortiz. Followed by the jab, Ortiz gaining control of the round here as we approach the end of the fourth. Another big straight left hand by Ortiz. Wilder pushes the ball from David Fields. Separates them. Ten seconds remaining here in the fourth. That's the end of the fourth round. A left hook by Wilder to end the fourth round. Let's take a look at some of the work here from the fourth. There we see the jab followed by that big right hand, and Ortiz took it. I don't know of many people that have been able to take that, a punch of that nature from Deontay Wilder. And here we see the work from Luis Ortiz. Throws the jab, gets the attention of Wilder, and then there's that straight left right there on the head of Wilder. And there's the angle as Wilder was kind of going backwards, off balance. Round five. Check us out. Check us out. 
Here at Barclays Center, Luis Ortiz looks fresh. Well, so far, the age has not caught up to the man known as King Kong. Using the jab to the body is Ortiz. Wilder needs to find, and he connected with that straight right hand, and I wonder if that plays in his mind a little bit because he landed it pretty clean, and Ortiz took it well. But Wilder's got to be thinking, if I get him again, I could bring an end to the fight because of the kind of destructive punching power that he has. Ray Flores ringside here at Barclays Center. Deontay Wilder looking to make his seventh successful title defense. Big right hand by Wilder, but Ortiz answers with the counter. And now Ortiz boxing on his toes, steps inside. Ortiz's confidence is starting to grow as the fight moves on. Now he steps inside with a jab to the body, followed by a straight left. And Ortiz is trying to bring the fight to Wilder. Wilder's gonna have to get Ortiz off of him. I wonder if Wilder is going to try to connect with the hook because there we see he threw the hook. It was one thing that they were working on in the open workouts because Ortiz will throw that jab. He leaves himself open for a brief second. Wilder could counter with that left hook. But the jab hasn't been as abundant for Wilder and successful. And Ortiz throws a right hand, but it misses. 75 seconds left here in the fifth. Also, if you're Wilder, are you gonna be luring Ortiz in? You may be trying to lure or lose Ortiz in and then connect with that straight right hand. Even throw a hook in and throw an uppercut, but that was blocked in route from Ortiz. Tempo and the pace in which Ortiz wants to fight. Coming in forward, right, but it's what a shot there by Ortiz. And now the corner of Ortiz is telling him, let your hands go. A big straight right hand by Wilder. And Wilder going on the offensive. Ortiz answers back. So much on the line. The heavyweight championship of the world. A big straight right hand. Tranquilito, él va a salir como loco en este round, okay? He's gonna come out like a crazy man in this round. Okay, tranquilito, te descuidaste, tranquilo. Really relaxed. Mira, si vuelve a pasar, te me quedas abajo, arrodíllate, okay? Espera el conteo, no te me pares tan rápido. Te organizas. Don't try to recover and let's take a look at the replay. Here is the knockdown. It was that straight right hand followed by another one. Two right hands and look at Wilder. The emotion. It's almost like he said, I finally got him. Look at it. Boom, right there, right on the nose. And then Wilder sees that he's hurt, that he's uneasy, and then boom! There is the right hand, crashing to the canvas was Luis Ortiz. And look at the daughter of Luis Ortiz, she can merely bear to watch. And Deontay Wilder is going to go as he always tries to do, and that is finish him off. But Luis Ortiz is extremely calculated and is still powerful. But 97% knockout percentage for Wilder. Stepping inside with the jab is Ortiz. That is why Wilder is one of the most dangerous power punchers, if not the most powerful puncher in the game today. And Wilder cinching it up. He has it coiled. When is he going to strike with that straight right hand? It has put every foe that Wilder has faced down.
Dubuca against Washington, but when he gets going, he is so difficult to deal with inside that ring, which is why he's undefeated and making a seventh successful, or trying to make a seventh title defense here tonight. A left hook to the body by Wilder. for his opening, stepping inside with a straight left, partially blocked by Wilder. It was a big round for Wilder in the fifth with the knockdown. The corner of Ortiz urging him to please raise your hands. Do not get caught, a jab's coming. They both exchange jabs. Under a minute left here in the sixth. Ortiz to use the jab to close the distance. Because from this distance, this favors Wilder. As you can tell, he's thinking, looking for the opening. The advancing forward was Ortiz, but Wilder got out of the way of a straight left. Straight left that was partially blocked by Wilder. A left hook there. And a Wilder, oh, by a right hand! Wilder has unbelievable power, but Ortiz, for the most part tonight, has shown a heck of a chin. Straight left that was blocked by Wilder. And they both are swinging for the fences to end the sixth. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay! Deontay Wilder squares off with the Nordic Nightmare Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. And here is some of the action from the sixth. There you see that straight right hand. Boom. And you saw that Ortiz took it well, followed by a left hook, and they both were just sort of swinging for the fences. And this is later on in the round with Ortiz stepping inside, and Wilder, they both duck it down underneath and trying to land big hooks. You have to love how much these guys want to finish off the other. Round seven, entering the second half of the fight. Here at Barclay Center, Ray Flores, Deontay Wilder, Luis Ortiz Wilder, the champion for over three years. Using the jab is Luis Ortiz. And he lands that jab. It's been working for him in spurts for the 38-year-old out of Cuba. by Wilder, if you're Wilder, you can't let Luis Ortiz really reassert himself. He's gotta go and try to land another big shot to gain the attention of Ortiz. Ortiz, he isn't throwing and isn't sitting down in his punches as much as he did in the first couple rounds. We're seeing more arm punches out of Luis Ortiz. I don't know if that is a sign that he is tired. Straight right hand, and it found its mark for Wilder. took that miss for Wilder. Deontay Wilder says after this fight, I want to get closer to unification and I want the winner Joshua and Parker. But first, he must pass the stern test of Luis Ortiz. 70 seconds remaining here in the seventh. A straight right hand, again, that bound its mark for Wilder. Ortiz isn't doing much. Wilder, looking for the opening straight left that landed for 
Ortiz. If you're Wilder, you do not want to have your back against the ropes against this man. Straight right hand. Down the middle of the other one. They both land. Again to the mid 
midsection of Deontay Wilder. And that's the end of the eighth as they both land at the belt. No te me pares así. Haz tu trabajo. Okay. Haz tu trabajo, eso es. Jala tu aire. Jala tu aire. Jala tu aire, coño. Mira. Listen. Mañana no hay chance para esto. ¿Oíste? Mañana no hay chance me. para esto. Ok, tranquilito. Relax, relax. This is your moment to JT. This is your moment to JT. Come on, man, come on. Keep that, keep that, keep that jab in the face. Keep that jab in the face. Let him chase you. Don't, don't get on the rope. Let him chase you. That's what fire him up, alright? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Round nine. This one's scheduled for 12. wonder on the scorecards how the judges have it. To some ringside observers, they have Ortiz ahead with a sizable lead. So it could very well be necessary for Deontay Wilder to get a finish here tonight in order to retain his WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And also, there are lucrative big money fights and paydays down the line if Wilder's able to get past Ortiz. But the same can be said about Ortiz. That's your feet. A straight left to the abdomen of Ortiz, or by Ortiz to Wilder. If you're Wilder, you gotta start to really reassert yourself. He's got to swing the fight in his favor, and he can do so with one punch, but he has four rounds remaining. And chance of Wilder here at Barclays Center. This is the third time Wilder has main evented here at Barclays Center. The first two were highlight reel knockouts, one of Arthur Spuka. The second, a first round destruction of Berman Stavern. lands for Wilder. Ortiz is, this is his pace. This is the flow that he wants. But if you're Wilder, he's got to establish the jab. He hasn't been doing so. Big straight left by Luis Ortiz. And back comes Ortiz. And now Wilder popping the jab. Now he's getting loose. But Ortiz is getting the better of the exchanges. Wilder looked over at his left at one for Brief second, taking his eyes off of Luis Ortiz. And Ortiz, still, this is a round that is playing in his favor. Ortiz moves forward, and Wilder, his punch output has lessened. A big right hand, and it hurt Ortiz, and now Wilder is going on the attack again. And Ortiz seems to regather himself. My goodness, that one punch can change things completely. Sense that he was hurt. 
And you heard Mark Breland tell Deontay Wilder, stay off the ropes. That is when he does his best work. Stay off the ropes. And here is that clubbing left hook by Wilder, followed by the right hand. And Wilder is shaking his head. This could be the moment that Deontay Wilder becomes a global superstar if he's able to stop Luis Ortiz. This is his moment, his opportunity to prove that he is truly the best heavyweight in the world against a guy as dangerous as Luis Ortiz. Ortiz has given Wilder fits in this fight, but if Wilder can finish him off, that speaks volumes. And Wilder, they know in the corner, Mark Breland, JDs, they said to Wilder, you have him hurt, let's go back on the attack. A left to the body of Ortiz. Ortiz is coming forward. away from Broadway, 
And you couldn't have drawn that up. And look at this. The sign respect between the two. Between Wilder and Ortiz. What a heavyweight championship fight that they delighted us with. Come get it. Tell them. Come get it. Tell them. Come get it. Tell them. Tell them. What a moment. We will be talking about March 3rd, 2018, for years to come, as the moment that Deontay Wilder broke that ceiling, broke through that glass ceiling. This place is packed, and they were all packed into this building here at Barclays Center for that man, Deontay Wilder. He saw, he came, he had issues, but he conquered. Okay, so I just got word all three judges had the fight 85 to 84 for Deontay Wilder at the time of the stoppage. Now that is against what the media had the fight scored at ringside. But again, it doesn't matter because Wilder is still the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And again, you could never bring a better plot if you were Deontay Wilder. And let's take a look at how all of this unfolded here. This is the first knockdown. You see Wilder steps in, boom! That right hand, followed by the left hook, and then another right hand. Look at the barrage of punches and Ortiz immediately. And he looked over at his corner at that moment. He went down, and here is another one of the knockdowns. As Wilder steps inside, this is the first knockdown still. And Wilder, boom! That's what started it. Ortiz was hurt, the left hook. And then Wilder sent him down to the canvas with that right hook on the temple. And this is again, and look at that, boom, right there. You cannot stand up to that. And the left hook on the ear, and then going to the canvas with his knees was Luis Ortiz. And here is the second knockdown as Wilder measuring Ortiz, boom! That right hand, it staggered Ortiz. Another right hand by Wilder. Those downward motion, big right hand, sledgehammer right hands, the uppercut. That's what crumpled over Ortiz and referee Dave Fields had seen enough. His knockout percentage will no doubt go up, but my goodness, this is the second knockdown once again. That big right hand and look at Wilder, sees that Ortiz is hurt, coming down again, and look at this. He just saw and sensed blood in the water, and he attacked. But look at this uppercut. You are gonna watch the uppercut right here. Boom! Nearly separated the head from the shoulders of Luis Ortiz. At that point, Dave Fields had no choice but to wave it off. Deontay Wilder, obviously, very happy. He said he was going to do it. He went out, and he fulfilled. And now here's Jimmy Lennon. We have time. Two minutes, five seconds in round number ten. Our referee in charge, David Fields, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, and still the undefeated WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze 
Bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be Tim. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant this fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Tale of the Tape, brought to you by Corona, who brings you the best of boxing. Truex is one year older. The height advantage goes to Durrell by two inches. Reach, not much of a difference there. Darrell with one loss, Truex with two. Let's go to Michael C. Williams for the introduction of the fighters. Live on Spike, Premier Boxing Champions now features tonight's co-main event, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. Introducing the red corner first, wearing the maroon and gold. His professional record, 26 wins with just two losses and two draws. 16 wins coming by way of knockout from Osseo, Minnesota. Introducing Caleb Golden Truex. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the green and white as a professional. He's near perfect at 28 and one. With one draw, 22 victories. Coming by way of knockout, he hails from and fights out of Flint, Michigan, the former super middleweight champion, Anthony the Dog Durrell. In charge of the action, your referee, Harvey Dodd. We already went over the instructions. Touch gloves. Good luck to you. All right, baby. Anthony Terrell, former WBC super middleweight champion. You know his story, a cancer survivor. He's overcome serious injuries. Had a motorcycle accident in 2012 where he broke his left leg and his left wrist. He wants to recapture the title. He lost, of course, to Badu Jack majority decision just eight months ago. He's thinking about getting another opportunity in the near future, wants to get a second title. Caleb Truex, 26, two and two, eight one and one in his last 10 fights, has only lost to Daniel Jacobs on spike on April 24th. He's a tough customer. He's got 16 knockouts among his 26 wins. So he's got some punching power. This one's scheduled for 10. Both these fighters, I think, the last time we saw them, victims of their pacing in a sense. Remember, it was the same card, you know, that Jacobs fought Truax, that uh, Durrell lost his title to Badu Jack, and, you know, it seemed like Badu Jack was just a little busier, just wanted it a little bit more. And in the Jacobs fight, Truax, I think, gave up rounds, gave up rounds, so there wasn't time for him to come back, and he got knocked out. Both these guys need to know when to step it up, I think. Truex landing the jab. Darrell quiet thus far in this first round. Darrell, the younger brother of Andre, many thought he was the guy that would get the title first. And look at this, Truex in deep trouble, and he goes down. In the first Four, round with a minute 28 five, to go. Six, seven, eight. Give me a glove. Look out. Let's see what Anthony Durrell can do here. Another right hand. Down goes Truex again. And Harvey oh, Dodd says that's it. Right. 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 Wow. Yeah. And a okay. sweet backflip by Anthony oh, Durrell. Oh, we yeah, talked about in fact. Statements, it doesn't get much more emphatic than a first round knockout champ. And I like the way he showed his composure. He was calm, he executed off the jab, and man, when he landed that punch, you can see the dog come out. And Anthony Durrell, he's back, guys. Never let him off the hook. Wow, what a showing by Anthony Durrell. He said adversity's never held him down. Well, he came out with a vengeance tonight. He wants Badu now. Here's a look at the replay. Once he had him hurt, look at the right hand and a follow-up right. A dog never lets go of a bone. He had it. 
never let it go. Great tenacity by Anthony Durrell. And like I said in the opening, circumstances sometimes makes us champions. And it's because of those circumstances that we have to dig deep and go past where we think we can go. Just the second and third times that Truex has been down. Darrell came out with some fire in his gloves tonight with the knockout. Inside the ring, it comes to an end officially. One minute, 49 seconds into round number one. The winner by TKO, Anthony Nadal. Team. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. Wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Frank Sanchez ready to go. Here's the tail of the tape. He's 28 years old, 6'4", 227. He's moving up in weight, trying to become a, a full-fledged, full-sized heavyweight because the guy's at the very top of the division there. 6'7", 6'9", 260 plus. Brian Howard, good right hand. He's 40 years old though. 6'3", 210. Slight reach advantage for Frank Sanchez out of Cuba. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Microsoft Theater here in downtown Los Angeles, Premier Boxing Champions presents our next attraction. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, we have Carla Caiz, Edward Hernandez Sr., and Fernando Villarreal. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in our co-main event of the evening featuring heavyweights in the ring. Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gray trim, fighting out of Philadelphia by way of Lake Wales, Florida. He weighed in at a ready 210 pounds. His record stands at 15 wins, three losses, with 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing the hard-hitting Brian MVP Howard. And his opponent across the ring on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with red trim. Originally from Guantanamo, Cuba, now fighting out of Miami, Florida. He weighed in at 227 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign. The ring with a record of 15 wins, no losses. 11 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the renowned former Cuban national amateur standout and the current undefeated world rank contender introducing the Cuban flash, Frank Sanchez. And our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Jerry Cantu. Gentlemen, you were given your instructions in the dressing room. Estás recibiendo tus instrucciones en el camarino. Buena suerte. Touch them up. Good luck to both of you. Frank Sanchez, 28 years old. He is 15 and 0. The impressive amateur career in Cuba, 214 and 6 former Cuban national champion. Closed captioning is available for tonight's telecast. And if you'd like to hear the broadcast in Spanish, you can click over to the simulcast on Fox Deportes. Frank Sanchez turning pro in 2017. Very busy man. There's Brian Howard. Again, he is 40 years old. He comes off an impressive win. Carlos Negron, who you saw there in the highlights, he knocked him out in one round. Howard with the win. He's got a very good right hand, Joe Goose, and you wonder if it's going to be enough to keep Sanchez at bay. Well, Sanchez has seen a lot of right hands in his career. Over 200 amateur fights, only six losses. And as a pro, he's undefeated. But, you know, uh, right now, Howard is, you know, as you look at him, he's a very strong looking guy. He's smart. And he's looking for that right hand like he just landed there. Kind of grazed uh, Sanchez. But uh, he's, he's very strong early in the fight. Let's see if he's in condition to go the 10 rounds that it's slated for. That's the question in my mind. Howard doubling up on the jab there earlier, and then again, he will load up on that right hand, but it is a very good right hand. You, you have to be aware of it. Long jab there by Sanchez. Again, very skilled, has that incredible amateur background, and he is the total package coming in undefeated here tonight. 
And if you noticed, uh, Sanchez has taken a different stance in this fight. He's holding his ground. He's coming forward. Where in the last fight we saw him that we announced against uh, uh, Joey DeJaco, he really gave up a lot of ground and boxed a lot. It looks like he's, yeah. he's doing what he said he was going to do. Yeah, right? he's, he's trying to fight from that middle ground like his trainer and him um, were working on. And mm -hmm. he's doing a good job around, uh, of it because usually we usually see him jumping around and dancing yep. around the ring and usually out of, out of the distance where he needs to be to be making some contact. Exactly That's a right. good point, Joe mm -hmm. and Lennox. Yeah, that, that he, he seems to be a little more committed now moving forward and holding his ground. Strong jab there and jabs back once again as Howard answers back with his own jab. Yeah, I'm looking at Howard and I'm like, he's got that hand, that left hand pretty low and he, and he throws that jab and he brings it right back to his stomach. That's just a recipe for disaster right there. Yeah, that right hand there by Sanchez is cocked and ready to go as he comes out, fires right off the shoulder. And it is. Lennox is right. I mean, I love that when I see a guy in front of you. But some of those guys use that to their advantage. They sucker you in with that low left hand, and they do the Mayweather roll and come back and counter you. But you're right. It's dangerous, and it doesn't always work. But one thing about, uh, you know, Sanchez is, is basically, you know, look, he... Again, he had two over 200 amateur fights, and it's hard to break that style. In the amateurs, you fight three rounds, and you got to box a lot in the amateurs. That's what works. That's what you get points for for scoring. In pros, it's a little bit different. So, it's going to take time for him to look to settle down and get really that pro style down, which it looks yeah. like he's advancing. But he's working on it because that's what that was what part of my problem, saying that you know still got that amateur style. Uh -huh. Now he's developing it into more of a pro style. Pro, pro style is the pro style where you don't jump around too much. You kind of step Sensei, around. Right. Yes, Para la campana. Final seconds, round number Sensei. one. Frank Sanchez a little more aggressive in round number one. Brian Howard able to hold his ground. Welcome back to Los Angeles, California, the Microsoft Theater. There you see Brian Howard. He's making just his second appearance at heavyweight, and I'm joined by uh, Joe Goosen and Lennox Lewis. Guys, he told us in the fighter meetings that the biggest thing for him was actually getting hit by heavyweights. That's something he had to work on. Joe? Yeah, yeah. When, when somebody hits you, well, you know, heavyweights can hit hard. So uh, when, when you, if you're not in a heavyweight class and you get hit by a heavyweight, you know that you've been hit by yeah. heavyweight because it's not just the, the power, it's the weight with the power Ooh. that's coming. Howard, Howard makes around now and yeah. eats a hook as Sanchez catches him with that, but Howard uh, a little over-aggressive yeah, in that he, move. Yeah, you got to watch out for that. You try not to turn your back against a puncher, else you're going to be in danger. Sanchez moved back there as well. Howard, again, hey, that, that right hand is dangerous. That, that is his money shot, and that's his chance in this fight. And that's Long jab there by Sanchez. Yeah. You know, we saw Frank Sanchez, fellas, just before the COVID shutdown in March in Brooklyn, and that was against Joey DeVeco, and it was in that fight. Lennox, I think we had a running uh, commentary regarding just how much he should press. Again, he's a, a very good boxer, but you wonder what should be the proper level of aggression in going for the knockout. Well, you know, it's not really that. It's breaking down your opponent. You know, breaking down your opponent so you can clear the way for a clean shot from you. So what I usually do is, is uh, clear away from my right hand to get through. So I throw a couple different punches. I throw left hooks, body punches, and then throw that right hand. But do you think he did enough in that fight, Lennox? Uh, yeah, I think he did enough, but, you know, he's got a lot of work to do, and he's looked like he's gone back to the gym and done some work with his training, because yeah. I've definitely seen a difference in Frank Sanchez in this fight. Sanchez definitely looking more aggressive. Your thoughts on that, Joe? No, I agree with Lennox. Look, I mean, this is what he didn't do against uh, Devenko. Uh, and so I like what I'm seeing right now. And I'm sure he's going to blend a little bit of boxing with a little bit of press, but uh, I, I think he also feels confident that he's stronger than Howard, and he's going after him right now. He's looking for a knockout. And I told you, he's had two decisions in his last two fights. You know, to be a heavyweight, you want to make that money, you want to get that respect. you got to start knocking guys out, and I think that's what he's doing tonight. He's looking for that, and I'm talking about uh, Sanchez. When Sanchez had uh, Brian up against the ropes, he's got to step, he's got to step back a little bit, give himself a little room to punch. That's what, not what he's doing. He's smothering his punches. Final 30 seconds of round number two. Howard with a decent uppercut off the ropes there as well. Able to gain Sanchez's respect, but Sanchez definitely more aggressive here. Misses with the right hand and stays in the pocket. Howard and a hard jab there from Sanchez. Howard has good 
moving qualities. He moves well. He doesn't get hit too easy. He's got good side to side, to side movement with his head. Final seconds here again. That's a 40-year-old man in there against Frank Sanchez. That's round number two. Luis Ortiz looking for another big-time fight. He could be a top-tier opponent. Comes off that loss to Deontay Wilder. He was taking a shot at the heavyweight championship of the world. He was knocked out with one brutal right hand from Deontay Wilder, but was boxing very well before that. Here, round number three, Frank Sanchez and Brian Howard. Sanchez in the blue and red trunks. Sanchez uh, now follows through in a winging right hand. Very aggressive here against Howard. Yeah, S Sanchez was a, mounted a good attack there. What he needs to do is not only throw to the head, but he's got to throw to the body and give himself a little punch in you. Well, this is a different version of, of, of Frank Sanchez. I mean, no question, fellas. I mean, he, he was doing nothing like this against Joey DeVeco. Now, DeVeco's a very different opponent. Yeah. Short, stocky, sturdy. But he was up on his toes, Joe Goose, and just kind of dancing and flicking out the jab. This is a very different fighter. Yeah, you're right. And, and DeVeco was actually a little bit better counterpuncher than Howard. Howard's more of a one-punch counterpuncher, where uh, Joey was, uh, you know, he could hit you from with either hand. Now, that being said... Howard on the inside is not real game to, to, to work. He'll he'll tie you up a little bit more because he likes to fight from a little bit of distance. But if you watched Howard's old tapes, and I'm sure Frank Sanchez and his people did, you saw that he didn't do well down the stretch, that he would tire and tie up a little bit like he did against Rivera. So, you know, I, I think Sanchez is putting the pressure on him to kind of tire him out and to maybe take him out halfway at the halfway point or later in this fight. Howard got a late start to boxing as did Michael Coffey. We've made a lot about that with Coffey, the Marine who was in the previous fight. But Howard started boxing at the age of 26. He's a good football player, played semi-pro football for several years. Uh, also took three years off uh, after he had his first professional loss. He took that loss pretty hard. Uh, but he comes back here and he's had some decent fights in his pro career and now earns a shot against uh, the very talented Frank Sanchez. Yeah, and, and not only that, I mean, look, tonight we had uh, uh, Negron fight, and uh, Negron won his fight in the uh, uh, first round. Uh, and uh, look, uh, Howard knocked him out in the first round. So he, he can knock out big guys, Brian Howard. Uh, yeah, Cuffing and I'm not discounting there by Sanchez. I'm, I'm not discounting him in this fight at all. But he's got to do more right now. Yeah. All the work's being done by Sanchez right now. Right, Howard needs to do something. I mean, he's not listening to his trainer. His trainer told him actually to come out, throw a lot more jabs, and come in with an uppercut. I haven't seen no uppercut yet from him. So right now, he's just worried about Sanchez's offense when he should be doing worried about his own offense. Sanchez going with, hitting with a right hand to the body off that jab. Again, Sanchez is a very highly skilled fighter, so a very difficult for Howard oh, to get that. He's wobbled, hit hurt. by an uppercut, yeah, 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 yeah. and a right hand puts him down. Wow. Now that's the uppercut Four. that his trainer was asking for, and Five. he finally threw it. Six. And I'm afraid that he heard me. Seven. <laughs> that was good. It was a left hook, right uppercut, and uh, the uppercut, like you said, Bri, really did the damage. Final seconds here in this round, so it looks like Howard can survive, but that was a dynamite combination by Frank, Ch Frank Sanchez to get the first knockdown of this fight. We will keep it right here and go to the corner. That is Henry Garcia, Ryan Garcia's father, by the way, the dynamite lightweight, as we go back into the corner, and there's the knockdown. That uppercut Ooh. did the damage, and then a hook and a multitude of punches yeah. from Sanchez. There's a right uppercut, then he's going to hit him with a, a hook and a right hand, right? Yeah, and right this... Right here. Hold on, here we go. Boom. And here comes the right hand. Bam. You know, most most guys don't really notice when they hurt a guy, but Sanchez recognized straight away that yep. he hurt him and took advantage of him and went after him. That's right. We were talking about that earlier in the dressing room yep. tonight. You know? Good right hand. Boy. And, there, and there it is, Lennox. That, that's just a momentary stagger that Sanchez immediately took advantage of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he identified that uh, Howard was hurt right when he hit him. So that's why he jumped on him so quickly and then threw that combo and put him on the canvas. Let's see if uh, Howard can uh, come out and do something here because uh, I, I think it's going to be more of the same if he doesn't get an offense going. So round number four, and let's see if Brian Howard can clear his head. Hurt badly on that very game to get back up, and fortunate for him, we were in the final seconds of round number three. Look at the copy box numbers. Wow, 48 to eight in punches landed as Sanchez has just made the most of this fight. Hard hook, and down goes Howard again. Three, four, five. 
six, seven, eight. Not toward me. What are you right? right? How do you feel? Want to go? Yeah. Okay, let's go. Great yeah. job, boy. He's taking some of the starch out of Brian Howard. He comes back firing. Let's see if Sanchez can close the show. Brian Howard's doing the right thing, and that's what you should do. If you're hurt, you got to hold the guy. Make sure he doesn't hit you anymore. Chopping right hand over the top of the hook puts Howard down the third knockdown in the fight. And Jerry Cantor won't Four. let this go on much longer. I think if he goes Five. down the ball, obviously if he goes down again, it'll be over. But Seven. Jerry Cantor Eight. being a very uh, ve uh, veteran referee, he's... He's thinking about stopping it right now. Let's go. All right, here we go. Wow, he's letting it go. He, he let Howard come to him, and he wandered away to his right. Frank Sanchez now has a great opportunity to finish this fight. Howard doing his best, yeah. and he kind of kind of snuggles into him and is able to muffle some of those shots. Well, one thing Howard's doing wrong is standing there. He should be moving on his feet, not making himself an easy target. Howard tries with his right hand, but the starch is, is out of his shots right now. Yeah, he's been, he's been buzzed. I mean, there's no question. Oh. Hard right hand again. Howard is staggered. Sanchez moving in for the kill. This is where Sanchez should be going to the body right now because Howard is very aware of keep it protecting his head right now. Like that. Another uppercut. Good. And a right hand from Sanchez. Howard fires back here. With a left hook. Which, oh, oh boy, that right uppercut just missed, bro. He's got to be careful when he's throwing that right uppercut because... Oh, there he goes. Oh, Hit him with a jab and a right hand. And That's Jerry Cantu says that oh. is enough. Hard shots from Frank Sanchez. And he closes the show with a knockout. Uh. Impressive work from Frank Sanchez, who fought like a very different man than he did several months ago. Back in Los Angeles, Frank Sanchez, when we saw him in March, put on a boxing clinic was just up on his toes and flicking out a jab here in attack mode against Brian Howard. Knocks him down, I believe four times. And actually, as we see the stoppage here, watch Jerry Cantu bring Howard back and you can see the damage done to Howard. And he can't even sit down on his own, almost falls back into the ropes. So just a very game and competitive Brian Howard. Uh, but he gets stopped and was just bounced around there in that fourth round as Frank Sanchez, just a, a very different fighter here tonight, and he gets a knockout victory. The main event is coming up. Luis Ortiz, 41 years old, looks to bounce back from the knockout loss to Deontay Wilder, was fighting very well in that fight, was up on all three judges' scorecards. He'll take on Alexander Flores coming up next in our main event. But Frank Sanchez, uh, could be a star in this division. He's now 16-0. Let's get the official call from Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, seven seconds in round number four. Our referee in charge, Jerry Cantu, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of knockout, and he is still undefeated. The Cuban Flash, Frank Sanchez. Let's look at 15. It. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be ten. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Our main event, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Barclays Center here in Brooklyn, New York, as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by TGB Promotion, sponsored by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the WBA, President Gilberto Jesus Mendoza. Judging at ringside, we have Frank Lombardi, Benoit Roussel, and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fight fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA World Title Heavyweight Eliminator. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance, and boxing fans joining us around the world, Live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, it's time for the main event of the evening! 
first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with red and white trim. He is fighting out of Åland Islands, Finland. He weighed in at 238 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 29 wins and three losses, with 18 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former longtime European heavyweight champion and the current world rank contender known as the Nordic Nightmare, introducing Robert Hellenius. And his opponent across the ring on my right, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red trunks with white trim, fighting out of Long Island, raised in Brooklyn, New York, by way of Wonja, Poland. He weighed in at 265 and one quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 20 wins, no losses, 15 wins coming by way of knockout. He is universally recognized as one of boxing's top four heavyweight world contenders. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the popular and the undefeated Adam Babyface Kolnatsky. And introducing our referee in charge of the action, we have David Fields. Okay, gentlemen, the schedule is about 12 rounds. I've gone over the rules in the dress room. I expect you to obey my commands at all times. Most of all, protection at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape again for our main event of the evening. One of the keys to this fight, Hellenius has a three inch reach advantage and he has three and a half inches on the height. Also has five years, his elder of Konoski. So he's gonna try to use that reach to his advantage. Konoski's got the weight on him and the power. So it's gonna be a dangerous game between both Hellenius and Konoski. Hellenius obviously wants to use the jab, keep Konoski on the outside to set up that overhand right. Adam Konoski undefeated 20 and 0, 15 knockouts. Robert Hellenius. 29 and three, Kovnatsky hoping to inch closer to a world title shot. Ray Flores, Miguel Flores, here ringside at Barclays Center here in Brooklyn. A large Polish fan base supporting Adam Kovnatsky. Boy, have they come out by the thousands. A big right hand by Kovnatsky to start off the action here in the first. With all the talk of the reinvigoration of people's interest in the heavyweight division, back and better than ever over the last couple of years, Adam Kovnowski has always been overlooked, but not anymore. He wants it to be his time, his time to be the first Polish heavyweight champion in the world. But he's got to get through Hellenius in order to do so, and he cannot overlook him. Too many times have guys had bigger fights set up Couple of right hands by Kovnatsky. And yes, you're right that Kovnatsky cannot overlook Robert Hellenius, and it doesn't appear that he is in that mindset right now. Kovnatsky stalking Hellenius, making a fight off his back foot. Kovnatsky has one gear, and that's come right at you. Exactly. We saw it in his last bout against Chris Ariola, and Ariola took a ton of shots. Kovnatsky throws the most punches per round in the heavyweight division. He clips it by quite a wide margin, averages about 74 punches per round, lands about 26 of them, and that's way more than the typical 45 punches thrown per round by an average heavyweight. Kovnatsky applying the pressure, looking to go down to the body. I like the variation of where is placing his punches. He's going to the body of Elenius, and he crowds him now. They're close distance. Dave Fields watching the action. Kolnowski's all about volume. It's all volume with Kolnowski. He loves digging into the body. Like you said right earlier in the last fight, heavyweights don't really like to go to the body. Kolnowski's not one of them. No, he's not. And he throws a left hook that connected right to the whiskers of Hellenius. And Kolnowski closing the distance. Hellenius trying to do something. Now he ties up the power starting to get to Hellenius along with the pressure of Kolnowski. I'll say this, Kovnatsky's not going to win a bodybuilder competition, but he does look in better shape. He's getting in better shape, at, at least aesthetically, compared to what we've seen in the past. 
Yeah, you said it. aesthetically, he, he looks in better shape, but he's always been in a good shape. It's similar to like Andy Ruiz, where they just don't look like the typical prototypical heavyweight contender. But when you see them, they throw with volume, they throw with power, and they can go all 12 all night. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They have big gas tanks. And you're seeing the nose of Hellenius starting to rent in from those right hands. But Hellenius answers back with the right to the body, and that ends the first. And his lead one. trainer, Keith Trimble. Go. Good work. Good work. You see, Konaski already has like a little bit of a small cut underneath the right eye. And on the bridge, the nose outside of his nose. Does Kovnatsky, that probably won't impede him whatsoever. Second round, this one's scheduled for 12. Ray Flores, Miguel Flores is here. Ringside at Barclays Center. A large Polish fan base that have come out to support their adopted son and Adam Kovnatsky. Kovnatsky moved here with his parents when he was seven years of age. He wants to follow in the tradition of the fan base and the rich tradition for Polish boxers. Konatsky said he looked up to Andrew Golan and Tomas Ogmak, just to name a few. There's a right to the body by Konatsky. Konatsky is a talented heavyweight already, but if you want to nitpick at, at, at his style, he does leave himself susceptible to taking a lot of shots. We saw that against Chris Ariola, where Ariola, he certainly he was able to deliver a lot to Ariola, but Ariola returned the favor. I mean, he was able to connect at a high rate as well. And I think that's one of the things that Kronoski has got to get better at is his defensive game, especially in the heavyweight division. Well, in the lead up to this fight, Miguel, as Kronoski applies the pressure as Hellenius trying to give different looks to Kronoski. But Kronoski said, look, I'm a father now. I'm a husband. And a good right hand to the head by Hellenius. And I think Kolnatsky got a little bit rocked there. Oh, well, there's a big right hand by Kolnatsky. They're swinging away. Kolnatsky's leaving himself open, and this is exactly what I was just talking about. He leaves himself open at times, and against a guy like Hellenius who has the power to knock you out, you have to be extremely cautious. There's a right hand by Kolnatsky. Hellenius tagged Kolnatsky. The action is intensifying here in the second round, Miguel. There's a right to the body by Hellenius. Hellenius also focusing on the body of Kovnatsky. Kovnatsky has got to be careful. He's landed a lot of shots already on Hellenius, but Hellenius has delivered some body blows, landed, connected on the overhand right that seemed to stumble Kovnatsky a bit. We know Kovnatsky has a very good chin, but again, that chin sometimes wavers. No question about it, especially in the heavyweight division. Hellenius is having a solid round here in the second. Kovnatsky sticks the jab right to the body of Hellenius. There's a right hand that connects upstairs for the Polish sensation, but a chopping right hand for Hellenius as he responds. Look at Konatsky go. He is throwing everything to the kitchen sink, but back comes Hellenius. He may have rocked Hellenius, but back comes Hellenius. What a battle here in Brooklyn. Unbelievable action, Ray. This is a Konatsky fight right now. That's the game plan. That's what he wants to do against a guy like Hellenius. Push him up. 15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Adam Kovnatsky knows what's on the line for him. He's got to continue to stay out of danger. But Konatsky is one of those guys, hey, I'll eat five or six, but I'll give you four or five right back. Andrew Funflaro, former light heavyweight standout, he's in attendance. He's of Polish descent. What energy and electricity here in Brooklyn. The first two rounds have been so high paced. I wonder if Hellenius is used to this type of pace and can he handle it and sustain it 
for the re the next 10 rounds. Well, there was a consensus that people thought that Elenius wouldn't be able to last and go the distance, but we will certainly find out if that is to be the case. He already looks a little gassed, and it's, like I said, it's only been two rounds. That just shows you the type of conditioning the, that Konatsky has. Exactly, and he can do this for all 12 rounds. We saw he did it against Chris Arioli. He wasn't able to put him away, but was able to do it at a high rate and high volume. And a right hand sprays Helenius. And a right to the body by Konatsky. Hammered away is the Polish heavyweight. Konatsky is on the mindset, let me chop this guy down, and then I'll bring him to size because Alanius has the height advantage over Kovnatsky. And more chance this place is shaking here at Park Place Center as we're just over the halfway mark of the third round. And right here, this is all Kovnatsky does. Push his opponent up against the ropes, make it a dirty fight, get into the body, and just go to work. He's just so good at it, and it's such an unrelenting style. It's ugly. Well, he suffocates you with this pressure is what he does. It's almost like he cuts off any ability for you to breathe because he's throwing seven or eight punches at your head and all over your body. Yep. There's a jab to the head, and he comes right away with the body and then answers back with a chopping right hand upstairs. Kovnatsky is all action all the time. You, you never get a break, and you can see on Helenius, this is starting to become overwhelming. Big right hand by Kovnatsky as he's pepping away upon Helenius, and this crowd erupts, but back comes Helenius. He tattooed Kovnatsky with the right hand. But Helenius looks right over at his corner like, this guy's not stopping. I can't believe this. That's one thing, Helenius has hit him with a couple of really solid shots, and Kovnatsky continues to just walk through him. And that can be just so demoralizing if you're a fighter, when you throw your best, and they walk through it and continue to come forward. And not only just continue to walk forward, but throw away seven or eight punches at a time. Round three in the books. We're here in New York City. Danny Garcia fought here a couple months ago, defeated Ivan Redcatch. Sure, we'll see Danny back in action, one of the top 147 pounders in the world, top 10. And Komnatsky right back to action with Robert Hellenius. And Komnatsky continues to pour on the pressure. And that's what got Hellenius in trouble against Gerald Washington. There's a big right hand by Komnatsky. Komnatsky went down, but no, it was a slip. Rolled by Dave Fields. I would love to see that exchange again after this round. I wanted to know if that truly was a slip. There's a right hand. Goodness, right? That's what I was wondering if that was truly a slip. Okay. I didn't think so. Kovnatsky's in serious trouble. Helene is potted away on Kovnatsky. Kovnatsky is hurt. This could be a huge upset for Helene. Kovnatsky's not all there. He's got to be careful. Kovnatsky's in deep fight. trouble. There, he's getting pounded. Kovnatsky, this one is over. And a monumental upset. of Konatsky's game. He leaves himself open to the big shots. There's only so much punishment your chin can take before it fails you. Just an unbelievable performance. Here's the exchange right here where they saw the slip. And right there, I, it was not a slip. That was a clean right hand that put down Konatsky. And you can see him, he's stumbling in that exchange and then I believe this was followed up because I don't think Konoski was there after that exchange and here Boom. Hellenius just put him down with the one two. Yeah the left hook is what sent him to the canvas but the right is what started it all and man oh man absolutely and look at Robert Hellenius he saw his opening and surgical like he went out and closed the show in tremendous fashion.
So really, Ray, he was knocked down twice in that round. And, and then here's the finish of the fight, and Kovnatsky just stumbling around. He didn't even have all his faculties together, and then Dayfields had seen enough, and Kovnatsky shocked. Nowhere near. And he, again, Helene, we were talking about Kovnatsky. If he has you hurt, he smells blood in the water, he can put you away. Well, we didn't give enough credit to Helenius if he was able to get Kovnatsky hurt. He certainly showed that he could put you away. Robert Helenius, 36 years of age. The second time he's fought here in the United States, but boy. The most satisfying Ladies victory here is We have the time of one minute, eight seconds in round number four. A referee in charge stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Helenia. Robert Helenius. Gets the victory tonight. Fight. 15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Let's take a look at how this plays out from a numerical standpoint. You see the height and the reach advantage just in the favor of Fury, but the significant weight advantage in favor of the Gypsy King. It's Wilder, it's Fury. Let's take a look at our the rules for this heavyweight championship matchup, no three knockout rule, no standing eight count. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight and fight the official after four rounds. Let's get this party started. It's Wilder, it's Fury, it's the heavyweight championship of the world. It's Los Angeles. It's madness. It's a prize fight. And now we get set to set it to our ring announcer. Here's Jimmy Bennett Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to Staples Center here in the City of Angels as Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Bomb Squad Enterprises, Queensberry Promotions, TGB Promotions, Debella Entertainment, and Showtime. We are sponsored by Corona Extra, who invites you to find your beach, and Casa Noble Tequila, the noble pursuit, and we are also seen live across the UK on BT Sport Box Office. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president, Mauricio Suleiman, the supervisor is Tsuyoshi Yasukochi. Along with the California State Athletic Commission, the chairman is John Carvelli, executive officer, Andy Foster. Introducing our three judges, scoring for ringside. From Preston, Lancaster, England, Phil Edwards. From Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, Alejandro Rochin. And from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, Robert Tapper. Introducing our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Jack Reese. All right, fans. Here we go with the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing in a showdown of heavyweight giants for the WBC and lineal heavyweight championship of the world. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Staples Center in Los Angeles, it's showtime! Introducing to you first, the WBC champion fighting out of the blue corner on my left, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Standing at six feet seven inches, he weighed in at already 212 and one half pounds. As a 2008 US Olympic bronze medalist, he is undefeated in his 
campaign as a professional with a record of 40 wins, no losses, 39 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the eighth defense of his title, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting, reigning and defending, undefeated, WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder! And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing dark green trunks with gold trim, fighting out of it, representing Manchester, Standing at six feet nine inches, he weighed in at 256 and one half pounds. He also is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 27 wins, no losses, 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Right, the WBC number three contender. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBA, WBO, and IBF unified heavyweight champion of the world and the current lineal heavyweight champion. Once again, our referee in charge is Jack Reese. He is now ready to give instructions. Step back a little bit for me, D. Right there, brother. Right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Now peace. Now peace. I gave both of you instructions in the dress room. Right now, this is good. This is, be quiet while I'm speaking. This is a little bit high. I'm going to let him work in here. Bang. This is a little high. I'm going to let him work in here. And if this comes up, the same thing. I gave you both instructions. I want to remind you, listen and obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Fight hard, fight clean. Good luck. My heavyweight championship of the world is on the line. Deontay Wilder putting his crown up for grabs against Tyson Fury. In combat sports, it's sports. There is nothing better than a prize fight in combat sports. Thank <laughs> you. 
is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want.
staying on the outside, getting in when you feel it's advantageous. If you're Wilder, pump the jab and also not only throw the right hand, but throw a check left hook. But the left hook seemed to hurt Fury at the end, and there's a big right hand that found its destination for Tyson Fury. And also we'll see as this fight moves along if the significant weight drop by Fury for over a year and a half, if that will impede him from being as mobile. Fury seems to be very comfortable in there, as does Wilder. Wilder does things that technically are not correct, but he does it in such an orthodox movement. He can connect at any one moment. on targeting the body. Double jab by Fury. There's an uppercut by Wilder. Wilder is being more active and aggressive here in this third round compared to that of Fury. High drama here in Los Angeles. Tyson Fury, a left hook followed by a right hand down the center. Wilder took it well. And there's Ben Davison, just turned 26 years of age a few days ago. Talk about a corner. Ben Davison, Freddie Roach, Ricky Hatton. You think Hatton and Freddie Roach have been in big fights before? Just keep taking that distance from him, okay? Listen, I know there's opportunities now, but don't take them right now. Yeah, don't take them right now. They will present themselves more and more. Shield, more and more, okay? Do not get greedy. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Round four. The heavyweight championship of the world is on the line here in Los Angeles.
car for him for many, many years. So we're under a minute left here in the fourth. They're wild, they're wild. They're trying to time Tyson Fury, but also was very respectful of the counter-punching acumen and ability of Fury. Fury goes really quick from southpaw back to conventional, and he got clipped with the left hook. For this to be the comeback here for Tyson Fury, talking about, talk about wanting the baddest man, or one of the baddest men on the planet, in Wilder. He's still very confident in his Fury. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Bland. has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Let's take a look at some of the action. And there is the jab. There is what led to the bloody nose from Tyson Fury. And Fury also has a little bit of a cut. It's not bleeding, but it is a bruise nonetheless on his, the right side of his forehead. So that jab is becoming a sledgehammer for Deontay Wilder. Round five, this one's scheduled for 12. The WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World is on the line. Between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, both undefeated, both looking to try to stake their claim for heavyweight supremacy.
obvious. I know you can see it. Just keep doing as you are. You're boxing beautifully. Six. Round six, this one's scheduled for 12. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Wilder, a 98% knockout percentage, 40-0, 39 knockouts, coming off a win over Luis Ortiz in March. Tyson Fury picked up a win in August out in the UK. Ilk. And yes, he did defeat Klitschko, but Klitschko didn't throw any punches. He was there being a live punching back. So said Deontay Wilder during the press conference in, in the lead up. Fury trying to assert himself.
jab right to the abdomen of Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, looking to retain his crown. A left hook that caught Fury upstairs. Seventh round. There's a big right hand that connected. Wilder throws a right hand. Oh, there's a big right hand by Fury. His best punch of the fight. But Wilder comes back and answers himself. Now Wilder is swinging wildly. This is big luck at second place.
under a minute to go here in the eighth. Neither fighter has taken over and been dominant. It is a very close fight, however you may have it. Here's 
some of that. Boom. Right on the temple. And Fury went to the canvas. It's the old ad adage, ask and you shall receive. Be careful what you wish for. Fury wanted some of the power, and he got it. And it put him on the canvas. Round 10. This one is scheduled for 12. Oh, is this a lot of fun. What a matchup between two of the world's best heavyweights here in L.A. We'll see if Wilder goes back on the offensive. He seemed to be tired, but now it is Fury who's the aggressor. Exhaustion. And for Fury, he seems to be showing no ill effects from that knockdown. A one-two. And now Wilder needs to be careful. He is, he may have expended a lot of energy to try to close the show.
championships after he defeated Vladimir Klitschko three years ago in Germany. Who will be more active and aggressive? successful title defenses. Wilder tonight is trying to make it number eight. But he has to deal with the most unorthodox. And now here comes Wilder. But there he answers back. He tied him up through a right hand. And now he reset as Jack re-separates them. Talk about tense moments here in Los Angeles. Under a minute remaining in round 11. Wilder still looking to pick his spots. Who is going? I still think this round is close. Now Wilder steps in.
and push the pace. Final 15 seconds. What a memorable fight. Deontay Wilder. And Tyson Fury have gone the distance. Championship of the world and to give a wonderful account is it speaks volumes. That second one, how you got up, mate, come back how you did. And even in a loss, Tyson Fury remains a massive attraction. Tyson Fury 
here in Anthony Joshua if that fight were to ever transpire in the UK it would be I don't think there's a soccer stadium big enough to hold the amount of attendance that would be there for it. Jimmy Lennon Jr. I believe has the decision but for Deontay Wilder if he is successful tonight the questions about if Wilder can deal with the boxer I think have been answered. He has that kind guys, of this? knockout yeah, power. Right here, and now we'll set it up to ring announcer. Here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. What exciting fellas, they're great. They're great. They're great. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action here at Staples Center, we have a split decision, and here are the what? score totals. Judge at ringside, Alejandro Rochin scores the bout 115 to 111 in favor of Deontay Wilder. Judge at ringside, Robert Tapper sees the bout 114 to 110 in favor of Tyson Fury. And Judge at ringside, Phil Edwards scores the bout 113 to 113 oh, even a draw the decision is a split decision draw a split decision draw are you kidding me a draw October 15th the wait is finally over one of the most feared heavyweights in history is back Deontay the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want.
my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, touch gloves, touch gloves, good luck. No surprise the Brazil was reticent in touching gloves with Deontay Wilder, verbal warfare about to manifest here, the ticking time bomb about to explode, Deontay Wilder 40 and 0 with one draw, 39 knockouts, dominant Brazil 20 with 18 back in the knockouts. Referee is Harvey Dark. This is his 214th professional fight. The bell and round one. Brazil hoping to pronounce a Bocinga moment as he puts his own Big Bang Theory to the test. Wilder, who procured the heavyweight title against Berman Stavern. Stavern being the first person to go the distance with Wilder. Wilder obliterated him in the rematch. Wilder told us that he is going to treat Brazil exactly the same way as he lands the one-two combination. The key thing about this fight is Dominic Brazil is a slow starter. Everybody knows it, and, uh, and it's, they, the question is, can Wilder take advantage of that? We've talked about Brazil having 18 knockouts total. Wilder has 19 first-round KOs. Oh, going to the body with that left hand. And rarely does Wilder go down there. And that's something his trainer, former welterweight champion, Mark Breland, told me he wants him to go to the body and then double punch Polly. Go to the body with the right and then the right uppercut on the inside. Well, both guys have mentioned they need to go to the body against the other, so it'll be interesting to see how they implement that game plan. Uh, Brazil uh, is, is a guy who, who takes a good headshot. And he's been a stubborn guy, and we saw it in the Joshua fight. Well, you know, he's shaking his head. He's getting hit with wild right.
the face of the chin in the end of the fight. And early on here, Brazil was hit with a couple of punches in which he shook his head to indicate it wasn't hurting him. And maybe they didn't before the one that landed did. But whatever the case, Deontay Wilder was able to get the right hand in on a regular basis. That was a, a very uh, subtle use left wow. to by Wilder, but he did land it there. And he's using the jab to set things up to try and get the right hand. And again, I will believe that Wilder's jab goes uh, goes in the kind of fight he's going to fight and how successful he's going to be. And, and he's dictating with the jab from the beginning of this fight. And uh, we saw what, it, what the results have brought him. And, you know, showing it from this angle is fast. Because it, it shows you the distance between these two fighters and shows you how Brazil was trying to get inside and walk him down. But what's the difference? But the difference is
15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. And let's take a look at this, our tale of the tape for our co-main event between Emmanuel Rodriguez, the former world champion here in the bantamweight division. He's coming off of two straight losses, one to Naoya Inouye by second round knockout and a highly contested split decision loss at the hands of the undefeated Ray Mart Gabalio. As we observe our tale of the tape for this, our co-main event for the interim WBA bantamweight championship you see relatively similar in terms of age and height will also reach as well. But what stands out is the fact that Gary and Tony Russell weighed in at 116 and three quarters, significantly lower than that Ivan Men Rodriguez from Puerto Rico. Rodriguez, former world champion, as I pointed out, he went ahead and he captured that world title with the win over Paul Butler. Back on May 5th, 2018, he defended against Jason Maloney by split decision and then lost it to Naoya Inoue back on May 18th, 2019. But Rodriguez, he feels he got shafted in his last fight against Remar Caballo. But there is Gary Antonio Russell, who actually on December 9, his younger brother Gary Derek Russell passed away 10 days later Gary Antonio went ahead with this fight against Juan Carlos Payano. He said that while he was sparring for the fight, he was weeping, but he went out there and had a mightily, a mesmerizing performance against Juan Carlos Payano by seventh round technical decision. And he won 59-55 on the scorecards. And let's take a look at our rules for this. Our Co-main event, no three knockdown roll. The referee or the doctor can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bound any round, and a fight is official after four rounds have been completed. So that is how things shake themselves out. This is a 12-round matchup for the interim WBA Bantamweight Championship. Gary Antonio Russell and Emmanuel Rodriguez. Here's Jimmy. Well, fans from Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, Premier Boxing Champions presents our next attraction, brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime in association with Fresh Production Promotions. Introducing our judges, all from the state of California, Rudy Barragan, Pat Russell, and Zachary Young. And we introduce our referee in charge of the action, Sharon Sands. All right, fans, here we go with a co-main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled in a bantamweight special attraction. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing multicolored cheetah trunks trimmed with black and gold, hailing from Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at the bantamweight limit of 118 pounds. His record stands at 19 wins, two losses, with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the current WBA number seven ranked contender and the former IBF bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Emmanuel Manny Rodriguez. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gray trunks with gold and white trim, hailing from Capitol Heights, Maryland. He weighed in at a trim and ready 116 and three quarter pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with a record of 18 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBA number two ranked bantam weight in the world, introducing the undefeated Gary Antonio Russell. Once again, our referee in charge now to give instructions, Sharon Sands. This is bell line. Keep them up. You're fighting for the WBA Bantamweight title eliminator today, gentlemen. I expect a clean fight. 
Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Toka. Touch gloves. There Let's we go. go. Let's go. Sharon Sands, a referee in charge. Gary Antonio Russell, a part of the Fighting Russell family. 18-0 with 12 knockouts. Taking on Emmanuel Rodriguez from Puerto Rico. Russell, 28 years of age. And we are underway. See that Russell is a southpaw. He has a knockout percentage of over 66%. There's a straight left, down goes Rodriguez. Time! But was it caused because of a headbutt? Oh, that's bad. Oh, dear. This one is over. No. Oh, my goodness. I think that Rodriguez is leaking blood. How unfortunate. It was a bad headbutt. Oh my goodness, that is a bad, bad cut. Initially, the timekeeper thought it was a knockdown. Sharon Sand said no, it was caused from a clash of heads. That is a deep, deep cut. And you feel bad for both men. Literally within the first 15 to 20 seconds. Accidental clash of heads. Rather unfortunate. And, oh, that's bad. It's right on the bridge of the nose. Well, we heard from the doctor, he said he broke his nose. The doctor, the ringside physician told Sharon Sands he broke his nose. Take a look at it again. Bang, oh, my goodness, immediately, Rodriguez goes to the canvas. It's a bad, oh my, yeah, that's not good. Taking a look at it again. You see, Russell came in and tried to throw that straight left. It was the right, and then, Boom, oh, vicious. And I am literally sitting next to the timekeeper, so when she started counting the knockdown, I thought it was, and we waited for the referee to call it with the clash of heads. And Russell knew it. He even felt it on his head. But can you imagine, look at writhing in pain was Emmanuel Rodriguez, bang. Oh, that's unfortunate for both guys. They both trained so hard, waiting for their moment. And unfortunately, it happened. I mean, that's what happens at times when you have a conventional fighter against a southpaw. Russell is a southpaw, and you have these unfortunate clash of heads. Looking at it again, Russell was trying to get off with that straight left, and then boom, the clash of heads happened. I mean, styles make fights, and also it just, it really is disappointing for both guys. And they are trying to fix the nose of Emmanuel Rodriguez and attend to it, but it was clear that he could not continue. He was in excruciating pain for a good minute to minute and a half time period. Unbelievable, and you feel bad for Gary Antonio Russell, who is being consoled by his brother, the reigning WBC featherweight champion of the world, Gary Russell Jr. So the way that it will stand, I believe it's going to be a no decision is how it will be deemed, according to ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. There's a deep gash right on the bridge of the nose of Emmanuel Rodriguez as they continue to work on it.
Dice que cuando cayó, la, le hizo así. And here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 16 seconds in round number one. This bout ends in an accidental headbutt. Therefore, this bout is ruled a no decision. No decision. A no decision is how it was ruled. And I know people are upset. They're not happy about it. But I mean, it, it happens. This is boxing, and you had a southpaw against a conventional fighter, and they had that unfortunate clash of heads. My goodness. This is extremely unfortunate and, and disappointing. But I'm sure we'll see it again. Here's Jim Gray. It's a new headbutt. You know, it happens. I was looking to establish my jab, uh, the jab to the body, opened up, up a little bit. I was going to set up a hook. He came in, heads collide, and it happens. Your momentum just carried you into him. Can you explain the disappointment of having trained so hard and then have this happen after just 16 seconds? Man, it's very disappointing. Uh, I was actually in camp for about four months because my fight got pushed back. Uh, I prepared great for this fight, and I was definitely looking to broadcast my talent and everything else that's in my arsenal, you know, and put the world on notice of Gary Antonio Russell. Unfortunate that had, but people didn't get to see me perform. Gary, let's take a look at it. Uh, this will be the first time that you've seen it uh, as we take a look at it here on the monitor just 16 seconds in. Here you see this right here. Tell us what you see. Mm, headbutt. All right, my momentum of me throwing my hook, he leaned back and came in the court. So what would you like to do now? Obviously, you've trained very hard, probably could come back pretty quickly if you can get a fight. What, what direction would you like to go? Honestly, of course, I would like to come right back. I know Emmanuel Rodriguez prepared hard for this fight. I mean, if we could do it, I honestly would want to go right back with him. All right, let's go check with him. You're okay? No, I'm not okay. I'm heated. I'm mad. But it happens. Mm. All right, Morrow. Let's go back to you, and we'll walk over to Emmanuel. So, yeah, I, I feel bad for Gary Antonio Russell. He goes, yeah, I'm mad. I'm heated. I mean, but it, that's what happens in... It happens in boxing. It's not ideal, but those things do happen. And now Jim Gray standing by with the Puerto Rican former world champion, em Emmanuel Rodriguez. All right, and right now the two are exchanging, talking to each other, exchange a hug to a round of applause here at Dignity Health. Felix De Jesus will translate for us. Emmanuel, first of all, are you okay? Está bien, Emmanuel, te sientes bien? Sí, me siento bien. Un poco frustrado, eh, porque después de tanto trabajo que que estuve, sabe, y que pase esta cosa, pero es un accidente y pues, sabe, aquí ninguno tiene culpa, pues. Yeah, I feel good. A little frustrated after all this work to come and, uh, you know, the fight being so quick and nothing happening. Can you describe the moment that you got? the end of the butt there and what, what that felt like, if possible? Si no puedes decir o describir qué te pasó cuando exactamente te dan el golpe. ¿Qué sentiste? No, no fue un golpe, fue un cabezazo. Un cabezazo. Este, ay, como si... Ay, me tuve que desplomar, el dolor era demasiado de grande y... Cuando miré así, vi mucha sangre, de hecho, se echó la pelea. Pues quizás si no hubiese sangre, pues la pelea hubiese seguido, aunque hubiese sido cabezazo. Pero vi mucha, vi mucha sangre, todavía que yeah. para. No, so it was a headbutt to make a clarification. And as soon as I got it hurt so much, maybe if there was no blood, we could have continued. But as I saw the blood, then I knew it was over. And let's show him for the first time. Emmanuel, take a look at the monitor here, and you'll see what happened just 16 seconds into the fight and describe what you're seeing. ¿Qué no puede decir? ¿Qué no puede decir sobre eso? <laughs> no, no tengo que, no sé, no. Como es la primera vez que lo veo, pero fue un tremendo cabezazo. Yeah, no, all I can say is that it was a tremendous headbutt. That's all I can say. How soon do you think you'll be able to fight again? And if so, would you take the fight uh, 
once again with Gary. ¿Qué pronto tú crees que puede volver al cuadrilátero y pelear otra vez y pelear contra Gary Antonio Andrés Rosa? No, lo que, lo que tal, lo que me recupero, ¿sabes? De esto, volvemos para encima de nuevo. ¿Sabes? Esto no... A ver, la condición no la vamos a dejar perder. Yeah, we can't lose the condition that I'm in. I really prepared for this fight. As soon as I'm ready to fight and the uh, injury is fixed, then I'll be back out there and I would like to fight Russell again. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be tested. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Anthony Durrell, Kyron Davis. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Big discrepancy there is in the age. Davis is 26 years old in his prime. Durrell, the taller man, six foot two to the five foot ten. Davis. Davis, very sturdy, strong fighter. Big gap in experience. Anthony Durrell, two-time titleist at 168 pounds and looking to get back toward the top tonight. So Kyron Davis, the biggest opportunity of his career. Ladies and gentlemen from the Shrine Auditorium Expo Hall here in Los Angeles, Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by TGB Promotions and sponsored by GEICO. Whether you rent or own, GEICO makes it easy to bundle home and car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, the President Mauricio Suleiman, our judges scoring from ringside, Dr. Lou Moret, Patrick Russell, and Zachary Young. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for a WBC super middleweight world title eliminator. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Los Angeles, it's time for the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks with black trim, fighting out of and representing his home of Wilmington, Delaware. He weighed in at 167 and one half pounds. His record stands at 15 wins, two losses, with six wins coming by way of knockout. Introducing Chiron. Shut it down, Davis. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, this world title eliminator, wearing purple trunks with gold trim. He hails from Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at 167 and one half pounds with a record of 33 wins, two losses, and one draw. He has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the current world rank contender and the two-time super middleweight champion of the world, introducing Anthony, the dog Durrell. And our referee in charge now to give instructions, Ray Corona. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece. This is good right here, this is good. If you want to touch gloves, do it now. God bless. Tonight's odds are provided by Fox Bet. If you place $100 on Anthony Durrell, he is the favorite. You would win uh, just over $30. A payout of $130.03. If you placed $100 on Davis, the underdog, you would win $275 on top of your initial investment. Kyron Davis, biggest moment of his professional life. He's only 26 years old. First fight since January of 2020. Again, he's won two in a row, but gets a big shot here Ready? against Anthony Durrell. Ready? as Durrell comes back from his first knockout loss, and we are underway round number one. And you wonder if Lennox Lewis, Kyron Davis, will try to test Durrell early on, or do you think he'll just try to assess what he has in front of him? I think he's assessing right now, because I'm used, used to him actually coming out and, and stepping right to you, but this time he's not. He's, uh, he's giving us a different look, you know, and he's moving the head. He's, he's being really light on his feet real early in the round. This is good for him. Yeah, very active here. I just wondered, Joe, because he is a very strong guy and he throws strong combinations. I wondered how we would approach the start of the fight. Well, when I talked to uh, 
uh, Stephen Edwards yesterday he told me that we got something, you know, a little surprise, you know, for uh, a a Anthony. And uh, this may be it, that he's boxing a little bit. He's just not, they're not coming out with reckless abandon and going right to the inside and trying to slug it out. So maybe he thinks he's going to use his youth and his speed and see if he can beat uh, Durrell, Good upper Durrell with a punch. Durrell. Wow, beautiful shot there by Durrell, who just timed it. And then a good body shot by Durrell as well. You know, Durrell, we talked about this before the fight, uh, Joe, we were just talking on our own. He, he was able to stand his ground against Benavides early. He wasn't late, but early on, uh, Durrell can be sturdy. I wonder how sturdy he'll be here. Good combination there by Davis. Exactly right. In fact, when we talked to him, we, you even said, you know, you, you had some of your good moments when you were actually pressing a little bit, and he, he didn't disagree with that, but his best, you know, his best look is when he's boxing and using the ring, and I'm talking about Durrell. Yeah, Durrell is a skilled boxer. Yeah. Again, he is uh, dedicated to his craft. He says he likes to spar. Now, that's his main. He said, you know, I don't want to get up and like run and run. And I'm going to lift and do all this. He goes, I want to box. So he spars four or five times a week, stop, and getting stop, in the stop. sparring and Take getting that back. good work in the gym to work on his craft. And you can see how, it's, you know, how calm Durrell is right now. You know, he doesn't, he's, not, he's not doing too much. The guy's doing, Davis is actually doing a lot more than him. And, uh, you know, you got to be concerned about down the line, you know, if he's got enough energy to go all these rounds. Right. I, I wonder, too, and I wonder, too, uh, Joe, as a right hand goes flying over the top. I wonder, too, he got caught with that one shot, and suddenly he's thinking, wait a second. I I'm, like, moving. I'm moving my head. Brian Kenny says, I don't move my head. I, I am. And I still yeah. got clipped with that well, uppercut. It's all about timing. And, look, Darrell's been around so long, he can almost anticipate what you're going to do, what your next move is going to be. So mm. you may have your head here and then there, but he's going to meet you on the second move. You know, Darrell is a real smart guy. He's only been beaten twice in his whole career and only by really two good guys. So... You're, you're I, I think it's, uh, yeah, he, he's pretty hard to outsmart is what I'm saying. Yeah, and Davis, so it's, is, it's da Davis is moving around, and when he decides to throw a punch, he's going to react and come in, and bec because Durrell's so experienced, he's going to recognize that quickly. There was that one good hard shot by Durrell in round number one, otherwise a fairly uneventful, but Kyron Davis against the grain moving and boxing. Tonight's corner cam is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. We go to the corner of Anthony Durrell. You got him right there all flinching. Then you just got to let your shit go to work. Once you start touching his hands, he got to start moving him. He's moving him. That's why I see it. All you got to do is start and keep shooting it over here. Make him go that way. Javon Sugarhill Stewart there and then representing Kronk Jim as we take a closer look at round one. Yeah, Darrell came in with a great uppercut right there. He put a left to the body, then it came up with the uppercut and came back with a left hook. Yeah, he fainted. He fainted on him and he went downstairs and he got uh, um, uh, Davis to drop that left hand and then he just threw a little short right hand on him and, and clipped him good. Underway with round number two, Joe. And uh, at the start, I said this guy doesn't move his head. You said, oh, he moves his head here and there. He comes out slipping like as soon as the bell rings. <laughs> He's like, right. I'm like, come on, you're not, you haven't even gotten near the guy. You're slipping already. Right. Come on. Well, and, and you notice that he's got a lot of bounce to him. When I talked to Stephen uh, Edwards yesterday, he told me, he said, we're going to try to punch off the bounce. And now, whether that's going to work in the long run, I don't know. But he certainly got the bounce going for him, right? That that looked more like Kyron Davis that you've seen in previous fights there as he stood his ground and then fired off a hook off that right hand. He does throw very nice hard combinations and usually does stand his ground and tries to get into the pocket. Yeah, it, you mentioned something that's really true about Kyron Davis is that he's really a good counter puncher. I think he likes to be in close to you when he counter punches. If you touch him with the right hand, he's going to use that short hook, maybe double up on it, and then another right hand behind it. But he's a real short puncher. I think he kind of needs to be closer to Durrell to be effective. I agree with you. I agree with you. He does need to be closer because from the outside, you're not going to win, win the fight against Durrell like that. you got to, you, you know, he's... He's, he's two-time champion, so you got to go after him. That's his game, is being on the, keeping you on the end of his punches, Darrell. Davis with yeah. a nice short hook there as well. Again, you can see the, the musculature on him. Strong guy, has nice tight punches. But again, Darrell is vastly experienced. You can see things. There's a good right hand by Darrell. Flicking out a jab after the combination. See, what, what Darrell does as well, he faints. And, and gets Davis to move and do something, which is, you know, this is what old guys do. This is what veterans do. You know, it is the, uh, it's kind of the, 
the conundrum of, of, of boxing, Lennox, right? Is yeah. that you you do get smarter as you get older, but you get slower, yeah. right? So yeah. you're, you're better, you think, but you're not quite. You have to reach that nexus where both things are working at the same time. Absolutely. Jab blocked there. But see, the Darrell Davis. doesn't necessarily look slow to me right now either. I mean, mm -hmm. nor does he look old to me. He looks very sturdy, and I mean, that's a beautiful four punch combination he threw with the double hook at the end. I mean, that was nice stuff. So it, yeah, it's, and Joe Wright, it's a, yeah. it's a legitimate question. Again, after his first knockout loss, again, did not look good the last two rounds against Benavides. No. You could wonder, hey, what, how much starch is left for this guy? But right now, he does look pretty good. Yeah. Would, you would agree with that? Yes, I would. Absolutely. But, you know, Benavides is a monster. You now, they say Durrell's 6'2", yeah. but and, and Benavides 6'1 one and a half, but Benavides looked three inches taller than Durrell in that fight. I, I, I don't know yeah. if you noticed that. Benavides is a big, strong guy, and when he's on and when he's right and doing the right thing, boy, he's a dangerous character. Still a big player at 168. Yep. I mentioned him earlier. Lo only lost his belt on the scale, but did not lose it in the ring. Final seconds, round number two here in our main event. Back for round number three, Anthony Durrell, Kyron Davis, and Anthony Durrell uh, wearing the, the Kobe Bryant jersey and colors. And the murals all around Los Angeles in honor of uh, the late Laker, Hall of Famer. Anthony Durrell here in round number three. Again, as we mentioned earlier, Brian Kenny, Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Androl, and Marcos Villegas here as well. Marcos doing our unofficial scoring, but Durrell looking poised and calm. Davis going. Uh, kind of counterintuitive, yeah. boxing more than just being, as you can see, the build on the guy. You would figure he'd slug, but Joe Goosen, he has been boxing so far. Well, he has, but we, what you just saw happen in the corner, I think Lennox may have seen it. Did you see him both clash heads right there, Lennox, yes, in the I corner? Did. And that, and I know you were going to say something about it. And this is the dangerous part for Durrell. You know, he's had two severe cuts on both eyes in, in the eyelid. Good right hand left hook by by uh, Davis, but I got to tell you, they bumped heads, and this is the dangerous part for Durrell. He wants to keep his distance and not get boxed into a, a, a corner like that where he could you know, sustain a cut. Yeah, it's true. Who is Darrell, who is Darrell talking to there? No, I, someone was yelling and he yelled back at him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that was so. Is that yeah, Stephen Edwards in the corner? And he is, he's even yelled at, at Davis's success. And Darrell has the wherewithal to yell back at the other trainer. How about that? Yeah, I, I don't like when he does that. I like when he's really focused yeah. and mm, forget sorry. about the crowd, forget about everything outside. Focus on the guy in front of you because that's the guy that can cut you. That's the guy that can knock you out. And Lennox, I just want to mention, but you are more likely to hear the other trainer here with no crowd, right? Oh, yeah. So it seems louder. It's like being in the gym. Yeah, he can probably hear yeah. me, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you notice... Be careful, Joe. He can hear you. I know. <laughs> just whisper. <laughs> now, Darrell's left-handed right now, as a matter of fact. He just went oh, southpaw. Yeah. And, and a straight left. It looks like a pretty dangerous. Now it goes back to orthodox. Yeah, Kyron Davis needs to, to pick it up a little bit. You know, he's, he, he's got that... Uh, uh, possibility that he could be losing each round or letting them slip away so he's got to you know mount an attack and start doing some work tight combination there by Davis and take a look we're going to show you here on the left as he looks over at Steven Edwards and this is after uh, a good combination by Davis I believe and then yells over to the side again there's no crowd so it's almost like Major League players in baseball say this too, guys, that now you can hear the chirping yep. all around you. Hear the yep. players yelling stuff at you, and sometimes it leads to some bad feelings. Otherwise, there's a crowd, you don't hear it, you don't bother with it. Exactly. Darrell, and here you, see, here you see Darrell, he's getting more comfortable in the fight, that he's getting closer to uh, Davis, so he controls on some combinations. He's got his hands up, and he's looking, he can see everything. It's kind of a role reversal right now in terms of what they normally do style-wise, right? Yeah, I mean, he's got a great uh, trainer in his corner, Sugar Hill, yep. uh, from Kronk, and that's the trainer of uh, Tyson Fury, the world heavyweight champion. So, uh, you know, he's got a great guy in his corner. Stiff jab there by Kyron Davis, and Davis starting to... Uh put the pressure on back for our main event Anthony Durrell Kyron Davis I, I'm you know 
Lennox Lewis, with the exception of maybe Charmbe Mitchell or Macho Camacho, I don't look at the attire that much for a fighter, but I don't know if I've ever seen tighter shorts yeah. on, on a guy in a pro fight than Kyron Davis. What do you think of that? Uh, you know, you got to do, you got to, you got to work with what you got, <laughs> and and you don't want you don't want to go into a fight with uh, shorts uh, sticking up your butt or embarrassing you or anything like that. <laughs> so, they're just they're, it's snug on his thighs. I just usually a fighter, Joe. Now you you know you work with tons of fighters. Yeah. It's good hook by Davis. Yep. Don't you normally want it to be kind of loose yeah, and flowing, not you not do. tight? You no, do. This, you is, this is a new generation. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I'm sure it's they're... It's 1970s basketball, it was, it looks like, for Davis. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's flexible material of some sort. But, you know, that being said, uh, you know, Davis just landed a nice, quick hook off of uh, Darrell's right hand. Again, he loves that counter. You throw a right hand against Davis, he's going to counter you with the hook. And then the, we saw that little replay where he landed the uh, the three-punch combination, ending with that little left uppercut up the middle. So he's getting, you know, he's starting to, you know, get a few punches in on Durrell himself. Yeah, but See, the punches landed there. It's 22 to 12. But one thing Davis has, Lennox, excuse me, one th Davis has a good engine. So this rate that he's able to fight at, he's able to do that. Uh, it's just a matter of can he have more success in landing. Yeah. Oh, the, another clash of heads. And headbutt. They've got to be really careful in there, especially right. especially Darrell. Because he's, he's no always cut. suffering from headbutts hands, and cuts. So he can't afford to, to uh, get cut in this fight. Yeah, in, in his last two fights, and they were, by the way, he's off back-to-back -to -back tough matchups with David Benavides and Avni Yildirim, but take a look at the clash of heads here, and it's Davis leaping in, and then uh, right off the, wow. the jaw. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a rare clash. When you, when you leap in like that, that's what happens. Uh, Davis has to come in a little bit slower and come in behind the jab, not a leaping punch. And then when he's leaping, he's got to keep his hands up. So uh, And don't, don't think Durrell didn't put his head down on purpose when he saw the guy coming in like that, reckless like that. Sometimes that's your best defense, just to drop your head and let him run into the top of your head, no? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Goodbye. Body work there by Durrell after Davis doubles up on the jab. I'll just mention Benavides. The cut came from a punch from it Benavides. Did. It was a great hook against Avni Yildirim. It was a clash of heads. It was. So when it went to the cards, it did get stopped in the tenth. But Durrell won on the cards in that fight as he was ahead on points. But you're right. I mean, those were both bad cuts on both eyelids. Good uppercut there. And that's, a, and that's the worst spot you can get cut. I mean, look, no cut is good, but the ones on the eyebrows, at least they aren't part of the mechanics of the eye. When you get cut in the eyelid, either one of them, like Terrell has, it's where it, it becomes dangerous, and doctors are more inclined to stop a fight when you're cut in the eyelid because of the mechanics of the eye. Uh, can, it can be irreparable if uh, you try to, you know, if you, if you let them go too far. Davis going to the body nicely there. After Rell did just the same a few seconds back, as this fight starts to heat up, Davis staying in the pocket. Nice hook, counter by oh. Durrell, and a right hand. Good exchange there. They're both here in the final seconds of this round. Anthony Durrell again has been cut in his last two fights. We asked him about that, and again, it could be a factor here tonight. Here he is. Uh, it's tough. It's challenging, uh, but you got to keep going. You can't quit just because you got a little boo boo. You got to keep fighting. You got to. You gotta uh, dig down deep and, and, and bring that lion out of you, and, and keep going until somebody stops it or the fight ends. And you saw the cuts of two bad cuts can, there, boo boo. Can, you don't hear yeah, that very yeah. often. Can you imagine? Well, well, regardless, can you imagine he called that a little boo boo? <laughs> a boo boo. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big boo boo. Man, those are those were two nasty cuts. Better to think of it that way. Here, round number five. You see uh, Darrell with the. Uh, the advantage in punches landed, but round four was the first round that Darrell and Davis each landed double-digit punches. So Davis in the pocket a little more, staying close. And I would, I would think, fellas, that that's his best chance it to is. win this fight. Or do you disagree? No, I agree because his arms are not as long as Darrell, and we've seen enough fights to know that's where he's most comfortable in delivering his counter punches. And believe me, they were exchanging over in this corner here, right near us. And both of them landed. It was really fast, fast action, fast counter punching. It was nice stuff. Yeah, but Darrell is taking his time right now. He's moving a little closer to Davis, uh, realizing he's getting a little bit tired and he's not jumping around so much. So he wants to, wants him to slow down so he can throw his combinations. 
Heidi Andrel is with us. Heidi, was the Durrell camp concerned about cuts? What were they doing about it? You know, I just want to go back to what Lennox was saying. I was just talking to Stephen Edwards, and he said, you know, this is exactly what they want him to do. They want him to walk him down late and maintain his composure. As for the cuts, yeah, you know, I spoke to the cut men. I spoke to doctors around boxing. There are some preventative things, you know, that boxers can do. Cocoa butter during camp, which Anthony Durrell did. But he said that he took some ginger shots for his last two fights, which are blood thinners, natural blood thinners. He didn't know that, so he didn't take the, he didn't do the ginger shots for this one. I also spoke to his trainer, Sugar who, Hill, who told me, of course, the biggest preventative measure for cuts is simply the sweet science of boxing, you know, to hit and not get hit. Brian. Yeah, don't get drilled by that hook. That's what happened with David Benavides, clash of heads in the previous fight. Here, you see Davis able to land some shots to the body as he stays in close. Good combination there by Durrell. Yeah, Durrell throws some nice short punches in, and he puts his hands up, and he gets uh, Davis into this, uh, putting his head right there, so he collects the punches. But he throws some good combinations in there short. Again, a long pandemic layoff for Durrell. Not that he wanted all that time off, but he hasn't fought since September of 2019. Beautiful right hand and a hook after that by Durrell. He hasn't fought since the Spence Porter undercut. And another uppercut again. Yeah, that right and uppercut, uh, he's using it to great effect. He, he, Durrell's been using it to the body. Whipped off a combination off that uppercut and then threw one up the middle and caught Davis on the chin and buckled him. Another yeah. strafing hook to the body by Durrell. Yeah, Durrell's very happy to stay in close like this. He, this is this is what he does in the gym. This is play for him. And here we go, a little fight in the phone booth. This will be fun. Davis stays in. Again, he's a strong guy, but Durrell uh, supremely skilled and very good on the inside, as Lennox mentioned. Good combination there by Davis. Hook to the body, hook to the head. Things heating up here. It's the end of round five. Good hook by Davis. The main event here on Fox, and fellas, things are starting to heat up. Yep. And sharp combinations from Anthony Durrell there in that last round. See there on the left part of your screen as we go live on the right part. But And here is at the end of the round where Davis got his shots in. There's that patent and little short left hook of his. They both exchanged some really good punches. I think Durrell probably landed the, 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 the bigger volume of punches. But uh, this is starting to heat up. And get a little bit closer. Brian Kenny here with Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Angel, and Marcos Viegas. And we'll get to the scoring in a few moments here. Uh, Marcos is ready right now. Marcos, how do you have it scored so far? Brian, so far I have it 48 to 47 with the swing round in round number two. Now, this is an interesting fight. You know, if, if you look at it overall and you ask yourself who's done the most damage or who's landing the most damaging punches, you would think Durrell. But Davis is throwing a lot of touch point punches. So it's going to be inter interesting to see how the judges have it at this point officially. All right. So you see the uh, the shaded. Uh, that Marcos, thank you very much. See the yellow uh, in the round two where Marcos thinks it's close enough, could go either way. In that last round, Kyron actually outlanded Anthony Durrell for the first time in the fight. Only 21 to 19, and all, you know, punches are not created yeah. equal. But uh, just uh, as an indication of the work rate. But yeah. I, I think you're exactly right, and the stats will prove that. But I, I, to tell you the truth, I think the more effective punching, the ones that have more heat on them, are the ones coming from Durrell right now. He just landed a few good punches while we were all talking and showing yeah, that. I, I agree with you on that, because he's he's not only headhunting, he's, he's actually throwing some good punches yep. to the body. He is. And Chiron needs to throw some punches to the body as well. Davis with a nice right hand there, but again, they're going back and forth here as the fight gets a little bit closer. Yeah, again, again, Davis throwing that little chop hook right off the block, and there's, there's that rocking back and coming back with the counter right hand off of Durrell's right hand. This is really some intricate, uh, tricky stuff, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah. Kyron has to be careful because, you know, Durrell is, is experienced. He knows yeah. if you're going to throw that jab out there and you're not coming back and you're not bringing it back to your chin, he's going to, He's going to make you suffer from that because he sees that. And Davis has an excellent chin. Nice body work there as well. And Durrell goes right to the body with a combination. Big right hand try there by Davis. 
The exchange once again, and here you look on the left side. We're going to roll this back for you. There's that right hand by Darrell. Yeah, so this left hand, that left hand is going to be dropping even more during the fight. As you can see, you know, he jabs and it comes right back to his chest. Oof. He needs to Crisp bring that right, right hand back by to his Durrell. chest. Yeah, Durrell, and another right hand by Durrell, now finding a home in the range. Well, they're, they're counter punching and punching, but I got to tell you, Durrell really knows how to thread the needle right through those gloves. Even when they're held tight, he can get right through them. It's really smart stuff. Nice body shot by Durrell a few seconds ago as well. Just kind of snuck that in. Let's take that on your way out. Nice three punch. Firing back. Good combination Davis. by Davis. By Stephen Edwards there in the corner as well. And let's uh, yeah. watch this once again. It's hard to digest everything, Joe. I mean, there's good shots back and forth. Yeah, there is. But, you know, that's what uh, Kyron Davis does so well. You saw Durrell throw uh, a right hand that didn't really land. And then Kyron came back with one right on the button. This, there's not... Well, there's that right hand. He's going to rock and come right back. He, although he misses the right hand, you know, that goes to show you the skill of these guys. They, even when they get hit, they know to come back with a good counterpunch by instinct and training. You see Trick. the punches la landed by round as we can go at the bottom of the screen right there. And it is uh, Durrell who is uh, more accurate, a little busier. Uh, but last two rounds, very close. And when you're talking about, you know, 21-19, 24-22, and now it's a matter of, all right, who landed the harder punches, who was more effective in scoring shots, and that's a, a subjective call by the judges. But I think at least, fellas, we're getting into a zone now where we're thinking about the judges and the possibility of Davis winning some rounds here. Yeah, right there. I mean, as long as you're, you know, keeping busy, you're going to catch the eye uh, of the judges. And uh, that's what Davis wasn't doing early. He's doing much more now. But to the point of what Stephen Ed Edwards was telling him, he said he wanted him to go to the body more during this round. I haven't seen him do it yet, and he wanted to use the jab, get to the open spot. So, you know, let's see if he follows the instructions by the great trainer, Stephen Edwards. Yeah, I agree with that. He needs to throw to the body. He can't be just a headhunter in this fight yep. because you got an experienced guy in there as a, in Durrell. And Durrell, if you're hitting him to the head all the time, he's just going to protect the head. So you got to mix it up. Absolutely. And Davis, you can see there, he just continues to fire. I mentioned before, he's got a very good engine. You know, just his work ethic is excellent. And he comes in, he's got a lot of fight in his system. And he's going to need it here because Durrell does have that edge and skill and experience. There's a good hook by Davis landing to the body. And you see what happens right when he throws that hook like Edwards wanted. Durrell just counters with a hook right to the top. Now, if Davis doesn't have that right hand up when he's hooking to the body, he's going to get clipped by that. But he blocked it. So... These guys are really good, really good tacticians, and, and uh, you know, you got to work to get a shot in between these two guys. Yeah, it's true. So I would say, though, and Lennox, you would want, though, like, in the fight, if the fight is fought in a phone booth, uh, you have to like Davis's chances, right? I mean, that's his best shot to win this fight? Uh, I would say Darrell. Darrell's good inside right now because he... Really? Yeah, he's okay. slipping, and he's moving with the punches, and he's coming back with counter punches. I'm not saying uh, Davis is not doing that. He's doing that, but Darrell does it a lot better. Well, they're both pretty good at it, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, Durrell threw a body shot, and, and again, a left hook to the body, and Kyron Davis countered with a beautiful right hand. This is what they've been doing all night. This is really artful stuff. So I, I think they're both good on the inside, to tell you the truth. And mm. I, I just think that Davis would have a harder time on the outside because his arms are definitely not as long as Durrell. And Durrell's not usually really using all the distance on his uh, reach that he has. He's kind of content. He thinks he can do well on the inside, and he is. Baltimore now, I know what you're both saying, too. I, I, Lennox, I hear you because Durrell is very skilled on the inside, uh, yet I wonder if Davis could win a fight. I mean, win with the judges fighting from the outside. Seems to be difficult there. Again, they continue to exchange though hard fought rounds and we want to pay respect right now while we have a chance yeah. Leon Spinks former heavyweight champion of the world passed away on February 5th he was 67 years old I remember he uh, challenged Muhammad Ali only seven fights into his career he was 6-0-1 and he beat Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight title he was an Olympic gold medalist in 1976 he would hold the title until September of 78 when he lost the rematch to Ali. That was Ali's last win in the ring. But Leon Spinks, uh, for those of you uh, old enough to remember, a big star. And again, 
There it is, <laughs> famous Sports Illustrated. Again, on your resume, Olympic gold medalist, and he was a surprise Olympic gold medalist, Lennox Lewis, uh, and then beating Muhammad Ali for the heavyweight title. Uh, it's quite a career for Leon Spinks. Yeah. Again, as a former heavyweight champion, Lennox, your thoughts on Leon Spinks? Leon Spinks, you know, when he, when he boxed Muhammad Ali, I never thought he was going to win. No. But he put in the work, he did, he won it, and, uh, you know, he became a star after that. But uh, a great guy, I met him a couple times, and... Uh, always open. I, I remember phoning him one time and, uh, you know, he was very gracious to me, so blessed to him. Yeah, and, and Leon Spinks, what a, what a character, what a great guy. Uh, but again, won that fight against Ali with only seven fights. Profile. Amazing. <laughs> pretty yeah. amazing. And again, I know, and also unexpectedly, a Michael Spinks, you know, amateur star expected to win in the Olympics. Obviously, that's 76, so that's uh, Sugar Ray Leonard stealing the show. But Leon Spinks, uh, unexpected out of nowhere and winning a gold medal as well, part of a, one of those great U.S. amateur teams. Here, round number eight, Anthony Durrell, Kyron Davis, Davis in the blue trunks, and the blue and white from Durrell, again, the more experienced man, 36 years of age. And we've had a good fight here as Davis taking the fight to Durrell. Durrell looks good, but he is forced to work here. Marcos Viegas giving that last round to Davis, and he has it a one-point fight. Very close, fellas. And, and it is. Well, because Davis has been, you know, doing well, I think, in, in the last three, four rounds. He may not have won the rounds decisively or won them at all, but he's in the fight. He's making his move right now, and I think they're going to try to come down the stretch really hard, he and his trainer, Stephen Edwards. Yeah, but, you know, Darrell has some good defense. He's not, it's not like these punches are hitting him. You know, he's, he's got his guard up, and he's looking to counterpunch. You know, and he's an active puncher as well. Well, like Chris Davis, Hook there, Davis, that, that rocked the world on Davis. Yeah, yeah, Davis throws a lot of punches, good, strong punches, but they're not as accurate as Darrell's punches. They may not be, but he's got punches that are certainly landing. Like those oh, yeah, right absolutely. There, you know, uh, it, here's the problem is, is Davis has only got six knockouts in his 17 fight. You know, right. he just doesn't have a lot of power. And so the 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 idea of him knocking out Durrell is probably unlikely. But what he can do is out hustle him. And if he's going to do that, he's got uh, this round and a few more left and he better get on it or else. Durrell will probably win a decision. Yeah, I agree with but you. But to that, to that point, Durrell is also not a knockout artist at this point. Again, he, he uh, it was able to knock out Caleb Truax in 2016, get a first-round knockout. That's right. That was impressive. But normally he is content to box and just, you know, earn his way uh, to a point's victory. You're right. But, but again, um, 36 fights, 24 knockouts, that ain't bad, you know. Um, and plus, he's fought a higher quality of opponents, Durrell. Yeah, so it's, it's harder to knock those guys out. Yeah, it just hasn't been as many knockouts uh, down the stretch the last five, seven years. Yeah. You know, as, as it happens, you know, for, for most top fighters. Your, your first yeah. year or two, you're taking guys out, and right. that, that slows. It and does. You can see Durrell, even at 168, again, Caleb Plant plants a little bit more, so to speak. Uh, Canelo is super strong at 168. Durrell is uh, more of a craftsman in there. Final oh, seconds, round eight. Ooh, good and right Durrell there with a the right hand, but you answer saw, off the end of a combination. But you, you saw Davis countered with a left hook off that, mm. even though it was a decent right hand. It's amazing. <laughs> October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. I tell you, we saw in that last round, uh, Durrell accurate as Lennox was mentioning. But uh, Kyron Davis, uh, as he is in almost every round, able to get some answer back. Big right hand there by Durrell first, but able to come back later in the round. Oh, I don't see it there. Well, here we see it. Nice jab by Durrell. And at the end, you could hear it. He is still, he doesn't like hearing from the yeah. other corner, yeah. Joe and Lennox. Yeah. He heard it again, and he, as we went away, he's, he's yelling at the other corner yeah. and, and, and the trainers. Yeah, he was definitely jawing yeah. at Stephen I, Edwards. I, I yeah, don't know sure. why. I don't know why, but, you know. Why? Oh, well, because he feels he's under control, and he's, he feels he's got, he feels confident in what he's doing, and that he's got a second or two for Stephen Edwards in the corner, <laughs> you know. 
Round number nine, again, scheduled for 12. Brian Kenny here with Lennox Lewis, Joe Goosen, Heidi Andrall, and Marcos Viegas. And again, Marcos Viegas does a very good job to, as the unofficial scorer and pointing out that a lot of these rounds are close. You know, sometimes we're right on it. Sometimes the judges have it differently. But uh, I think it's fair to say a lot of these rounds could be seen as close. Joe, Lennox, your thoughts? Could could these swing either way in the minds of the judges? No, I, I don't think no. so. I think I, I think Darrell is very comfortable yeah. really? in there. He's doing what he wants to do. He's not getting hit. He just has to be oh. careful of the head and uh, being being caught by, uh, Look at that. by, by right Davis. By Davis Durrell. throws good punches, but yeah. right now he's on a defensive but, mode. But see, this, right, is the, well, this is the distance, Brian, that I was talking about that I'd like Darrell at, using that reach. So all these combos that he just hit... Uh, Davis with were, were at the end of his punches and I like him out there but I think as good as Davis is trying to fight and answering back I just think Durrell is winning these rounds yes I hear you I hear you on that Marcos had it a one point fight let's see where he is right now Marcos how do you have it at this point right now, Brian, I have it 77 to 75. Uh, you know, Durrell's starting to let his hands go. And, and like I mentioned earlier, if you look at the fight overall and you ask yourself who's throwing the more damaging punches, you would say Durrell. Uh, if you look at it round by round by round, there, there's rounds in there that Davis has done work. And, and like I mentioned, he's doing a lot of touch work. And, yeah. and you don't know how the judges are going to perceive that when they're scoring these rounds. Joe, now, now Marcos, you had it uh, close. You had it yellowed there. But which, which, who did you give that last round to? I gave that, uh, yes, I, I gave the last round, round number eight, uh, over to uh, Durrell. I just felt he, he did a little bit more, and, and the punches that he landed were just uh, more damaging overall. Okay, so 77-75. We had 76-76. Yeah, to excuse clarify. me on that. Again, yes. There we go. Now, we've cracked. No, it's not your fault. It just, and just to clarify, but either way, you've given three rounds to Davis. And just to, to illustrate that a judge would not be out of his mind to give a bunch of rounds to Davis on the other side. We've been surprised before, Joe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <no doubt laughs> Joe, that. we've been surprised yeah. before. I'm not saying here, I think yeah. Darrell's winning this fight, but we've been surprised, and we yeah. just try to let people know what the judges could be thinking. I, 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 Joe, Listen, what I, would you tell Davis right now? What does he need to do? Not do what he's doing, staying out on the end of the punches here. You look, you've got to make you've got to make an impression on the judges. You've got to do something. You've got, even if the punches aren't as hard as Darrell's, you've still got to make it look like you're the busier guy, the guy that's making the fight happen. And he's playing a cat and mouse game out here on the outside with Durrell, and I don't think this is going to work for him. The round is already over. And Durrell did all the work. Yeah, he's trying to land that left hook. I mean, he's got to do a lot more work to do that. They fight to the bell once again. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This, look at this. This is, this is where he's talking to the corner. He doesn't need to yeah. do that, but uh, Darrell's you well, know, comfortable. He's throwing some punches. Yeah. Taking his time. Oh, good combination. No, no, no. You know what happened? He actually threw it. Um, he almost hyper-extended his, his elbow, elbow and yeah. that's dangerous right now because you don't want to do that in the fight. Good fight here in the main event. Kyron Davis making a good account of himself coming in as uh, oh, kind of the challenger, even though Anthony Durrell is not currently a champion. He's a former two-time titleist, round number 10. Durrell in the Kobe Bryant trunks in the purple and gold. And Davis in the blue trunks. So you see the punches landed in favor of Durrell, 125 to 100. And Lennox Lewis uh, on record saying he likes the work of Anthony Durrell winning most of these rounds. Yes, I mean, he's very comfortable. He's doing what he uh, needs to do. He's not getting hit. And uh, he's being very successful with that jab. And that's what he's supposed to do, throwing that jab. He's rolling when Davis comes in and counter punching. We gave you the landscape of the super middleweight division. Again, Canelo Alvarez is fighting tonight against Avni Yildirim, a man that Anthony Durrell has beaten already. David Benavides, by the way, fights in March, and he told BoxingScene.com that he said he feels like he's on a collision course for a rematch with Durrell. I didn't know that that could be happening, except they're both fighting WBC title eliminators. 
Joe Goosen, do you think if they fought again, it would be a different result, or what are your thoughts? Well, if they both fight title eliminators, that means they'll probably fight an eliminator between themselves to see who fights the BC champion, no? Yeah, and I'm saying, do you yeah. think if they did fight, would it be different than the first, uh, the first fight? Well, no two fights are exactly the same, but I, yeah. I think what do you think happens? I, yeah. Well, <laughs> look, I, I got a favor Darrell because Darrell was hand, handling that fight quite easily uh, up, up until he got cut. And it, it, a little bit of the flow of the fight turned towards Yildirim after he got cut. No, 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 Benavides. Benavides, oh, I'm Joe, sorry. Talking. You mean... You mean what happened? You Let mean, me answer that question. No, if they I rematch, think, if they fight again, oh, what, if, if do you Benavides, think it changes or does Benavides win again? I, I see. I, look, I think Benavides is going to probably rededicate himself to this sport with all he's been through right now. I think he's going to be harder to beat than ever. Um, look, he, once he gets uh, moving in on you, he's hard to stop Benavides, and he's a great combination puncher. I would probably give be, have him as the slight favorite over Durrell for sure. Lennox, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think uh, Durrell should uh, do well in the fight because, uh, you know, he got cut last time and he was he was winning the fight. And uh, I think when you get cut in a fight, I know when you get cut in the fight, it's difficult because you only see another one eye and the other guy's, you know, he, he's throwing both hands at you. And uh, mm -hmm. when he got cut in that fight, things went south. So Good, sharp inside work by Darrell. Sorry, Lennox just getting in there. And you see Darrell, Darrell's in a zone right now. His concentration has just really reached another level as he gets fixed on the inside. And there, look, three shots landing. Davis firing back. Good action here in round 10. Good, professional, world-class action here. We're going to keep it here between rounds. So we'll go listen into the corner. That's round 10, and this is good stuff. And you see, that's the inside work. And, and Lennox, I just thought, and well, answered by Davis, but it looked like Durrell just found a nice zone, a good zone yes, he to did. land his shots. He did find a, a, a nice zone. Yeah, he's very comfortable on the inside or outside right now. I, 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 I just think he should just do what he's doing right out there, using the longer punches because he's, he's accurate, he's quick, and he's got the reach advantage. And I can tell you what uh, his trainer said. His trainer said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Oh, yeah, they were quiet, on. Lennox. By the way, we thought, all right, is our mic not there? Is it not? They just weren't talking to him. No, uh, he which, probably said, you know, like, sometimes that's it. Yeah, he probably said, listen, just keep on doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you're doing the right thing. You know, you, you're an old pro and, right. uh, you know, take him to school. See, 16 right years in, in, the, in, the, in the ranks. So, right, sometimes, Joe, Joe, how often would you do that? Go in there and say, let's just let the guy breathe and think. Oh, plenty of times. You know, when things are going your way and you're and you're confident in that you're ahead on the scorecards. Yeah, you know, you go, hey, look, I'm not going to, you know, tell you anything to throw you off. You're, what you're doing is perfect. Just keep on doing that. Yeah, but you would remind him to keep his hands up or don't get caught with no silly well, punches. Well, I mean, yeah, if need be. But, but again, I think Durrell is smart enough not to make those type of rookie mistakes. And you see Marcos Viegas with his unofficial scorecard there, and it's of interest, uh, to me anyway, that he's got three rounds close. That's the yellow, uh, the shading there. And also two that were close he's giving to Durrell. So while he has it 97-93, uh, he is acknowledging that you could swing those two rather quickly, and then you have a very close fight. And maybe uh, an even fight. It's possible. Yeah, I, I, I tend to think that. Durrell is comfortably ahead right now, but, you know, uh, Davis landed while we were talking and talking about the scores, landed a great jump leap in left hook right on the chin of Durrell. Yeah, let me tell you, that's his, that's his money punch right there, yeah. that left hook. But he's not and, doing it enough. Right, he, he, should, isn't. he should be doing it a lot more. Uh, yeah, there should know. be a lot more urgency to his whole, you know, style in here and his his whole presence. Well, let me tell you the it. problem with that left hook. You can't yeah. start off with a left hook. You got to start off with a jab or do something else before throwing that left hook. You got to disguise it before throwing it. I know, but that one in particular actually landed without the jab preceding it. It yeah. was just a jump in left hook and it caught Durrell by surprise. But again, he's only got six knockouts. If that was a real power puncher jumping in there with that left hook, that might have done some damage. <laughs> Both men very active here as we get toward the final 30 seconds. And just to underline what Marcos Villegas had on the scorecard, he has a range of scores now that could be between 98-92 to 95-95. So he could have an even fight or you could have it wide for Durrell. And, and that's how judging in, in boxing can work. And that's why sometimes you get a, uh, we get upset 
about a, a wide range, but each round goes in 10-9 or maybe 10-8 if there's a, a knockdown. And frequently there's controversy where there really shouldn't be. Now, sometimes there is, but sometimes there isn't. Just trying to point out where we are in this fight. One more round to go. And basically, fellas, good action <laughs> in this fight. I mean, they're going back and forth right. at close range. Yeah, yeah, you see a nice jumping, leaping left hook by Kyron Davis. And it connected. Well, yeah, and not only did it connect, it connected flush. Now, if you have a real hard left hook, that may put someone on their seat. You know what I'm saying, Len? Yeah, because I mean, they traded left hooks right there. Yeah. And, um, you know, Durrell's no hand effect. was completely down, which is unlike him normally. No, he knew he, he, knew he made that mistake. Yeah. Don't get careless, all right? Bullying and for Kyron Davis, again, this is his big shot. He's 15 and 2. He's 26 years old, so he's in his prime. But he's had an outstanding amateur career, national champion, has not made a lot of hay in his professional career. This is his big chance. So you would figure. A guy, as I mentioned, with a good engine, he would try to make something happen in this round. And to your point, guys, you think he's up, uh, you think Durrell is up in this fight. I would think in their corner, they, they are thinking, we need a knockout here, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah you mean you mean Davis's corner, Davis. of course. Yeah, yeah. without a doubt. I, I, I don't think there's any question. I think Durrell's up three, four rounds easily. And uh, this should go to him as a unanimous decision when everything's said and done. Well, then what would you tell Davis? I mean, what, what could you tell besides, hey, go knock this guy out? Yeah, what could you yeah, actually I mean, tell him to do it? Because, no. it's, because it's too late to say anything other than that, go knock him out. The thing would have been done was to just keep trying to put, you know, tremendous, tremendous pressure on. And even then, I don't know if that would have worked. I just think the skill level of Durrell is is that much better. And I think the size of Durrell is that much bigger. And I just think Durrell had every advantage in this fight, power, skill, size. And uh, I think at the end of the day, it's going to be unanimous decision, Durrell. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, you know, Davis is still young, you know, making yep. a little bit of mistakes. He's punched it a little bit wide. And he needs to be, develop a little bit more power, especially be, yeah. behind that right hand. And he needs to be throwing more combinations and ending off with that left hook because that's his sweet punch right there. I love how he throws yeah. that left hook. Yeah, no doubt he's good. Good exchanges in this round yeah. already. Again, as we're, we're describing, we're trying to talk about the judging here. That's a good body shot by Durrell. But Davis is, is landing some scoring well, shots. He, he Durrell counted, is he, as well. He countered that body shot with a short right hand. I mean, that's how clever Davis is. But I, he may need to be at Ooh. 60 instead of 68, 168 pounds. Let me tell the right hand Durrell, by Durrell as Durrell well. Durrell is, is landing some, that right hand. Yeah, he's throwing some good straight right hands. And all he's doing is just throwing it down the middle because he knows that Davis is going to be there. No wrestling, guys. Yeah, Durrell there just to firing that off and has a very short right hand, able to land this a bunch of times. But again, this is a this is good action back and forth. It will require a lot of concentration on the part of the judges. We'll find out very soon. Final minute of this fight. Again, a lot on the line for Anthony Durrell. There could be big fights for him in the future. Again, the title eliminator by one of the sanctioning bodies. Possibility mm -hmm. of a rematch with David Benavides. He thought he had a, sh a shot and thought he was going to get a chance to fight Caleb Plant up next. And you see him holding the back of his head. They may have yeah. clashed again. I think he caught an elbow off of Davis on top of his head. Mm. But, I, but I got to tell you, I think the, the big takeaway for me, if I'm in the corner of Durrell, is that thank goodness we got the win. We would have liked to have, no, that's hitting behind the head from David. We would have liked to have gotten the, the knockout. And, and Ray Corona's doing the right thing, warning him, even though it's almost over is that um, walking away with a nice decision that he didn't get cut in this fight, to tell you the truth. No, right. right. You know. there, there, was almost, there was a lot of uh, clashes that yeah. almost happened. I'm glad that there was no cut it, out of it. It held but, up. And again, he hasn't, fellas, he hasn't fought since Spence Porter. I mean, even Errol Spence with the car crash has fought since then. Right. So, yeah. like, Darrell just needed to get back in there. Yeah. And right, not get cut, get a victory and get to the next payday yep. and maybe get another Rolls Royce. <laughs> He's got one. Just don't sneak up on him like that guy. Is dangerous. <laughs> That's it. 12 hard rounds for Durrell and Davis. And let's go to Marcos right now. Marcos, I know we had a lot of swing rounds. I'm trying to explain. Uh, late in the fight, you could have had it even. How did you have it when it was all said and done? All said and done, I have it as you can see there. 116 to 112 with three uh, swing rounds. You know, a, a lot of the uh, rounds were close because you had to make a decision. Do you prefer Davis's touch punching or do you... Uh, go and give the nod to Durrell with his power punching. Uh, it remains to be seen right now with the decision, but that was a conundrum for, for me, and, and I bet the judges.
Marcos, again, we're trying to point out what the judges could have in store. Good job on that. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the scorecards. We have a split decision. Here are the score totals. Judge ringside, Dr. Lou Moret scores about 115 to 113 in favor of Chiron Davis. Judge Patrick Russell sees it 115 to 113 in favor of Anthony Durrell. And judge at ringside, Zachary Young scores the bout 114 to 114, even a draw. The decision is a split decision draw. October 15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay! The Bronze Bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on Pay Per View. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Plant and Truex, the Battle of Caleb's here in LA. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen from the Shrine Auditorium Expo Hall here in Los Angeles, California, Premier Boxing Champions presents the featured bout of the evening brought to you by TGB Promotions and Sweet Hands Promotions in association with Warriors Boxing and sponsored by GEICO. This bout is sanctioned by the IBF, the president, Daryl Peoples. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside, we have Max DeLuca, Dr. Lou Barrett, and Zachary Young. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen, boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Los Angeles, it's time for the main event of the evening. Introducing to you first on my left, the challenger fighting out of the red corner. Wearing maroon trunks with gold trim, hailing from Osseo, Minnesota. He weighed in at 167 and three quarter pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, four losses and two draws, with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, looking to regain his title, here is the current top rated contender and the former IBF super middleweight champion of the world, Caleb Gold. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black trunks with pink and yellow trim, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, by way of his home, Nashville, Tennessee. He weighed in at already 167 and one half pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 20 wins, no losses, 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the third defense of his title, here is the undefeated, reigning and defending IBF super middleweight champion of the world, introducing Sweet Hands, Caleb Plant. And the referee in charge now to give instructions, Jerry Cantu. Two seconds, mouthpiece, mouthpiece. Gentlemen, you are giving your instructions in the dressing room for the IBF world title. I'm gonna expect a good, clean, hard fight, and you will obey my commands at all times. Touch them up, good luck to both of you. Well, we've learned that already tonight, Sean Porter. Jerry Cantu will, <laughs> will take command in the ring. You better listen to him. By the way, tonight's odds provided by Fox Bet. If you place $100 on the favorite, Caleb Plant, you would win $4, payout of $104. $100 on Caleb Truax, you win $1,000 with a payout of $1,100. So Caleb Plant is a huge favorite in this fight, and for good reason. But Caleb Truax will try to do what he can. And I know, Sean, you, you thought that Truax, maybe his best chance is early, or do you think otherwise? No, um, 
I, I, he's got to find moments. In, in order to win this fight, he's got to find moments to put some pressure on Caleb Plant. <laughs> Easier said than done. Right. Uh, he said he'll use his determination and he'll use his experience and knows that, hey, at times, Caleb Plant will fade. At times. But I don't know if that's going to be early. Round one underway. Caleb Plant in the black with the fringe and Caleb Truax in the gold and the red trunks out of Minnesota and he was just running in Minnesota three degrees only several days ago before flying into LA two good body shots to the uh, by, by Caleb Plant early and often that's what I always say about going to the body Caleb Plant again a multi-dimensional fighter again he can fight with speed he takes pride in his hand speed but he will also plant so to speak and throw hard <laughs> shots he says he can go off the front foot the back foot tries with the hook there springs in and you can see how fast those hands are right hand to the body as well very fast and I, I, I like what you said when he was coming to the ring he's a thinking man in the mm -hmm. ring and that's a guy who can think and also has the ability to to, to see it all and, and do it all that's a hard guy to, to fight against well it's a, it's a cliche Sean but he is a student of the game we were talking about that with Michael Coffey that's a good hook from plant but he is a student of the game and you can see the improvements mm -hmm. yeah he, he very much so is a student of the game so much that he, he'll know everything about his opponent <laughs> where his opponent lives uh, the exact address how many people live in that house and what car that that, that opponent drives you know he really <laughs> is a, a, a thinker and, and a student of the game I know him personally you know so no surprise to see him in the, in the middle of the ring right now and controlling everything at this point in the fight Sounds like he's uh, like bound for a Liam Neeson flick or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like for real. Like I, I said that. I said, yo, he's kind of like like a taking kind of guy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, CIA or something yeah. like that. You see, he's able to land the jab and then a right to the body. So he's already showing a little creativity in his arsenal. There it is again, a little jab, and then throwing that right hand. Now a left hand throws that hook into the body on Truax. And, and Caleb Truax, if anything, being defensive, but also being patient. I think that, that that's going to work to his advantage. If you rush against a guy like Caleb Plant, you're going to walk into something. Strong combinations there from Plant. Already landing 10 punches. Truax tries the hook to the body. Again, Truax is 37 years old. Uh, what was so impressive about his win over to Gale was his consistency. He is very athletic, former baseball player, football player, uh, turned boxer a little late, but very athletic and very game. Got to be consistent. I, I like that word. Uh, if you're Caleb Truex tonight, be consistent. If you're defensive, be defensive. Be consistent with that. Don't get touched and give Caleb Plant more confidence than he already has. And the same thing offensively. When it's time to go, go and get that offensive uh, uh, attack off and be consistent with it. Stumble there from Plant as he backed up. Final 10 seconds of uh, what was a quick round one. That went quickly. No, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Just a lot of tension here. Hook doubling up on the hook, and Plant tries a right hand tonight. Right, here's a, a replay of uh, this is a quick left hook from the outside, and that's one of uh, one of Caleb's weapons right there. He, he's gonna he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna find that quick hook, almost like a like a Roy Jones. It's really quick and fast, and it's from the outside. Most guys don't see punches like that coming. And when you throw a jab normally before you throw a hook and then you exactly. come up with that, right, Sean, that's when it can land. Exactly. Good right hand as well from Caleb Plant. Justin Gamber in the corner, Sean, I think, looked like he had it kind of figured out. Like, you're just, you're too fast for this guy, right? Yeah, I mean, and, and that's what you're supposed to tell Caleb Plant. Even if you only, you know, he didn't land as much as you normally would, you give him the confidence, hey, you are fast, keep using your hands and, and keep working those combinations. They're going to work. He just snapped Caleb Truex's head back with that jab. That, that's like a classic winky right jab snap and able to pick up the head. So all sorts of good work early on here from Caleb Plant, and we're only in round number two. Right here is the moment that I was talking about for Caleb Truex. Don't relax right there. Take advantage right there. Yeah, the moment when there's yep. a little lull in energy, just even a slight ebb. That you get you get close to him, uh, you corner him against the ropes like that. Boom, take advantage. That's that's his. That, those are going to be the moments with Caleb Truax in this fight. You know, uh, Brian Kenny and Sean Porter here again calling our main event. Sean, this is we've gotten so used to this. You've already fought in these conditions, but there are no fans here, and uh, Caleb Plant hasn't dealt with this. Again, his last fight was Nashville, his hometown. It was jam packed. Um, how different is that for him, if at all? You know, it's funny because you got no nothing but your corner telling you that you're doing things right. You know, and most corners aren't really 
speaking up too much during the course of the fight. So you got nothing. When you when you land a good punch, it's all up to you to recognize that punch that you landed. The, there's no crowd to give you anything, you know, so there's no no energy here. All the energy comes from the inside. Right. It's funny. We, we've called so many fights, Sean, including yours back in August, where, you know, there's a big topic of conversation. We've gotten past that. But for the fighter, he hasn't. You know, when, it, when they went to the corner, I thought, wow, it's quiet. Yeah, he must have felt that, too. You were here when I fall, right? No, I was here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, like, you were host. here in the right. stadium, and, and <laughs> you, like, you're big leaguing everybody now and doing it remotely. <laughs> you know, and, and, and somehow you still know what it feels like to be here, which is crazy. Uh, back and forth. The COVID regulations. You see all the oh, thumbs yeah. up going up and everything. I don't, I, I don't know how you're doing this, turning this off, but I like it. More focused. Right? Compartmentalizing like Let's Michael Coffey. Your go. final 30 seconds of round number two. And uh, Caleb Truax able to have uh, just a little bit of more success here in the second round, but a good repertoire being shown by Plant in this fight. Absolutely, and, and he as well being very patient through the course of now two rounds and picking his punches very carefully. Plant outlanding Truax by a wide margin, even though Truax able to block some of these shots. But there's a hook that landed from Plant. Final seconds. Good work by the champ. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. You're more grounded, aren't you, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that punch, though. I'm not going to lie. Round number three, IBF Super Middleweight Championship, Caleb Plant, Caleb Truax. Plant in the black trunks right there, outlanding Truax 31 to 7. <laughs> Truax, again, the big opportunity here. He's still ranked in the top 10 in the Ring Magazine ratings, ESPN rankings. Again, held this title three years ago. Again, has not fought since. June of early 2020 got a majority decision against a 41 year old opponent. So, this uh, a big shot out of nowhere doing this on name value mm -hmm. and getting a chance against Caleb Plant, who, Sean, as I mentioned, seems to be peaking. I mean, look at him, look at him doubling up, tripling up on that jab. He is, he's peaking. He's a very uh, mentally focused fighter, and it's very, very hard to find guys like that at this point in, in, in their careers. And that's what keeps him going is he's focused. He, he's got a mission. And it's almost like he he's, hasn't lost sight of that mission at all. And, and, and you need so much when you're going up against a guy like Caleb Plant. You need, you need a good jab of your own, if not great. Uh, you need fast feet, fast hands. You need a whole lot. And I'm not sure, not only three rounds in, but I'm not sure if Caleb Truex has anything at all for him. But, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that Caleb Truex will, will flip a switch and, and start, you know, pressuring Caleb Plant the way I expected him to. He's going to have to do something here. And, uh, Sean, you bring up a point as I'm looking at Plant and his little hook to the body and then to the head and a right hand to the body as well by Plant. There's a mental pressure that Plant puts on you. He's never far away from you, mm -hmm. always thinking and always menacing, even when he's not throwing. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're true. That's that's very true. And then even right there, how can you be this close to to, to Caleb Plant and not hit him? That, that it, 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 it really does uh, take something out of you when you can't hit a guy. And look to the left of the screen here as we're watching live action on the right. But you'll see Plant able to land and really just snapping jab, doubling up, and then the quick. That was a quick right hand too. He changed the pace on that, didn't he, Sean? Yep, yep, yep. He's 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 got fast hands. He what does he call them? Sweet hands. I'm not crazy yeah, about I'm not crazy about the, the nickname, but it fits him <laughs> because he's he really has great hands and when he lets him go, <laughs> there's no telling what's gonna happen. And uh, we joked about Jerry Cantu, if you were watching earlier, and Jerry Cantu said, you know, listen to my commands. He took two points away from a fighter for an illegal shot earlier. So Jerry will take control, although he's been so far been able to slide out of the action so far in the main event. No, 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 no. Let's not get a mistake Jerry Cantoon is a great ref. He just felt like he needed to take control in that yeah. fight that we saw earlier. And I personally think like he, he, he overdid it a little bit. But you know, but you know I'm, what I'm saying is when he says, listen to my commands now, I'm a little more apt to listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry, I hear you. Absolutely. Take it easy. There's round three.
Back here in our main event, there's Caleb Plant, world champion at 168 pounds, IBF titleist, and uh, he's a very serious man uh, in the gym. Again, up, there's the sweet hands, all different types of push-ups, and also, I don't even know if Sean Porter can do this. Don't ask. Look at this. No, this is serious. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I, not, he, he's not on a space shuttle, I've never, never seen him gym. do that one. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in the gym with him anymore. Wow. <laughs> Again, you know, your level of commitment in the gymnasium, right, Sean? That dictates an awful lot. It shows up in the fight. It shows up in the fight. A, a dedicated champion. Round four, Caleb Plant, Caleb Truex, Brian Kenny, and Sean Porter with you here in Los Angeles. Again, the main event now, and Caleb Plant, big things on the horizon at 168 pounds. And he needs to look good in every single fight. Yeah. To kind of create that mandate uh, for the big fights in this weight class. You see that? That was a triple jab. That's something you, you don't really see too often. Guys are they have a tendency to throw one, maybe two, never three. And, and opposite side of it is the other guy normally does not expect three jabs. Mm. Truex, if you're going to find success, start using your jab. I like the way he came out this, this fourth round using the jab. Now, Caleb Truex, Sean, was very realistic coming into the fight. He said, look, I, I know he's a good fighter. He's got good combinations, good ring IQ. He goes, but I, I'll need to be at my best to beat him, but I have more experience. And he said, look, he's had an easier road than, than I had. Yeah. You know, and in boxing, that can come back, you know, to cost you. And look, and, uh, you know, Plant doesn't have, the, like, the type of resume that you had with guys on the way up. Uh, he seems very fresh, still very, you know, new. Uh, I don't know if Truex is going to be able to take advantage of that, but it is true. He's fought the much better fighters than Plant has. Well, he's uh, Caleb Plant's got a lot of variety to his punches. I mean, I, I go back just a little bit. He's got a, a, a strong jab from the outside. He's got a snapping jab from the outside. Then he's got this lean in uh, left uppercut that goes right to the head, not to the body. Then he'll go to the body. I mean, he's just got so much coming at one time that it's hard to keep up with. And then if you're a guy, Caleb Truex, you're like, hey, I'm going to rely on my experience to take me through this fight. Well, you, you're going to want to get to rounds 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's when your experience will show up. But then by then, are you strong enough to do everything that you've right. done in the past? And I got a feeling that at, to that point, he'll be uh, he'll be broken down by then. Yeah, he, he's getting hit harder in this round. Caleb Plant has already started to lay the wood to Truax here. He's just landing those shots a little harder. He's drawn a little bit of blood on Caleb Truax now. I'm glad you said that because that's one thing I like about Caleb. He doesn't just come out and have one speed and one tempo. I think I do that. I kind of have one speed and one tempo through the course of a fight. And if you can't keep up, then you, you got to get out of the ring. But Caleb will really build in everything that he does. And it's like he gets stronger as the fight continues. And look at him start to hit stronger and, and punch faster. As you know, he goes. You know, and Sean, he just he just finished a combination with a jab straight to the face of, of Truax that he just did he couldn't expect. I mean he is finishing up those shots, he is doubling up, tripling up on jabs. I mean, just showing a lot of good dimensions in this fight. Yeah, I think to this point, everybody is seeing what ex what we expected from this fight and also from Caleb. We expected him to be too fast for Caleb Truex. Caleb, an uppercut by very DeGale. Good uppercut right there. Yeah, DeGale able to land there in the final seconds here of round number four. Maybe a chance and something to build on. That was a very good round by Caleb Truex. Uh, of course, Caleb Plank doing the same things. Here we go. This is the uppercut I was talking about. It's, it's not exactly an uppercut. It's like a, I don't know what to call it. I actually call it a funny jab, but it's a punch that goes right to the chin. And then right here, combinations, finishing with the jab, the trailing punch. More of that when we come back. Use that head movement with your jab. Back here, with there's the Caleb Truax, you work who is starting to take a beating in this fight. But at the end of the round, here's his moment, Sean. Look at the shot. Yeah, this this is your moment. Let your hands go. You can't be afraid to work right there. Don't worry about conditioning. Don't worry about not being able to touch him. Give him some heat, something to worry, to, to be concerned with. That was in the la the final seconds of that round. Not much to build on there, but maybe in something that could enable Truax to build a little bit of confidence as we're in round number five, and it's been all Caleb Plant. I got I to gotta figure that Caleb Truax is corner should have known that hey if we're gonna catch this guy we gotta catch him where, where he can't move and on the ropes is typically where a fighter is not able to move you have to be able to swivel and move off of the ropes but right there when your back is on the ropes you have a moment right there to have some success 
it's been all Caleb Plant uh, as of yet, at least by the way we're seeing it. Let's go to Marcos Villegas and see how he's scoring this fight. Marcos, what do you have? No, I definitely agree with you, Brian. Uh, it's been all Caleb Plant at this point, uh, four rounds uh, to zero. He's just he's just too quick at this point for uh, Caleb Truex. He really needs to try to cut the ring off and, and go ahead and let his hands go at that point. But you see Caleb, he's moving in and out, in and out. It's making it really uh, difficult for him to score punches. Marcos, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree. Again, it's good to check in and, and see you're scoring the fight round by round. You never know, you could get surprised. We've had some surprises here already this evening on Fox. Absolutely. Didn't expect it here. Good digging and body shot there by Plant. And to your point, Sean, he has some punches that are at varying angles where there aren't names for those shots. Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's it like a hybrid. Because you know? that punch, yeah, it's a hybrid punch. It's like, a, it's like half uppercut and half jab. And that's a jab that I learned really early on as even as an amateur and we just call this simply a funny jab but they got they got another name for it i'll figure it out and, and bring it up uh yeah later because he it's that's like a four, punch. it's like a 45 degree hook or something it's a hook it's an uppercut and, and watch here and that's just that's nice head movement from plant kind of underrated because you you, you're so focusing on the offense because it's it's overwhelming, but he has pretty good defense, Sean. And and like I said, if you got good feet, you can step over when he goes to spin out, pivot out like that, and then you'll have that an extra moment. There's not going to be very many moments uh, for Caleb Truex in this fight. There's a moment where you, you're close. You got to be confident and let your hands go. And Sean, you brought it up last round. I didn't have a chance because the action picked up here, but. You're, you're right, he, he has different speeds and goes through every gear. You have one gear, but if you're gonna have one gear, make it sixth gear. Yeah, it's yeah, I, gear. I was gonna say, <laughs> I got one gear, it's not a bad gear to have it's at all. Gear. You know? yeah. Yeah. Slap it into high gear, let's go. Yeah. Oh. Final 30 seconds of round five. All Caleb Plant so far, but Caleb Truax again, given a professional workmanlike effort so far. You'll need to change the equation here to try to turn things around. Final 10 seconds now of this round. Tries with the right hand to the body. And so far, that jab of Caleb Plant has really made a difference. Outlanding Caleb Truax and the jab just snapping back the head of his number 15. Caleb. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay! Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Sean, give me one thing because look, Plant looks terrific, right? We know that. Give me one thing you'd like to see Plant do that he hasn't done so far tonight. <sighs> He, he, I mean, he's done a combination of all of it, especially through, through the course of six rounds. And he, and he went to the body early. I think it, even at, at this point, I would say go back to the body. He started off early going to the body, and he seems to have gone away from it. Hey, the jab's effective. Punch, boxing from the outside is effective. But hey, try to get to that body like he just did right there and break down the killer two X. And then the right hand to the head, punctuate. You can see the, the eyes now closing on Truax. He's just getting beat up more and more. You see the punches landed. Wide discrepancy, 71 to 18 in favor of Caleb Plant. Now he's up on his toes. Look, Sean, I know when you were fighting uh, Formella a while back in August, when you got up on your toes, it, you look like a different fighter. I wonder if Plant would do that a little bit more, or is that, you know, take away from his offensive plan? You know what? I don't think he necessarily needs it against Caleb Truax. And I thought when I fought uh, for Mella, I just wanted to change uh, the complexion of the fight, so to speak. And so I got on my toes just to see what would happen, and I had a lot of mm -hmm. success right there. I don't think that's something that Killer Plant necessarily needs. The right, the straight right to the body. I'm starting to see him focus on the body a little bit more, and I like to see that. Yeah, no, he's a different fighter. I, I thought you looked tremendous when you were doing that, Sean. I like to see it. I know it's easy for me to say, I'm, you know, when I'm watching you and I'm in a suit, boy, I'd like to see that all the, for three minutes every round. And but. I went back and looked at the <laughs> fight, and I heard you you mentioned that you liked me on my toes. So yeah. I, I, I appreciate that. I did watch the fight back. Did you watch that fight back? I did. I watched that one back. It didn't take me too long. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that earlier. If you're just joining us, how often a fighter will look back and frequently be surprised. Fighters don't want to look back right away until they're, until they're forced to. 
so a, a smart fighter, they, they know what they need to do. You know, you have a coach to give you the, the stop, pointers stop, and the stop, tips stop, when you need them. But you, you see Caleb starting to focus more on the body, straight rights to the body, and also stabbing jabs to the body to just release the air out of Caleb Truex, which will ultimately break him down. Man I free, expect gentlemen. to see Caleb Man continue free. to go to Get the body Rick, plan. There you go. And more blood now pouring from the face of Caleb Truex getting beaten down. Just all these shots, the accumulation of punishment as we're in the final minute of round number six. And, and, and here's another thing I like about Caleb playing. He'll throw a straight right, lead right hand, out of position. He'll miss, but because he's, he's athletic and because he's got a good feel for who he is as a fighter, he's able to escape and not get touched, even though he did something that wasn't necessarily correct and that's something that not many people got not many guys can do you know i i, I honestly i can <laughs> lay, list those guys on one hand lead hook Ten there seconds, landed Ten just flush on truax and now the blood starts to flow a little bit more that was a hard shot as well yeah, it's a good point sean what a right hand to the body again so many different dimensions changing levels changing pace and landing continuous hard shots blood flies from Caleb Truax, 37 years old, and the champ doing a number on him. Let's go. Let's go. You guys There's Caleb Truax in his corner. Sean Porter, I, I don't know what you could tell Truax. Any ideas? Well, they, they, they said it. They, they said everything that needed to be said. When you get him up against the ropes, don't back up. Go get him right there. It should have started. That should have started, you know, in round one or round two. Establish who you are in the ring mm -hmm. and what you want to do. That's what I always say. And I don't think that was ever established by Caleb Truex. Yeah, Caleb Truex, again, a good athlete. Uh, star outfielder in high school, University of Minnesota graduate. Again, uh, came to boxing a little bit late, but he's been in there with the top fighters in the world. Won this belt, the IBF belt back in 2017, beating James DeGale in London, England. We've showed you that footage before. Uh, but tonight, uh, against a completely different animal, just a very motivated uh, Caleb Plant, a champion who is determined to be the best that he can be. Uh, mentally, spiritually, physically, serious young man. And he has been terrific here tonight. Patient, though, Sean. Like, he says he wants the knockout, and he still may get it, but he'll get it his way. It's interesting because you you break down a fighter, and, and, and then it's much easier to get that knockout you, you go out and you know rounds now seven and you're gunning for the head and you're not getting it but you never took the time to break that fighter down now you're looking at rounds 11 or 12 and you won't get the knockout at all so i think that uh caleb plant has, has is putting in the necessary groundwork to break down caleb truex to knock knock him out later right. in the fight and, and you can see sean too that hook just landed and had a bad effect on truax whereas before it didn't seem to phase him as much nice little combination by truax i'm actually see, sitting here i'm sorry to cut you off i'm sitting here wondering what kelly truax has got you, i saw speed right there yeah i saw and i saw a little bit of pop right there like continue to work at that pace and do that you have to be you, you have to be confident that you can do what it takes to win a fight let his hands go, right? Even if it's not go. thrown hard, but you know, you kind of, kind of let them out there. Yeah, let your hands go. Give, 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 give Plant something to think about. You, you've been thinking all night. Give him something to think about. Two hard jabs coming from Caleb Plant, though. That coming out like a, a stick. Feints. Hard from Plant. Another snapping jab. And then the, the, the feints with the, with the feet from Caleb Truex, but then nothing with, from the hands. Final 40 seconds of round number seven. Caleb Plant able to have a, an answer even after a few seconds of success from Truex. And even Truex said, hey, man, I got experience. So we talked about this a little bit ago. You know, you round seven, now you're going into eight. This is when you're, you're if anything, when your uh, experience should start to show up. Mental intensity, though, from Caleb Plant is a significant factor. Good hard jab just stops Truex in his tracks again. You know, when Truex tries to get close, Frequently, he just gets stood up. Hard jab from Caleb Plant all night long.
There's Caleb Truax, who is getting beaten down in this fight. But it's a, a steady diet of jabs from Caleb Plant that's keeping him off balance, Sean. Uh, and and, and uh, Twitter's trying to tell me what kind of jab he's throwing. I know exactly what kind of jab he's throwing. <laughs> it's, it's very hard to see a jab that comes from the waist. We call that an up jab. For the most part, he is using the up jab. It comes from the waist, and it's hard to time, and it's hard to see, it's, it, and it's, it's flicking. And that's what he's using most consistently. But the other jab that I really like is the one that turns over into more of an upper cut but it still has the length of a jab i like that one that he's using as well so he's he's got a lot of he's got a lot in his arsenal and there's the uh jabs landed totals according to copy box 32 to 13 right hand from truax as he jumps in and plant moves him back with the elbow it's been almost all caleb plant here round eight now in los angeles 168 pound championship ibf title on the line Watch on the left part of your screen here. We'll see Caleb Truax able to get in here and land that. Wow, that, that's right off the chin. Yeah. Sean, that's in a dangerous spot, even with a beard. And he took it. Yeah. He took it, but, but here's the thing. I know a lot of people, we talk about experience and what that really means. At this point in the fight, a guy in Caleb Plant, you got 20 fights, 21 fights now, and you, you haven't gone this, this, this distance and been this comfortable. Are you going to let off of the gas? Are you going to stay focused? Are you going to make the necessary moves that it takes to stay safe and stay efficient in the ring? Or are you going to pull back, make a mistake, and get caught with an overhand right the way that he did right there? So that's that's a part of the, the, the learning process for that Caleb Plants is about, about to go through. And, Sean, that's exactly what Truex was talking about, saying, hey, look, I, you know, he's faded at times. He wasn't saying, oh, this guy gets tired, he quits. He said, hey, at times, maybe I'll have an opportunity. Good hook there from Plant. Oh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, another right hand lands by Truex. There's another one. Able to get in close. And he, you know, to give him credit, too, Sean, because we've been talking up Plant quite a bit, Truax has been able to stay in there, take punishment, and he's still landing a shot now in that. Absolutely. And, I, and, and I've been waiting on this for him to hit a switch uh, practically since the fight began. But but we know that a fighter with experience, that, that switch may not be hit until the second half of the fight, if not later. And that's what we're seeing now is, is the overhand right that's landing. While you're watching things live on the right, watch on the left here. And there's an example of, of that hook. But then the right hand bouncing right off Plant's head. So Truax it's, able to have his moments. Look at that. It's a great fight and great timing. If you're Caleb Plant, get back solid, get back sharp, and, and be aware offensively and defensively. If you're Caleb Truax, understand that I found a home with this right hand. Let me try to line it up some more and try to knock out Caleb Plant. Plant nails him with a short right hand there. And then he has such varied shots. Sean, it's a, it's a sign of a guy who fights, not just boxes, right? Saying, hey, I don't care what I'm throwing. I want to land my hand on you. I want to, I want to, I want to bounce go. my hand off your head. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And, and I, now we can, I, if anything, point out a mistake, a flaw of Caleb Plant. That, that is, he is, he does carry his left hand low. Well, another right hand. right hand as Truax went in. Hard body shots land on Truax as he starts to cover up and goes to the bell. October 15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be tested. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Fire away on the resets. That timing down. Justin Gamber there in the corner. Sean Porter, what did uh, Gamber mean there, firing on the reset? Fire on the reset. So the reset basically is when both fighters are like, all right, we, we've had enough. Let's get back to the center of the ring or let's let's re let's re position ourselves and square up. That squaring up moment is the reset. And when he says fire on the reset, he means don't allow um, Caleb Truex to reset right there, fire right there when he's not ready. We're ready. We understand what's going on, but he's not. So fire right there. And you know what, Plant, uh, Sean, uh, he has a good firing mechanism, doesn't he? I mean, that yeah. punch just comes off, firing off fast. Well, and that's why, as as his trainer, you can say, hey, fire on the reset, because he understands that he's got the ability to do it. Truex is dangerous, though. No overhand yeah. right. O overhand right coming no overhand in. right. He's landed a few of those shots, so Plant cannot get sloppy. Good jab up the middle from Plant as well. 
But uh, Truax is game, very let's, game. Well, let's, let's see if Caleb Truax feel, or excuse me, Plant feels challenged by those overhand rights and starts stepping back towards Truax. You know, I, I remember uh, covering a bunch of fights where Buddy McGirt was the trainer, and he said that's the one thing he tries to teach his fighters is there's time. Right, like when you're a young fighter, and Buddy McGirt's a Hall of Famer, former welterweight champion. He said, "There's the, you think, oh, I've got to get this guy, i got to establish something. But, Sean, I guess you learn as you get older. 12 rounds, 10 rounds, there's time. Yeah. Plenty of time. Yeah. It's one thing I tell myself now, I, I assure you, I didn't tell myself when I was 20 and 0, and that's when, when one round at a time. Take it one round at a time. And understanding that there's always time for you to do what you need to do, implement your game plan to win the fight. It's not, it's not just a matter of the first half of the fight or even the second half of the fight. It's, it, all of it comes together. There's that hybrid hook uppercut from Plant right there that lands on Truax. Another good shot. Plant now trying to fire off hard shots and make a statement. Good counter right by Plant, but Truax able to throw his right hand as well. Plant looking to dig in, get a little more leverage now. I, I, I would say right now, go back to the body. I, I like what this corner said. Fire on the resets. There's plenty of those through, throughout the course of this fight. You're still going to be able to land the jab at will because that's a punch that Caleb Truex just cannot defend. But go back to the body and break him down. I think he's taken enough off, or excuse me, broken him down enough that the overhand rights aren't effective, but you don't want to continue to get hit with something like that. He may, he, Caleb Truex may very well get confident and throw, throw a hellacious one and, and knock out Caleb, Caleb Plant. It's possible. Go back to the body if you're Caleb Plant. If you're Caleb Truex, keep throwing that overhand right. You can see the face of Caleb Truex here, just all marked up, busted up, flattened through almost nine full rounds now. But he has kept going forward, trying to get through the fire, and he's been able to land the occasional right hand. That's... There it is, another right hand by Truax, trying to get a little closer. You know, it is, it's your, you have to have the, uh, the landing device, right? You've got to get close enough to be able to fire that shot and land it, and Truex was able to get his feet in position to throw and land. Final seconds, and that is nine rounds. Take a look at some of the kids that we've been featuring. Joey Spencer with an early knockout tonight. He is only 20 years of age. You know, Nicky's 18. Good young fighter, and Jesus Ramos also. Sean Porter, very impressive. 13 and 0, 12 knockouts. It's amazing what these guys have done at 18, 19, and 20 years of age. I laughed because you called them kids, but you see their age, and you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> I've been following this kid for a little while now. All of those, all three of those guys right there, they're going to be champions someday. Round 10 scheduled for 12. Again, Caleb Plant, Caleb Truex, Brian Kenny, and Sean Porter with Marcos Viegas and this Heidi Andral here at the Shrine Expo Hall in Los Angeles. And now we'll get to see what Caleb Plant wants to do in the final three rounds of this fight. He's taking his time. He has outlanded Caleb Truex by a wide margin. Let's see how much he wants to up the ante and press the action. Good hard hook. I do, see, Plant. I do see a different type of intensity from Caleb Truex. More movement and, and more. He's, he's, he's more vibrant now. He threw a good hook to the body there, but I tell you what, Plant has already landed like four or five good hard shots. Yeah. And he is he's digging in too, Sean, isn't he? Yeah, no, I don't, you know, I wouldn't say he's digging in, not yet, but I expect him to. I expect Caleb Plant to start to really sit down and dig into those shots. I don't think so. All right, you're no, there. I'm looking at him here. He's like, I saw, he's no, I, 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 those were good punches Whoa. that he landed. Oh. They, they were. Th those hard were. right hand, hard right hand by Truex there. Plant able to roll with that and get out. And there's a good strafing right hand from Plant. There you go. That, that's the dig right there. That's the dig. And so right around that time, the plant having done all that work, as uh, Sean, you mentioned, investing throughout the fight in the body work and laying the wood to Truax, and maybe time now to break his man down and get him out. He has talked about, I'm not just bringing up the knockout out of nowhere, he has said, I want to stop this guy. He's got to find that moment now, Caleb Plant, where he's going to really sit down, like you said, and dig in. Uh, the, he, there's no more up high on the toes, throwing the fast shots and the, and the quick shots. Now it's time to sit down like he's like he's doing right here and dig into the body and into the head. That's what he did there with the uppercut to the body, then came up with a hook. Good, wicked hook from Caleb Plant in this round. And he's got he's got to get that left hand up. You know, I, I call it forward thinking. Think beyond this fight. What? What do I, what am I getting hit with and what can I not afford to get hit with? 
later on down the road in my, in my career, my next fight or whatever the case may be, that left hand has got to come up if you're Caleb Plant and protect it. The no, overhand no, no, right no, is just back. found a home for Caleb Truex. It's not good. Yeah, Canelo Alvarez was able to rupture the bicep of Callum Smith, pounding him on the arm. Sean, you know, yeah, just, wow! It's funny you say that because him. it's funny you said it because I was just thinking to myself, you know, Caleb Truex looks like he still got a lot in the tank, and I do think that Caleb Plant has done a good job of going to the body. But what else could he have done? And things like that, right there, get a little closer to him and bang on the arms a little bit, bang on the shoulders a little bit. It's not illegal and and, and and something that needs to be done break a guy down you have to be very strong to be able to do that final seconds round number 10 caleb truax backing up the champ gets him on the ropes truax dug in his own body shot there final two rounds here caleb plant the world champion ibf super middleweight champion third title defense he is 20-0 and now suddenly, uh, I don't know, finding the immovable object, Sean, and looks like he was breaking down Caleb Truax, but he has done most everything he can to him, and Truax, there he is, still standing. I don't, I, K, KB, I, I, I don't feel like I'm always right, but I did say that the number one thing you have to be concerned with when it pertains to Caleb Truax is his determination. Mm. That's always going to be the last thing to go with him, and his determination has gotten him to this point. 37-year-old veteran. Again, you see the punches landed at 143 to 33. Look, not all landed punches are equal, but uh, Plant is able to outland in terms of jabs, 49 to 14. Power punches, 95 to 19. And you see there in punches thrown, out throwing Truax, 458 to 309. Everything in favor, basically, to what we're watching. And you hope that the data reflects what you're watching, and it does indeed, that Plant has been able to sit on his punches and land hard shots on Truax as well. The occasional good right hand has come from Caleb Truax. Let's check in with Marcos Villegas and see if Truax has done enough to even take a round in this fight. Marcos, what do you have? So far, Brian, uh, through uh, 10 rounds, I have it all Caleb Plant, man. It, it's been a blowout on his end. You know, I, I can't find a reason to give Truax a round, and the reason is he's just not landing enough. He'll land one, and Caleb will land three. And uh, Caleb's been so effective uh, with that jab and just bearing his attack as well. Like, I love what I'm seeing from him so far in this fight. Marcos, thank you very much. Yeah, I agree. Again, even with Truex having his moments, I don't know, Sean Porter, if he's put anything together. Enough to win any one single round. Not for me. There was one round where he landed uh, quite a few, I think, three overhand rights through the course of the round, but it wasn't enough. Again, your three to Caleb Plant's 18. It just, you know, you do the math and, you know, what that equals. Uh, however, I can't see that. Caleb Truex, he wants to land that overhand right. He's trying to throw more jabs to basically to get Caleb Plant to look for it, and he's leaning. If you see him, he's leaning over to his right, and that's the way he's able, that's how he's able to set up that overhand right. Caleb Plant, a three-punch combination, and his work rate for his jab has been outstanding in this round. One minute left to go in round number 11. There it is again, beautiful jab, snapping the head back of Caleb Truax. Blood flowing from Truax again. You know, it just disrupts your rhythm, Sean. Maybe you can speak to that. When the jab is consistently stopping you, and in this case, snapping your head back, it's hard to mount any type of attack. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just talked about Caleb Truex leaning over to his right and wanting to throw a jab simply to over to land overhand right. But once you, you, you right there, but there, no jab came right there. When, when the jabs come, it's like it's almost impossible for him to line that punch up. But when he when he catches Caleb Plant in the moment where he's not throwing, he's able to land overhand right. Plant able to land a right hand, and before that, after he got he got caught with a shot, but then landed a hard uppercut, so he's able to land while fire is coming his way. Yeah, I mean, we we train the music, and the reason for that is rhythm. You know, there's a rhythm to the fight. There's a rhythm to our to to why we do what we do. Good firefight there in the final seconds. Well, I tell you what, Sean Porter, we might see something interesting here because go for broke, I understand, on one side for Truax. On the other side, a melee on the ropes. Okay, let's get it on. <laughs> round 12, final round here for the super middleweight title. And you know that Truax knows he needs a knockout, but Caleb Plant's corner, they want that stoppage. This is what we this is what we do. You know, this is what we prepare for. If the, if the game plan was to break him down and knock him out, it's the 12th round, he's... he's 
further along than you expected. So what? Get the knockout, you know? So I like what I heard from both corners. Yeah, Truex with great spirit there, trying to move in. You can see, trying to get close <laughs> enough to land, kind of like Rocky Marciano, right? Trying to land the Susie Q, trying to get that right hand close enough that he can throw that and detonate on Plant's head. Plant not looking to allow that. Keeps busy with the jab, right hand and a jab, drives Truax back. Yeah, you got a guy uh, countering you with the overhand right, keep him backing up, and he'll never have a chance to even try to set up overhand right. So, Caleb Plant, if anything, his offense is now his defense and, and preventing uh, Caleb Truax from landing overhand right. Again, Plant is a strong guy at 168. You can see, and that's why I mentioned he's a very different fighter than, say, Callum Smith, in that he is big at this weight. Good hard shot. You can see the, the width of his shoulders, how he's able to plant and dig and throw these hard shots. He's a strong man. You can't just drive him back. Yeah, everybody talks about David Benavidez as being a, a big 168 pounder. No, no, no mistake that he is. But Caleb Plant is also a big 168 pounder. The frame is different, but he is he's big and he's getting stronger at the weight, which is great for, uh, for Caleb Plant and his team. There you go. Final half of this round, final round. Caleb Truex will have to do more, trying to get closer. Uh, Caleb Plant has been able to drive him back all night with that jab and is able to keep him at bay so far in this round. Now Plant goes to work. He landed that hook and a right hand. Is, is the dig? Is this the dig? Fast with the hands, but not quite the melee. That was sweet. That was sweet. You like the sweet hands? <laughs> that was sweet. Truax still trying, throws that right hand. Glancing shot off the head of Plan. He has likely not won a single round. He will need the knockout for a win. Plant well aware of that. Final 30 seconds of the fight. Here's the thing, here's the learning lesson. You, you get to this point in the fight, you control the, the, everything about the fight, you won every round, and then you're able to go back and look at this fight and say, hey, I had more in me. I could have gotten the knockout and I didn't go for it. And you make adjustments based on the moments in the fight where you could have done more, and I expect Caleb Plant to do that moving forward. Final 10 seconds. Hook drives Truax back. Commanding performance by Caleb Plant. 12 hard rounds, Caleb Plant going over to Caleb Truax, paying his respects uh, to the referee, Jerry Cantu as well. Good hard performance for Caleb Plant. Let's go back through it. Caleb Plant able to establish himself, Sean Porter, early in this fight. Look at these hard shots landed by the champ. It, 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 the left hand uh, works. <laughs> Jabs, hooks. Uh, I like the, I, somebody finally, I asked Jordan, what the name of that punch is. It's actually called a shovel jab, and that's that more of that uppercut type of jab that we were seeing. Everything works for Caleb Plant when he's using it. Uh, right there we saw a triple jab even. And uh, like I said, the, the left hand is not nonstop and is very accurate and on point. And uh, ter uh, not terrible defense from Caleb Trax, but it just was hard for him to catch the timing of Caleb Plant. Yeah, outclassed. Look at the punches landed, 179 to 47. And then power punches even, 124 to 29. Uh, power punches being thrown by Plant, out throwing on Caleb Truax as well. And the jabs even. I, I, Sean Porter, I thought I thought Caleb Plant's jab seemed to be the best part of his game tonight. It, it's, it's always going to be the best part of his game until he retires. He's got a great jab, and he uses it often. Let's get the decision. We go to the ring, and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, the judges are in complete agreement. We have a unanimous decision. All three judges scored about 120 to 108 in favor of the winner and still champion, Sweet Hands, Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant goes to 21 and 15. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant this fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Spot Sports app and watch on any screen you want.
Let's go to the tail of the tape as we get ready for our next heavyweight bout. Robert Helenius is a large Finn. Yes, he's from the Island Islands of Finland, 6'7", 246. I'm going to mark him up from 6'6 six, six and a half. Uh, by the way, he's eight pounds heavier than he was for the first matchup with Kovnatsky. He is now 37 years old. Kovnatsky is 32. He is 6'3", 258. That is seven pounds lighter than the first fight with Helenius, which is the only loss of his career. By the way, Kovnatsky was 266 against Chris Ariola. He's not the body beautiful, but he will throw. Main event, of course, is the heavyweight championship of the world, but this should be an outstanding rematch. Let's go to the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Well, fans from the T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas, Nevada, we present our next heavyweight attraction presented by Bob Arum's Top Rank Incorporated, Frank Warren on behalf of Queensberry Promotions, Bomb Squad Promotions, and GGB Promotions. This is a premier boxing champions presentation, and it is sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook. Introducing our three judges scoring from ringside, we have Max DeLuca, Patricia Morse Jarman, and Don Trella. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing in a heavyweight rematch special attraction. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with red trim. Raised in Brooklyn, fighting out of Long Island, New York, by way of Womja, Poland. He weighed in at 258 pounds with a record of 20 wins, one defeat. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the exciting world rank contender, introducing Adam Babyface Kovnatsky. And his opponent across the ring, he is fighting out of the red corner in this 12 round attraction. Wearing white trunks with black trim, hailing from Marie Hamann Island Islands in Finland. He weighed in at 246 pounds. His record stands at 30 wins, three losses with 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the battle-proven world rank contender known as the Nordic Nightmare. Introducing Robert Hellenius. And referee in charge, now to give instructions, Celestino Ruiz. Okay, you're good here. We're good here. Gentlemen, I gave you guys your instruction in the dressing room. I expect a clean, fair fight, start to finish. Protect yourself at all times, touch up, good luck. Fellas, I took the sport coat off for this, uh -oh. the suit coat, <laughs> because get ready, Adam Kovnatsky, again, was being mentioned as an opponent for the top heavyweights. He wasn't three fights away, he was one fight away. All that derailed by the Nordic Nightmare. So yes, he's had Nordic Nightmares looking just like that the past year and a half. So much on the line. Helenius, Andre, limited, but will hit you like a truck. Yeah, the challenge for him tonight is to show that the first fight wasn't a fluke and that he could repeat and do it again. Kovnatsky throws more punches than any other heavyweight in the world. He throws, he lands, he averages 83 punches per round. Lennox Lewis, he knows though, it's not just throwing, you have to watch what's coming back the other side. Oh, absolutely. Uh, his defense in the last fight was Whoa, terrible. Big uppercut by Helenius already. He's hurt already. And Kovnatsky, fella. yeah, no question. He's buzzed. Still. And, and, and by the way, Kovnatsky was leading in that fight. He had outlanded Helenius 78 to 35 through three rounds. So it's not like Stop. he was getting Stop beaten back. from pillar to post in that fight. He just got knocked out in the fourth round. But here, he gets hurt right away. Yeah, but the problem is now Helenius has more confidence. He knows he can do it, so he believes. He didn't have this belief going into the first fight. I'm not saying he wasn't confident, but he didn't know if he could do it. He knows that he can knock him out, so it's good. It, you know, his mentality is a lot different going into the second fight. Plus, he's been training with uh, Deontay, so that's got to give him a lot of a lot of spirit, knowing that he's, you know, boxing against one of the best fighters in the world. Look, Helenius was no stiff. He had, earlier in his career, he had wins over Sam Peter, Sergei Lajovic, Derek Chisora in three Three state bouts. Now, a lot of those guys were, you know, over the hill at the time, but that's still three straight. Sam Peter, Lajovic, Chisora. Chisora's still fighting. Delanius is doing the right thing. He didn't go crazy when he hurt Kovnatsky. He stayed behind the jab. He knows he's got 12 rounds. No rush. He's doing the right thing. Kovnatsky, when he comes in, he's, he, he can't receive any shots. He's got to move that head or block the punches. 
I mentioned that Kovnatsky throws 83 punches per round. That is double the heavyweight average. His work rate, by the way, uh, up until recently, was the third best in the entire sport. He was trailing only Roman Gonzalez, Chocolatito, and Leo Santa Cruz. Think about that. But it's a little tough now, Brian, because he's been hurt and he's been oh, stopped. Oh, so oh, he doesn't have that same, you know, desire to open up because he can get caught. And then he got caught early. He in got this, caught this right away. Already, no, so you're right. He's not letting no shots go like we normally see. And you're right. Helenius already looks more confident. Good body shot there by Kovnatsky. Kovnatsky has to beat stop, stop the back, confidence back. out of Helenius. He's not going to come easy. And he's got to put more pressure on him as well, push him up against the ropes, because what he what he does is if he boxes this from a long range, uh, Alanius has the leverage of power that can hurt Kov Kovnaski. And, and Lennox, just as you say that, you see the right hand. Talk about leverage. Oh, there he's it is. Off. There's a, this is what I'm trying to is say. Rocked again. He is landing, he is fully planted with those right hands. Kovnaski in bad trouble already on the ropes. Helenius hits like a ton. There is a lot of time left, 15 seconds. Hard body shot by Kovnatsky. He's got to get out of there. Final 10 seconds. Helenius is a very good finisher. He finished off Kovnatsky with style last time out. A little one-two from Helenius, but Kovnatsky survives. That, however, not what was expected in the first round. It was all Helenius. Where's the bucket? A whole different fighter, and Andre, to your point, a very confident fighter. To your point, Lennox, hitting with leverage. Yes. That was a smooth one-two right there from Helenius. He didn't load up. Helenius. He just, he hurt him, and then he followed up and really battered Kovnatsky to, until that bell rang. Round number two, the first round, 29 to 11. Punches stop, stop, landed stop. in favor of Robert Helenius. Again, that was not happening in that first fight. It was Kovnatsky through the first three, outlanding Helenius, and then he got caught in the fourth round. But fellas, here's the problem. Kovnatsky knows one style, press forward and punch. But when you're running into shots and you're getting hurt, what do you do? He doesn't have a plan B, so he's in a tough spot right now. You know what, Andre, too, to what you said, I don't see the same spirit in Kovnatsky right now, not the same fighting aura. That was partially broken in their last fight, and then he got whatever was left was broken again in these first couple rounds. He was reminded of that yep. last fight immediately, yep. and that was the right thing for Melanius. Let me tell you, both eyes are swollen up by Kovnatsky, and this is bad right now, so he's got to make a move right now. He can't allow this fight to go any further into the round. Kovnatsky trying there with the body shots, but you're right, his eyes closing up already. We're, we're in the second round. And this is Kovnatsky, the same man that like broke CompuBox records for most punches thrown and landed against Chris Ariola. So he's usually very sturdy, throws his hands, and there he goes, gets to work. Oh. Good hook there by Kovnatsky. Helenius looks slightly hurt. Stop. Stop back. Stop back. Fascinating fight. Kovnatsky showing some spunk. I like the response from Kovnatsky. Instead of just drifting off and accepting what Helenius was doing to him, he's trying to summon up the strength to get into a rhythm and get into a groove. Uh, Tyson Fury cannot afford to get excited watching this fight. <laughs> he's just going to chill and enjoy. But if he sees a quick knockout, Lennox, it might be time to get on your feet, right? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it depends on what he's excited about. I don't think this fight's going to excite him. I think he's just, you know, looking at Helenius because he's been in camp with him, so wondering how he's doing. Yeah, Kovnatsky moves forward, but you can see a mouse under both eyes. Oh, black and blue already, and that left eye puffing up and nearly closed already. Helenius needs to get back in control of this fight. He doesn't want a fighter like Kovnatsky to get warmed up and to get confident. He needs to keep the pressure on Kovnatsky doing what he did in that first round. Helenius, again, brought in as an opponent. He's 36 years old. Kovnatsky was the guy on the rise. But the way Helenius finished that fight, once he knocked Kovnatsky down, the first knockdown was ruled a slip, and it was not. Knocked him down again, but he chased him pillar to post, Andre, to finish off Kovnatsky. A hellacious finisher. That's what you got to do. If your, your opponent is hurt, you go in for the finish, and that's what Helenius did. Nice one-two there by Helenius. Again, you see a wide discrepancy in the punches landed already. But Kovnatsky showing a little more fight, having a little more success in this round. But that left eye is a problem and is going to continue to be a problem. And Elenius knows that too because he's, you know, Kovnatsky's blinking. And if I see a guy blinking in front of me, I'll be aiming for that eye. Yeah, you, wonder, you wonder how much he's going to be able to see. Ah! Yeah, that eye's closed. 
Heidi Andrell caught up with the former champion, Deontay Wilder. Let's listen in. The T-Mobile Arena, Deontay, the mantra has been the reinvention, the reintroduction of Deontay Wilder. What does that mean when you step into the ring tonight? It means everything. It means uh, what all I've been training for, everything I've been preparing for for the last 20 months, the sacrifice, the dedication, the heartaches and pain. Somebody got to pay for this. It wasn't free. In terms of the first fight to the second fight, the first rounds were drastically different. What is particularly key for you in that first round? This first round, every, um, throughout not only just this first round, but throughout the, the remaining of the fight, the key to this is just staying calm, weather in the storm. Like I said before, once when I'm calm, I'm able to make better decision making. When I'm not calm, my mind is cloudy. So I'm looking to keep a, 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 a calmness about myself so my mind is, is not cloudy and I can make the best decision possible. We're ready for anything that he brings to us. Very good. The bronze bomber looking to go for gold. Guys, we'll send it back to you. Heidi, thank you so much. He says somebody's got to pay. Somebody's got to pay for that suit. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that suit. Looking good, coming in, and seemed calm. Right, yeah. Deontay? That, yeah. that looked like a good state of mind, don't you think? Let me tell you, being calm is half of the battle. Mm -hmm. Because if you're nervous, you, you know, you're taking away. That's nervous energy you're using up. Kovnatsky trying to move his head, moving in on Robert Helenius. Helenius rocked and rolled Kovnatsky in that opening round. He's closed one eye, now working on the other. There's a hard right hand. When Helenius can step back and throw that right hand, straight Andre or uppercut, wow, that hurts. Man, that was five clean shots from Helenius. A one-two, a right hand, and then a right upper. And Kovnatsky took it well, but he can't keep taking those kind of shots. Helenius does look like a whole new fighter. And there's Deontay Wilder again looking to reclaim his heavyweight championship, looking sharp coming in, saying all the right things. We'll see if he was able to do all the right things in the gym where it matters, and we'll be closely watching his work rate early on. Throwing jabs, Tyson Fury's gonna make you miss, but you continue, you have to continue to work. And Dirk Kovnowski, keep those hands high, protect that eye, and try to stay close to Helanius where he doesn't really like to work. He'll throw some punches inside, but that's not really where he wants to be. That's where Kovnowski wants to be. He can protect the eye, preserve the body a little bit, and also get off his own shots. He needs that, to keep pressing forward. You're right, because he has to he has to stay close because at a distance is at a disadvantage. And plus, like I said, Helanius can throw his left and his right from a distance, and he loves throwing that. And and he you know, every once in a while he throws an uppercut where Konofsky, uh, you know, keeps his head down and gets cut. You're right, Lennox, when he's able to get in the pocket, and that is pretty far away for a normal human, but if Helenius can stand back, plant, and throw from a distance, no punch, no you, punch, you can back, feel the thudding back. power of Helenius. 79 inch reach. And that's where he Hellenius. feels, that's, mm. Hellenius feels comfortable from the outside. He doesn't want to be pressured against the ropes. Look at this, southpaw briefly, now moves back to orthodox. By the way, Kovnatsky's wife, Justina, is due to give birth any day. The due date for the baby is October 12th. But uh, there are many speculating here in Las Vegas, hey, your mind's got to be on other things. Is it on the fight? Uh, and look, we've all been through. We all have children. It is something you've, that is on your mind. There's right, no but question. That, but that's what makes fighters so special is their resilience. They can compartmentalize some of the most craziest things in their personal life and even beautiful things like having a baby to get the job done. So I don't think that's going to be a distraction. If anything, it's going to be motivation. Well, maybe inspirational here because he's going to have to fight back from a verse and he's hurt again, wobbling. His stop, feet stop, are wobbled. Stop, 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 he cannot stop, stop. see that eye, but now stop, Helenius stop. looks hurt. Did he take a shot low? I guess so. Kovnatsky oh, was wobbled. Right, bro. Hey, hey, hey. And now Helenius relax. is complaining. Hey, I got this. You got it? Just relax, relax, relax. You hear Celestino Ruiz. Let's hear what he says to Kovnatsky. Let me give you a hard warning. You got to pick them punches up, all right? No, no. Pick them up, okay? Here it is again. All right, low shot. Uh, you that okay? hurt Helenius, clearly. He's not you a okay? guy that, you know, so is looking to be hurt. It's not the first you one. You won five one. minutes? You got up the to five minutes. The first one was incidental. The second one was intentional. Wait right there. Pick him up. Ruiz Time not in. taking a point Time. away. Just giving a, uh, a stern warning. Obviously, if there's another one, then that the idea is at that point you take a point away. Let's go back earlier in the round. Again, these guys landing with thudding force, especially Helenius. And, and here you see Helenius coming in with a straight right as Kovnowski's coming in and getting catch and getting caught with an uppercut as well.
And here you see Alenius concerned about his eye a little bit, and he gets caught. This is where you got, and he's wobbled a little bit oh. after this left hand. You know, you got to keep your hands up if you're coming in. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Yeah, I think that low blow was to buy some time. You know, Kovnowski was hurt, he was buzzed, and he said, I need some time to recover. Let me get this warning and see if I can recover and hopefully turn this thing around. Uh, Kovnowski has landed fewer punches in each round, 11, 9, and then 8. He's been hurt a number of times. That eye, left eye, is closing. Landed that low shot, two low shots on Helenius. And Helenius just like hits you like a telephone pole from a distance. It's just hard. It's not the velocity on it. It's just all that weight and distance. Yes, and, and Kovnatsky, it's double impact because he Stop, comes up, in up, and Helenius lands, and it's just double impact because Kovnatsky comes in so hard and without any defense, so everything lands flush right on the chin. Plus, he's making it a harder punch. He's receiving a harder Holenius. punch because Stop, he's, Stop, he's coming back. in. That's he's coming in. Now and the punch is coming towards him. They crash together, more power. That's what I'm saying. And I tell you about Kovnatsky, stop, by stop the way, back, just for, in terms of work rate, again, he averages 83 punches around. He's about 50 punches around in this fight. Oh, completely different. Obviously, Styles make fights. That right hand landed on the chin of Helenius. Just not a lot on it, though. Tries with the jab there. Yeah, Kovnatsky is normally nonstop action. He was against Chris stop, Ariola. Stop again, I mentioned they broke heavyweight records in that fight. The punches landed, punches thrown. Uh, but a vastly different Kovnatsky here tonight. He's eating one jab after another. The best, the best thing you can do after you stop a fighter is to rem is to hurt them early and to remind them of all the bad things that happened and let them know that that was not a fluke, that was real. And that's what Helenius has done. And that's why Kovnatsky, even though he'll have moments where he opens up, he just can't get started. You know, Lennox, one thing you said in that first fight, I uh, watched it back this week, you said, hey, as a heavyweight, if you just perfect a few punches, you can be pretty good. And that's what Helenius has done. Oh, yeah, he's perfected he's perfected the, uh, the, the jab and the left-right. Those are his sweet punches. And I like his uppercut, too. The right hand there. Yeah, he's not Riddick Bow, right? It's like you know, it's who you beat in the Olympics. He doesn't have this whole arsenal and repertoire, but what he throws is real. Another right hand lands from Helenius. Helenius can't forget the body. He landed a few body shots early on. There you go. Oh. That's the shot right there. Got a really slow Kovnatsky down. That hurt just to watch. Thudding not, right hand to the body. Not only slow him down, that will bring, bring Kovnatsky's hands down so he can get a better punch at his face. Kovnatsky does just doesn't look good. I mean, beaten down already. Look, the eye obviously changes the equation, but he's getting hit with clean shots from a very big man. Yeah, the referee has to keep a good eye on Kovnatsky. I'm not saying he should stop it now, but he's got to watch him because he's a tough guy. He's taking a lot of punishment early, and there's a long way to go. Plus, he's showing that his eye is affecting him by blinking in front of Helenius, and that that just re makes Helenius uh, uh, throw more punches because he realizes the punches are affecting him and he's bothered by them. Final seconds here, round four. Adam Kovnatsky, Robert Helenius. We've got another heavyweight bout coming up next. Young heavyweights, head to head, both undefeated. Efe Ajagba and Frank Sanchez all leading up. Wild shots there, but the main event is the heavyweight championship of the world, and both men are here. Tyson Fury, the heavyweight champ, still undefeated. All 277 plus pounds laying out. Nice little pillow there. He's relaxed. And Deontay Wilder still suited up and looking swank. Back to this one. Helenius with the power every time Kovnatsky tries to come in. Yeah, Helenius just has to put it out there. He doesn't even have to throw it hard because Kovnatsky comes in so, so hard and, he, and he's reckless with his defense that Helenius just lands flush shots. And again, the impact is doubled because Kovnatsky just comes in the way that he does, straight ahead, no special effects. He did, his chin is on a platter, and Helenius just, it just keeps it simple and basic. You know, if you haven't seen Adam Kovnatsky before, you might think, oh, come on, the guy's not in shape. He's not. What it, 
at the normal Adam Kovnatsky is soft-spoken, mild. He's okay, never had the most impressive physique, but he can box yes. and he can fight. Yes, yes, he can. Andre, if you've seen somebody blinking in front of you, finding it difficult to, to see no, out of your no. eye, what would you do? I'm going to go overtime. I'm going to try to target that eye as much as I can with the jab and the right hand ASAP. Round five, Brian Kenny here ringside with Lennox Lewis, former heavyweight champion of the world. Andre Ward, former super middleweight and light heavyweight champion of the world. Gold medal table here, except for me. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys have, I'll take your bronze. Lennox, you got, a, you got one. You got gold medal in the broadcast. Thank you, thank you, Andre. What the fuck? Get over there. Oh, wow. Get over there. Come here. One point, low blow. One point, now low Ruiz blow. Now Ruiz takes one that point. One point, low blow. You got to stop it. This, stop it. Helenius was up. irate. Keep and Ruiz up, okay? said before, I've Time got in. this. I'll handle it. And he just did. Helenius is upset. And you can understand. Well, it's a fight. So if Helenius is mad, handle your business, let your hands go, and, and get this fight over. Watch it again. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's ridiculous how yeah. that is. What, what's that? Yeah, that's that? him. Stop, stop, that seemed stop. like, let me give you a shot while the ref yeah. can't see, uh, but the ref did see. Uh, that's some nonsense. I I, I got, oh, good, good hard right hand by Helenius on the way in. Helenius is just hurting Kovnatsky, and Kovnatsky, uh, I guess, is just desperate. We haven't seen him fight dirty before. Uh, he usually doesn't do that, but he's a desperate man tonight. Brian, he's looking for a way out, and Helenius needs to help him on the way out. The door. Oh, good hard uppercut. Helenius in terrific shape. Came in lighter here tonight. We don't even have to hear from Larry Hazard. Larry goes all four, obviously, for Helenius. 40 to 36, as Helenius looks like he is just moments away from stopping this fight and stopping Kovnatsky. I'm in the corner of Helenius. I say, son, let your hands go. Bite down on your mouth guard. He's going to try to throw one desperate shot, so be aware of that. But get this fight over with, and let's go home. By the way, Kovnatsky has never had a point deducted from him. Again, he's been a very clean fighter, but he's in bad shape here. And I guess he's just trying to do something. It's unfortunate, uh, but he's not. And that's very uncharacteristic of Kovnatsky. Yeah, Kovnatsky cannot be from a distance right now because he's going to be punch shotted. Uh, uh, Alanius can just line him up and throw that left, right, left, right, like he's doing because he knows Kovnatsky's having eye trouble right now. Good uppercut again. Helenius is making that uppercut much more of a weapon. The straight right hand has always been there. And there's one. That rocks Kovnatsky. He looks for the uppercut again. And he's got Kovnatsky moving back. And he's hurt. Ruiz taking a closer look. 30 seconds to go in the fifth round. Kovnatsky tries to fire back, but he is being wounded. Ref's got to take a close look. He can't be a spectator when, this, when this, these punches start flying. He's got to take a close look. It's a big man hitting him. Melania's 6'7", 246. By the way, eight pounds lighter than the first fight. He's in tremendous shape. You can tell. And look at the punches, just nice and fluid. Letting the big wood fly. Looking for that one shot now to put him out. Yeah, the referee's looking, looking closely at Kovnaski. <laughs> you know, you do have to wonder. To your point, Andre Ward, you have to wonder. All right. How will the next few rounds go to, for Kovnatsky? No, is it going to gonna get better? No, it doesn't look ugly. It does it, not it's look not like gonna, it's uglier. Not, it's not going to get any better. Uh, and I guess not. Celestino Ruiz collecting the scorecards now. So look, they're going to let this go. But again, Andre, look, this was controversial in Wilder. Are they going to stop this? This was con this was this happened in Wilder Fury two. Where it was controversial with Mark Freeland throwing in the towel. Both of you thought that should be stopped. And you get that feeling here. Will it get better for Kovnatsky? No, it won't. I don't it, think so. It yeah. won't. And I think the referee knows that as well. So he's going to pay close attention to this. And I think, you know, when it comes to Elenius, this is where you step it up. Knowing that this is, you know, that Kovnatsky has no other choice but to, you know, go mad. Adam Kovnatsky in desperate territory. Down on the cards, being outlanded. You see right there, 113 to 46. It's not close. And Helenius isn't out there just snapping out a light jab. He hits you with hard, thudding shots. Kovnowski's not some devastating one-punch knockout artist. He's a volume guy, so you got to keep that in mind as well. That's a good point. And the eye, all of it goes into the equation. But again, the corner is the first line of defense, then the referee, the doctor as well, if they're looking closely. But this is a high-level heavyweight fight. Again, this is not a four-rounder, a six-rounder, not a pro debut. If it was a different fight, they'd stop it. Uh, but that's not where we're at. We're, this is the world-class, uh, if it's not top 10, top 15 level. I think one more big yeah. shot and onslaught from Helenius, and this fight may, may be stopped because the referee's taking a very close look at Kovnatsky. Kovnatsky hasn't really thrown any punches. 
tries there, but it's it's not a lot on them. He's discouraged. Yeah. He's busted up, and he's fatigued. Uh, at the same time, yeah. And Andre, you're right. And Hellenius is revitalized. He's re uh, that that win just made him a very different guy. Digs in with a body shot. That body shot didn't help either. Again, Hellenius came in and he thought he had a great camp last time out. No one really believed him that he could pull off the upset. He, along with Johan Lindstrom, his trainer, they, they were telling us in Brooklyn, no, we know you're going to see something special, and they were right. This Hellenius is even better. He's confident. Yep. He's more confident this time around than he was the first time around. Well, after you beat a guy, you got to be confident. You got to come back in this, in this fight and say, hey, I beat him the first time. I can do it again. Didn't just beat him. He knocked him out. Yeah, but he, he came out with force. I agree with you. He, the way he came out to say, by the way, we're just continuing that beatdown. You know, those first three rounds, which were all Kovnatsky, or mostly Kovnatsky, that's not what we've had here. Good body shots by Hellenius again. And Hellenius is just giving Kovnatsky a slow beating right now. I'm sure if the ref doesn't see nothing from Kovnatsky, he's going to stop it. Well, he hasn't seen anything, and I'm wondering, what is it going to take for this fight to be stopped? I mean, every time... Hellenius looks like he's going to stop him. Kovnatsky throws a shot, and it makes the referee kind of back up a little bit, yeah. which is, you know, it's a tough spot to be in if you're a referee. That's it, man. You're yeah. Oh, that's it. it. I think that's what Celestino Ruiz is saying. No, 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 he is calling it off. It's over. Now, he may have DQ'd him. I didn't know if he was stopping it to stop it as a TKO, or yes, if it DQ. was a DQ, a disqualification. Bernardo, what are you hearing? Celestino Ruiz told him, that's it, I'm stopping it at a disqualification. Then he went over to the judge and said, disqualification after that low blow. But it was supposed to be stopped regardless. All right, I, I didn't even see that low shot. Did he hit him low again on the way in? Well, think of it like this. Would you rather be stopped or would you rather be dis... Yeah, I don't know what's better or worse, but either way, the Nordic Nightmare is dancing. All right, there it is. Ruiz saw it. And look, he gave him a warning. He took a point away. Third time around, he says that's it. Hellenius looks to him, and I guess that was it. Sometimes you can't tell intent, but the type of shots that Kovnatsky have, has been landing low, it's it's clear to see that these are intentional low blows. He's looking for a way out. Way out. He doesn't he doesn't want to go out on his back. He doesn't want to be stopped. So he'd rather get this problem. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that totally. Yeah, not a decent job by Celestino Ruiz. That's a tough spot. But at a certain point, and look at there, Johan Lindstrom. Come on, take off that mask. Let him take off the mask. Look, that's tremendous because there's a guy, 37 years old, Lennox, and he has got a whole new career now. Absolutely. I mean, he did a good job. Um, he was throwing great punches, great jabs, and, you know, great body punches as well. Again, he stunned the world last time out, stunned Brooklyn, certainly. This time around, confidence, aura, spirit, and Uppercuts. Andre, yeah, look, his ability. Like, he showed a different repertoire. It looked yeah. different. It looked harder. He showed the, the repertoire was body punches, uppercuts, jabs, and overhand rights. And just an awful night for Kovnatsky right there. Again, driven to desperation. Hitting Hellenius low. His career derailed by Hellenius last time out. Then we went into the shutdown, so we had to wait an awfully long time. Th by the way, all these fights were supposed to happen in July, so they all had to wait for the main event. They had to wait for Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury to be ready to go, so they have waited a long time. So is Hellenius. He's jubilant and a very difficult night for Adam Kovnatsky. Let's hear from the ring and Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of 2 minutes 38 seconds in round number 6. Our referee in charge stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Back-to-back -back knockouts for Robert Hellenius over Adam Kovnatsky, this time with more emphasis. Let's October 15, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay! The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. What an entrance. What a moment. For Deontay Wilder. Absolute electricity.
here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena for Ortiz and Wilder. We are moments away from our main event. It's Wilder Ortiz number two here in Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to the MGM Grand Garden Arena here in Las Vegas as Premier Boxing Champions presents the Fox Sports PBC Pay-Per-View featured bout of the evening brought to you by Bomb Squad Promotions, TGB Promotions, and Mayweather Promotions as sponsored by Tecate, the official beer of boxing. Twin Peaks Restaurants, Eats, Drinks, Scenic Views, and Recover 180. Rapid hydration when it counts. This bow is sanctioned by the WBC, the president, Mauricio Suleiman, judges at ringside, Eric Cheek, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld. All right, fans, here we go with a bout you've all been waiting for. 12 rounds of boxing in a rematch for the WBC Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, it's time for the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing to you first the challenger, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with gray trim, Fighting out of Miami, Florida, by way of Kamahue, Cuba. He weighed in at a ready 236 and one half pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, one loss, with 26 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, looking to avenge his only loss and to become the first ever heavyweight world champion from Cuba, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hard-hitting and fearsome heavyweight world contender, introducing uh, Luis King Kong Ortiz. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner the longest reigning heavyweight world champion in boxing today wearing gold trunks with white trim fighting out of and representing his home of Tuscaloosa Alabama he weighed in one 219 and one half pounds with a sensational record of 41 wins no losses and one draw he has 40 big wins coming by way of knockout here is the U.S. Olympic bronze medalist and the acclaimed knockout artist tonight making the 10th defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated, reigning and defending WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. And now here's our referee in charge, now to give instructions, Kenny Bayless. Okay, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to keep this fight clean at all times, play Olympia. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you, touch them up. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape for this heavyweight championship showdown. You see the height and the reach advantage in favor of Deontay Wilder. Luis Ortiz, six years older than the champion. Their first fight was a classic back in March of 2018. What will we see here tonight at the MGM Grand Garden Arena? Wilder is 1-0 in rematches. We are underway. Here we go, Ortiz is a southpaw, conventional is Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, one of only three fighters in boxing to land 30% or more of his jabs. He has very good boxing skill, does the bronze bomber. He's so athletic, but they say that Luis Ortiz, he looks in impeccable shape as Ortiz coming forward, trying to back up Deontay Wilder. 
Wilder Pine with the jab. Using the jab to the midsection was Wilder. Ortiz looking to get closer. You see that, that foot, he's trying to get on the inside of the foot of Wilder. Ortiz with the right hook to the body. Left by Wilder to the body of Ortiz. A lot of respect between the two. Wilder's not going in to be ultra aggressive here in the first. It's a feeling out round. Ortiz is sweating. Ortiz looking to get closer. There's a big straight left that connects on Wilder. Wilder ties up. That's the first big power punch of the fight, and it goes to Luis Ortiz. Wilder with a right hand, a straight left that comes the way of Wilder from Ortiz. Wilder using the jab. At any one moment, this fight can end. Jab comes out by Wilder. Jab right to the midsection by Wilder on Ortiz. Under 30 seconds left here in the first. There's a straight left by Ortiz. That connects on Wilder. This is more of an active round for Luis Ortiz. Final moments of the first. Round one draws to a close. Taking a look at where that might have occurred. Oh, there's a big straight left by Ortiz. And it came from the clash of heads right there as we see. Great job by our fantastic crew. It was an accidental clash of heads and it's above, it's by the hairline of one Luis Ortiz. Round two, this one is scheduled for 12. Deontay Wilder looking to become the sixth fighter to successfully defend the heavyweight championship of the world 10 times. And Chanta Kuba here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Jab comes out by Wilder. Right to the midsection is Ortiz. Ortiz is now loosened up. You can see that he's got sweat on his body, as does Wilder. Both men getting into the mix. There's a straight right by Wilder. The jab followed by the right. We'll see what Ortiz tries to do. Oh, anxious moments here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. Jab comes out by Luis Ortiz, right to the midsection of Deontay Wilder. Both men picking their spots, sweeping left that misses by Wilder. Ortiz came back with a straight left that missed. Look at Wilder's eyes, he's so locked in. Both men extremely focused, knowing that one punch can end the fight. 80 seconds left here in the second. A right hand to the body that was blocked by Ortiz. So far, it's an even round. A left to the body by Ortiz.
jab by Deontay Wilder still hasn't landed his trademark right hand. There's a straight left by Ortiz. Ortiz crowding Deontay Wilder comes forward. But Wilder gets right back to the center of the ring. He's so athletic as Wilder. A jab for Wilder. Final moments of the second. Jab by Wilder, and that ends the second. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be tested. Squares off with the Nordic nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant this fight has become personal. takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Round three, this one is scheduled for 12. There is Luis Ortiz, Deontay Wilder. I think Ortiz had, did enough to win that second round. I think Ortiz, and you see the punches. Neither man has really landed anything definitive. Total punches thrown, there you saw, just goes to show you that the heavyweights are so powerful. Both men respect each other a considerable amount, a left hook, a left to the body by Ortiz. Left hook by Deontay Wilder. Well, there's a straight left that backed up Deontay Wilder, wondering if Ortiz feels as if he has Wilder hurt. He backed up Wilder with that straight left. And Ortiz is changing his levels a little bit. Wilder trying to use feints. Potentially a matchup with Wilder and Fury, a rematch if Wilder successful tonight against Luis Ortiz. There's that right hand. It was blocked by Luis Ortiz. There's a left to the body and Wilder pounds his chest as to say, come on. But back comes Luis Ortiz. Just over the halfway mark of round three. Combustible elements with Ortiz and Wilder. Both men are chiseled in this heavyweight championship main event. We'll see if Ortiz can continue to fight. I mean, this is a pace that favors Ortiz. And if you're Wilder, I'm curious to see if he's going to use his jab, but as Wilder has talked about many times, you have to be perfect against me for 36 minutes. Oh, there's a big overhand left, and a left to the body by Ortiz. Ortiz has said that he knows he's got to pitch nearly a perfect game against Wilder. Here's a right hand that connects flush for Wilder, but Ortiz comes forward. He ate it well. Wilder's eyes are opening up. Nearing the end of the third round. A left to the body by Luis Ortiz. And that's the end of the third. Now taking a look at some of the work. There's the straight left by Luis Ortiz. Wilder with the jab, but there's that straight left that momentarily buckled Deontay Wilder. Chopping overhand left. But Wilder did land a right hand of his own. As you see Wilder, there's that left that was partially blocked by 
Wilder. There is Herman Caicedo. Deontay Wilder looks up at the big screen to take a look at some of the replay. We are into round four. Again, history on the line for both. Wilder can become the sixth fighter to successfully defend the heavyweight championship of the world 10 consecutive times. Would be the sixth guy to do so. For Ortiz, he would be the first Cuban to win the heavyweight championship of the world and the second oldest fighter to capture the heavyweight crown. The oldest, George Foreman at 45. He did it in November of 1994 here at the MGM Grand when he knocked out Michael Moore. Luis Ortiz entered this fight a considerable underdog, almost a five to one underdog. Jab coming out by Deontay Wilder. Ortiz aiming to close the distance. There's a big left hand that missed another one. Wilder smiling, almost inviting Ortiz in. Jab comes out by Wilder. There's a right hand, a straight left by Ortiz. Another one, three. Big lefts and Wilder pounds his chest and says, come on, let's fight. Here we go. The crowd rises to their feet. You have to love the champion's determination to want to engage in a firefight at times. But Ortiz backs up. He's not rushing in. Could be head games by Wilder to draw him in so he can land his signature straight right hand. Quite a bit of Cuban fans in attendance here at the MGM Grand. You hear chants of Ortiz, Ortiz. Under a minute remaining here in the fourth. It's looking similar to that of the first fight. Very similar when it comes to the athletic chess match between Wilder and Ortiz. Both men have gotten better, but both men, styles make fights. And these two gentlemen are almost made for one another. Under 30 seconds left in round four. Wilder looking to throw it. There's a right hand that was blocked by Ortiz, but it caught the attention of the Cuban. There's a left right to the body of Wilder. That's the end of the fourth. There's a left. Taking a look at some of this action. And Wilder pounded his chest and said, come on, bring it. And again, you see that right hand that was blocked by Ortiz. If he hadn't blocked that, it could have been lights out. Luis Ortiz, it's very possible that he could have won the first four rounds. Average punches around, they're not throwing much, but it just goes to show you as to how dangerous they are. But Ortiz, oh, there's a straight left that connected by Ortiz. Wondering if Wilder is looking to bring Ortiz into those deep waters and try to finish him off late Ortiz, 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 Ortiz. 
The jab by Wilder. And Chan dueling chance of Wilder and Ortiz. Back comes Ortiz. Ortiz's confidence is growing, but he must remain diligent with his defense because you could get caught at any one moment. All Wilder needs is one punch. He has a knockout percentage of 95 percent. There's a right, a left over the top. That missed as Ortiz ducked underneath. Wilder is being more active here in the fifth. There's a left right to the body by Luis Ortiz. Ortiz is fighting a brilliant fight. And Ortiz Looked for the left to the body. Wilder got out of the way in impressive athletic fashion. Oh, there's a jab that caught the attention of Wilder as we have 60 seconds left in the fifth. Nothing like watching two top heavyweights colliding in the ring with so much on the line. History, legacy, championship gold. Ortiz with the jab right or the left to the body. Wilder covering up. Ortiz is focusing in on the body of Wilder. There's a right hand that barely missed Ortiz. Oh my. That was a big swing and a miss as Wilder ate a straight left from Luis Ortiz. Nearing the end of the fifth with Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz. A better round for Wilder. There's a right hook by Ortiz, and that is the end of the round. October 15th, the wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay per view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want. Let's take a look at the highest knockout percentage in heavyweight history. Wilder, the most at 95%. Rocky Marciano, second, and along with Vitaly Klitschko. George Foreman, 85%, Mike Tyson, 76%. So Wilder has the highest knockout percentage in heavyweight history by a significant margin. Approaching round six. And Ortiz taking some time to get off his stool. Coming up on round six. This one's scheduled for 12. Deontay Wilder aiming for his 10th consecutive title defense. Luis Ortiz is trying to become the first Cuban to win the heavyweight championship of the world. Ray Flores ringside here in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Garden Arena. And Ortiz starting off round six aggressive. Wilder popping out his jab. Wilder with a wide base. As his feet spread apart, quite wide. It is. Both men know what is on the line and both men Neither man wants to make a mistake. It could be catastrophic if they do make a mistake.
Herman Casado and company, they have put together a brilliant game plan. You know Mark Brilliant and JD's always have Deontay Wilder ready to fight. Into the sixth. 100 seconds left here in our sixth round. Jab for Wilder, trying to answer back is Ortiz. Wilder seems to be reluctant to throw the jab. Now he throws it. Doubling up on the jab now as the bronze bomber has a high connect percentage with his jab. That's not happening here tonight. Oh, there's a left hook. Answering back with a right hook was Ortiz. Ortiz is fighting so well, a co cool, calm, and collective. But as is Deontay Wilder, there is no signs of panic from the champion. There's a left hand blocked by Wilder. Ortiz advancing forward. Doubling up on the jab was Ortiz. Herman Caicedo telling Ortiz he wants him to throw. They don't want Ortiz to remain stationary because that gives Wilder a better target. Ortiz is jabbing well, moving the slight little movements that could very well be giving Wilder some issues. Under 10 seconds remaining here in the sixth. Oh, they got close, and Ortiz, oh my, it could end at any one moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're halfway home. We're approaching the second half of the fight, and it looks very similar to the first fight. Round seven, scheduled for 12. Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz Wilder with a left hook to the body of Ortiz. We'll see if Wilder picks up the pace here in the second half of the fight. There are some ringside observers who have Ortiz ahead five to one. I even think I saw a scorecard of six to nothing from media observers. There's a left hook to the body by the champion. He's trying to size up Ortiz, a straight left. They both try to size each other up, a left hook by Wilder. There's a straight left by Ortiz. They both are now swinging at close distance. Like two big sluggers that could end the night with one swing. Anticipation, people here in Las Vegas on the edge of their seats. We greatly appreciate you joining us wherever you are around the world. Wilder using his jab, but even for Deontay Wilder, he isn't throwing as much as he has during the course of his career. A lot of respect that he has for King Kong, a right hand by Wilder. There's a right hand by Wilder that missed. This is a tactical fight between two men who have one punch erasers. There's a right hand and Ortiz shrugs it off as to say, come on, man, what was that? Under a minute left here in the seventh. High drama here, the fighting capital of the world. As Ortiz plots forward. A left hook to the body by Wilder. There's a left, a straight left that connects by Ortiz. He might have Wilder hurt. A left to the body by Ortiz. Ortiz picking up the pace. 
Ortiz trying to cut off the ring, overhand left. Now Wilder needs to get back in the center as King Kong trudges forward. A right hand, down goes Ortiz! Oh my goodness! This one is over! There is a reason why he is the baddest man on the planet! Example right there as Deontay Wilder has once again finished off Luis Ortiz in spectacular fashion. He is now the sixth heavyweight in history with 10 successful title defenses in a row. Deontay Wilder, you are a bad, bad man. One punch is all it takes. And good night to Luis Ortiz. Unbelievable. You've heard Dwalipa say, one kiss is all it takes. Well, I will tell you this. One punch is all it takes for Deontay Wilder. That was spectacular. The Bob Squad is out tonight. Great respect by Taking a look at it, boom! Oh my! Crashing to the canvas, Deontay Wilder. Taking a look at it again. Ortiz came forward, the jab, and Wilder steps back, and he looks at his target, boom! Oh my goodness! Nighty night! That is destructive. Boom. Deontay Wilder with as impressive of a finish as you can find. And there is the Bronze Bomber. With his family embraces with JD's Taking a look at it again, boom! Landed flush. And down went Luis Ortiz. The jab, Ortiz pawed it away, boom! Good night. And Kenny Bayless waved it off. That was special. He put on a special performance on a special night. What power by Deontay Wilder. And there's the reaction from ringside observers. Tremendous. Here, now here with the particulars, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 51 seconds in round number seven. Our referee in charge, Kenny Bayless, reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of spectacular knockout, still undefeated and still the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder. The wait is finally over. One of the most feared heavyweights in history is back. Deontay Wilder.
Bronx Bomber, Deontay Wilder. He wants to be king. Squares off with the Nordic Nightmare, Robert Hellenius. Plus, Caitlin Plant. This fight has become personal. Takes on Anthony Durrell in a super middleweight blockbuster and more. Saturday, October 15th, live on pay-per-view. Buy now on the Fox Sports app and watch on any screen you want.